Just uh, <clears throat> making the bots work a bit while I take a drink. Also, hey there, early tubers. Unfortunately, the bots are pretty slow at cleaning stuff up. They'll do it, but they won't do it very fast. Actually, one of the things I might do today... Um, <clears throat> the number of robots you can control uh, is determined by uh, your armor setup. And I've got two roboports, which gives me a maximum of 60, uh, assuming I'm carrying around that many. But if I throw in, uh, you know, two more, that would be like 120. Uh, they are, unfortunately, uh, running out of power, so this won't work. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, I guess it might be nighttime. It's really hard to tell that these days. Yeah, it's night. I got really cool night vision in the in the power armor. So unless I switch to map mode, which has the normal darkness filter, um, it looks almost the same as daytime. Almost. And then if I'm in navigating satellite mode, everything looks pretty bright anyway. It's great. Ah. <sighs> I, I appreciate that, David, too. Just auto-liking everything I, I post. It's a good sign. Well, I guess we got to manually clean this stuff. I thought my uh, bots might do it, but they actually don't have enough power for it. So. I need to actually generate... Oh, I don't know. If they're working full speed, I guess it uses like 5 megawatts. That's a lot for a personal generator. Yeah, I don't, I don't actually think you could do that. Uh, there is... Now that I'm thinking about it, another thing I've never built. Uh, yeah, Tesla coils. It's all good, Kermit. I think if I put a energy absorber. I've never used energy absorbers before. I'm, I'm assuming they might be modded. This puppy. It can absorb... Oh, it can hold a lot. Alright. Yeah, actually, that would maybe work. I would need power lines and Tesla coils. Thing is, it takes up more ba ba backpack space or, or inventory space. So I'd have to give something up, like stop wearing my shields, which are quite nice. And then if I have a Tesla coil, not the kind that zap you in uh, in red alerts, but you need to be close to like your infrastructure, so I do have power over here, let's just test this out, we'll do a little bit of testing here, my plan for the pre-stream setup here while I'm just getting ready, making sure the stream works and everything a little bit early, uh, is to finish cleaning up the creep, you know there's not actually that many purple splotches left, but I'd like to get rid of these, and then we can talk about base building and do a little recap and all that as we get to the proper start time. But yeah, I, I just do a little bit of sciencing here for a second. So this bad boy, that's pretty cool. Just gives you a little shock. So it is charging my battery. If it can output 12 megawatts, it should be enough to run two RoboPorts. But it's only like their internal... I guess the battery's getting charged up too. But like once those are um, charged, like they'll only last so long. I really need like the next tier of power armor and stuff because it'll add uh, a 2x2... Two two. Instead of like, what is this, 8x8? Eight eight? I think it's 10x10 10 10 or 12x12 12 12 as we upgrade them. And uh, that tends to make uh, a lot easier when you're trying to build up cool armor. So let's give this a try. We'll do the robots again, even though it's probably easier just to uh, just pick up all the cleats yourself. Uh, if you're wondering, with the uh, it's Alt C brings up the tool that just does it like that, um, or you can make a cool deconstruction planner that only picks up biter creep on a whitelist, and uh, that was what I was testing out. So I still don't have enough robots to make this fast. But I'm just curious if my curious if my power system can hold up. So it looks like the energy absorber is a little bit like a mini battery. It holds like five, five megajoules. 
and comes before the battery. Then the battery starts to drain. And the battery can't even keep these things, like, it, it can't output fast enough to keep these guys running. Playing some Final Fantasy? Cool, cool, yeah. So... Yeah, you can see the battery down there. I'd like to be able to use my robots a bit longer, but... It's also daytime, so I'm getting uh, more considerably more power. Each of these uh, tier two solar panels uh, give me 384, so it actually doubles my power. This portable RTG works all the time for free, but uh, the solar panels, the Emersite ones, are better because I could have four of them for one of these, right? That would be almost twice as much power, but only during the day. So anyway, they did manage to clean all that up, so that was pretty good. And then rather than waiting for um, solar to charge me up, we could go within range of the uh, Tesla coil. It'll recharge the RoboPorts. Yeah, neat. Not sure it's my favorite. It takes up some of your precious inventory space. I'll have to think about if I can find a good time for that. The place I use, like, the most robot building is actually when I'm in space. But I use a different suit for that. And the solar power is actually way better when you're in space. Because, uh, you know, there's no night. So let's, uh, let's just speed around here, clean up my goo. It's really annoying. I wish there was a quicker way to do this. I keep trying to find a better way, but... Also, uh, fills up your inventory with junk. I know, uh, eventually I was reading through the tech tree, I think last stream, there is a, uh, a longer term, uh, a lo later game method of removing Biter Creek. We're just not there. Uh, but yeah, the plan for today, tonight's stream, once we get to the official start time here in five or ten minutes, um, I'll do a quick base recap. I haven't really done a whole lot between the last stream and now. I mean, I've certainly played a bit just in the background, but... I wouldn't say I've accomplished much, I've just done more like prep for a stream like tonight and I didn't want to do every, I didn't want to do too many like big big things when I wasn't streaming but I wanted to get like, well I've done a lot of cliff flattening, I've, I've removed a lot of creep in advance because you can't really build on it and it looks gross and it slows you down when you move on it so. So I did a lot of cleanup, just making my base more sanitary, did a little bit of optimization Some of these tracks on this album are a bit loud. Might be my favorite uh, Final Fantasy remix album, though. I've listened to this one a lot. Uh, Balance and Ruin, Final Fantasy VI, if you haven't listened to it. That, you can you can download it on uh, Overclock Remix's uh, website. Or listen to it on YouTube. I'm not sponsored or nothing, it's all just fan-made content. Cool. Alright, let's clean up these last couple splotches. Wish I had more explosives with me because we could also be getting rid of all of these cliffs. That's much easier, but uh, I don't have enough explosives for them all. We can, we can do a few more, but... How do you beat the game? Well, if you're playing the vanilla game... The classic ending is when you, you you start crash landed and you have to build everything up. Mining resources and all the usual stuff. Build your factory and research. Unlock a bunch of research stuff. And eventually you build a rocket. And uh, in theory, you you know leave the planet and that's the end. Game over, I think. It's, it's the idea. Or you just stay here and build more and more planet until you've, until you've concreted the entire planet with your mega base. But no, the, it's, it's, it's a standard base builder, gather resources, research. I mean, I say standard, this was like, Factorio was the uh, genre creator of factory design base builders, I suppose. There's a few more nowadays, of course, but before there was Dyson Sphere, we had to play Factorio and whatever other games came between. 
But in this mod I'm playing, it goes further than uh, one ship to space. So I will do a recap here in just a second. I don't really know what the end state is uh, because, you know, I haven't played through the mod yet. But yeah, I think this section is clean. So what I've been doing when I've got too much junk in my inventory is I just put a chest, chest down. We learned this last stream. Uh, just fill it up with junk. Excuse me, a little bit of hiccups. There's a couple ways to do it. This is the slow way. I'm just gonna put a targeting reticule here. <gasps> oh jeez, hiccups when I'm trying to stream? Just a sec, guys. <sighs> Try to cover it with some drinking some water. Yeah, you know, it's 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 pretty open world, right? Like you set your own objectives. You you could do as much as you want if you're if you're playing along. I uh, there are like in-game goals to finish the research tree and and uh, progress, but you know you can do your own kind of progression too. Like like most open world builders, it's got a little bit of survival, not a ton of survival. But. Um, yeah, back in our actual base. The, the, the vanilla end game is this building here, which launches a rocket up into space. And uh, that's generally approximately what you'd consider the end. But I, I would expect people who like the game would keep going for a bit. Um, because I think even in vanilla you get these... Uh, uh, where to go? This line... It's a bit of a mess. I know, my base is a disaster. I think you get telemetry in vanilla... No, this is from Space Exploration. Yeah, because th this is the whole thing. In, in in Vanilla, this is like the soft end. But in Space Exploration, this is like the beginning. So we finally got, you know, the basic rocket launches. They That returned another item that we can use, Space Telemetry, that gave us another tier of technology, which let us eventually make our own rockets and then go to space. So we have a space station that has been getting larger and larger over time up here above our home planet and we've even colonized two moons morrigan has some stuff on it and vestrian which was a disaster but uh, it has some stuff on it as well today we might go to another moon or planet might be we'll have to talk about that in a second anyway uh so the way i clear my inventory if i have stuff i really want to get rid of is you just put it into a chest uh any size and then you can either artillery strike it or hit it with like a rail gun um I think in the original game, I remember just shooting them with a machine gun as well, but it seems like normal projectiles don't damage chests anymore, which is nice because you don't accidentally destroy your base, but on the other hand, it's a bit harder to sort of delete inventory, but it's fine. So let's do a little recap. Uh, at the end of last stream, I did not have this section um, connected. I had a wall here uh, defending against the biter attacks. And, um, but I decided at some point that this is pretty easy to expand to. I think I learned that there was a uh, no no land crossing here. So I didn't have to defend this section at all. So all I had to do was clear it out of biters and then just extend the wall here, which I, I like using the, the natural borders, right? Um, one nice horizontal wall would have been better, but this is fine for now. If it turns out that there's no land bridges to the south, we might just connect up here and here eventually, or something like that. Just less walls mean less resources to defend, and river or lake boundaries are nice for kind of naturally growing. So that's all I did for expansion purposes, and I've been trying to clean it up. So a lot of... Let me turn that pollution map off. <clears throat> a lot of my interior base all around everywhere. I've done a lot of creep cleanup, forest removal, um, removing cliffs... And even concreting over most of the water. So that's what all this stuff is, if you've not seen it before. Um, you make landfill out of um, sand or whatever else you want to make landfill out of. I had just hundreds of thousands of this stuff filling up chests. In fact, I had too much. It was backing up the system sometimes. So in a you know, two birds with one stone kind of scenario, I thought, hey, why don't I use up like most of my back backlog of, of, of landfill... And I'll also just uh, cover up some annoying water. And, and I cleaned up, like, there's there's some biomes that have, like, 
swampy lakes in them. And it just means walking through here or building here is a real pain. So all of these sort of gray splotchy bits are probably concrete or, well, landfill that I filled up water. And you can see some areas that I didn't do, like over here, it's a bit hard to see, but like that's a little water patch that would slow you down. So all these little blue tiles, if you can see them. Um, if it was in my base, I would have just covered up with uh, landfill. And uh, I tried to get most of those. I think these were little ponds at some point. So, you know, filled all that in. Tried to get rid of stuff that's going to get in the way for mega base. Um, so cleaning out the, the, the area was one step that I did kind of just in the background. Um, step two was I increased my power income significantly. Uh, these little puppies, I don't know if I've showed them off too much on stream yet. Uh, I guess I'm... I'll, I'll, I'll turn off the pre-stream, because we're into at least the real stream. We're just doing a recap first. Let's turn that off there. And then we'll look at the to-do list in a second. Uh, but yeah, these are the Tier 2 solar panels. They are really, really good on your space station, where each one gets you 1.2 megawatts of power with no day-night cycle. So these are amazing up here. But they're still good on your on a regular planet, uh, normally speaking. So... Um, I lost track of where everything is. There we go. Whatever, this is fine. All these are just a gigantic grid of advanced uh, solar panels. Made out of immersite that we mine on our moon. And I built this, I'm pretty sure last time. You know, we shoot... We shoot bullets full of immersite crystals from, from our moon. They get used for a couple purposes, primarily making advanced solar panels. And then some other crafting every now and then. It makes us fancy speed modules, which we'll talk about in a minute as well. So this all just automatically crafts me thousands and thousands of solar panels. And this is just from one machine. And I've already put down 15,000. And I've got another couple thousand here ready to go and just keeps building more in the background. So, so my old solar panels are being replaced as this kind of grows uh, southerly. Uh, I want to save this space for kind of the mega base manufacturing a little bit. It's um, it's a little bit tricky because there's like resources that I don't want to lose by just covering with solar panels. I want to actually mine this stuff out first, like this little iron. There's a big copper patch and a big coal patch that I've kind of got prepped for uh, the expansion. These are all really easy to make. I was just testing out. Uh, these are those beacons that spread the speed modules in them. Uh, and then these are mining drills, big mining drills, that have a lot of um, productivity modules, which gets you... Uh, I think it turns out... It starts at 50%, and then the modules bring us up to 90%. That means a, a copper seam that has, you know, around 6 million ore will get us closer to 12 million ore after the productivity modules on the miners. And it will go relatively quickly, thanks to the speed beacons. So I'm just testing out kind of nice layouts. They can, they can hit about 8 at a time. So that's why I've got one, and this gives you pretty good value for your eight blue modules. So you get like eight of them affected per uh, beacon. And that seems, you know, seven or eight, depending on the layout. I'm just trying to follow the ore, but anyway, I've just, I want to have those. So we're going to link those into the next build, hopefully. And um, I'm just doing some tests. So this is kind of like a snapshot of what I will have to build eventually, where we will have core fragments from those little blue signals on the map, the little uh, blue triangles, these guys. And I've already got, I think, six hooked up at the moment as input, these lines here. But I'm probably going to want more than six, like maybe 10 or 12. And they're going to go into a system like this, where we've got a couple uh, pulverizers that crush it with a speed beacon making it faster, and we get another 32% bonus. And then we've got to deal with all the liquid outputs and stuff. So like, we're going to build a system that's you know, extendable, but this is kind of the basics. And then it's going to split into like iron, copper, rare metals, sand, uh, also sand, and then like oil and um, anything else we have out of there, basically. And this will be the system for enriching the iron ore, where we speed beacon up some enrichment, where we need uh, the thing that doesn't have is sulfuric acid. That's the little sim symbol there. But, you know, water is easy and the ore is will come in. Copper is pretty much the same. Rare metals, unfortunately, will need hydrochloric acid, which is a slightly different production to make that acid. Um, sand doesn't use a different machine, but it just gets, or rocks just get crushed into sand, and sand can get processed into quartz, eventually into silicone, 
Uh, sand can be turned into glass. And then the enriched ores will just be smelted into molten um, iron, copper, and steel eventually. Well, yeah. Steel doesn't technically get... It's iron, molten iron, but you make the steel um, by adding coke to the molten liquid. So we, we need coke as well, kind of a side branch here. And then the, the varying, mol varying molten liquids of iron and copper will get cast into ingots and then smashed into plates. And that's kind of like the system, like vertically. I also need a couple side systems where we're making pyroflux, which you need to do the smelting. I will also need to filter the dirty water that we get from the enriching. I don't have it here, but we will need to be constructing hydro... We need sulfuric acid for this enriching, hydrochloric acid for this enriching, and the coke as well for the steel. So there's a there's a three or so, three or four side things that need to be included. And you can kind of see this has turned into a... like. This is going to be a pretty mega build, and this is just going to be our, like, smelting line. It's not going to be the production. This is not going to be where we make all the fancy high-tech gear. But I want the output of this, I want in to be the core fragments from, you know, all around the world. You know, a nice a nice amount of input. And then on the output line, I want copper, iron, steel, um, probably silicone and glass. Uh, anything else that we use in vast quantities, just kind of smelt it all together here. From those raw resources um so yeah that's kind of the overall plan but it's, it turns into a bigger and bigger project as time goes on so i just got the setup i did some math i've got i'll, I'll even show it here on the intro um i did some uh some planning uh <laughs> so i just went through all of the the various machines i'm not going to talk about them all here but you know the first set is the core fragments i need the minor drills and then we've got pulverizers the enriching the other types of enriching for rare metals. We've got the melting. Um, we've got the casting part. We've got turning them into plates. We've also got the stone and glass. And then my my side projects, which will be pyro, pyroflux. Um, the refiltering process. Recycling excesses because we need to not have it back up when one line gets full. I'll make quartz and silicone. And then I've had some other ideas that I might want to do as well. Uh, there's uranium that I need to deal with. Um, I'm This is where I need my sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, the coke. I didn't build them or do the math, but I have the recipes approximately. And, um, you know, I don't think I'm going to go into the production line just yet. But eventually we'll do, like, the circuits and stuff as well. The, the advanced processing. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of like I've been doing a little bit of prep. It's kind of good to get it ready. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a mega build. And I don't actually know if we have enough space. That's kind of what I was thinking, is I was putting down the power. I don't know if I have enough power for it, for one. And I don't think I have enough space for it. Or at least I didn't. You know, this used to all be water. So it's a nice, flat, smooth building uh, platform now. Uh, so that'll help out a lot. I'm thinking if, if I build the smelting lane somewhere around here, um, probably manufacturing or, you know, it can kind of go to the west... And then up and down can be all of the, um, you know, the sub-tiers and stuff. And then somewhere in this kind of section of the base, we'll have the outputs of, you know, the main iron, copper, etc. And it could still feed into our starting base. We could just overline, overtake these iron, steel, and copper inputs. And that'll keep things running in the background until I rebuild everything in here. Because I don't want to lose production of stuff. Like, I don't want to shut this all off for an hour or however long it takes. So... The idea will be get enough power and then change the input processing smelting part. And then at some point, you know, this will we can delete this stuff because that'll this will be replaced by the input smelting. Like I'm I'm planning on replacing this part of the base, basically. And then this part is way more complicated and that will just happen over time. <laughs> but but I have been making upgrades. Uh, whenever I find a part that sucks, um, like Let's see, batteries were sucking, right? I was not making enough batteries at one point, so I added the the beacons that give the speed modules and the productivity so they get better output. So, you know, I upgraded them from their old system to using beacons. And unfortunately, it just turns into even worse spaghetti because I didn't build it in advance. That's why I did this prep work to be like, well, how am I going to actually lay this out if I need to put these beacons? How many beacons per machines can I connect, right? Like... These are all the casting things, and I need a lot of them. But 
The beacons will speed them up a lot. 160% speed boost. Uh, so I don't need as many of them. And if I put the beacons here, I can get one beacon for like 10 machines. And that's a decent use. Because we will need a lot of those, for instance. Like I use... This is all iron and steel casting. You know, I, I got a lot of them. So, you know, I tried to plan it up a little bit. Um, other expansions in the base. I don't expect I did much else, honestly. Uh, trying to think if I changed anything might be interesting to dis discuss, but... No, I, I don't think there was too much else. I've just been, uh, you know, concreting the world, expanded my solar power... I'm turning this into like an accumulator farm for storing the solar panel at night. Uh, that's kind of, this is getting replaced by accumulators. So new solar power, all new accumulators. And that's kind of it. Uh, I did connect up. No, I didn't connect up, but I've got another oil well here ready to go. So we've got access to like 6 million oil, you know, variety of resources that we can hook up. But it's these drill seams that I really want to use, the core seams. Uh, oh, I know what I did. I did one cool thing. Let's, um... It's a robot thing that I thought was pretty clever. Probably too clever for my own good. But, um, robots, you know, self-destruct over time. Either they repair the walls and the biters destroy them. Or, uh, the logistics ones that deliver you stuff around eventually just self-destruct for some dumb reason. They just get tired of living on my utopia. So, I made a little system that should automate, um... Hey there, Char. We already had, like, automated bot construction. That's fine. But it just goes into a chest. It doesn't actually go into the logistics system. So I figured out a way to do that. We've got a couple chests that request the bots. And this could be any connection between constructing them and, and here. You know, it doesn't really matter. But what I can do is, at one of these roboports, there is a little button here I never noticed. You can turn read robot statistics. It's normally off. So you have to click this I think you have to connect a I can't remember how I did it it's, it's kind of hidden right I think I had to put one of these um uh control wires in the um the logic wires uh they're in here these guys red what red and green wire are your circuit control wires rather than power wires Anyway, once you have access to this, which is a read robot statistics in the logistics or the circuit network, not the logistics network, because they're different. There is a circuit network that is based on the wires, and there is a logistics network that is based, it's usually not connected. It's based on uh, the L button, which is all the stuff that is being carried around by bots, and it's in the requester chests and stuff. Anyway, the point was, once I had that figured out, it automatically, at any RoboPort, will out output a bunch of signals. And they start assigned to a variable. You might as well just think of these as variables if you're into programming or a just hopefully understand what variables are. Maybe do some math or something. Um, and it just puts the number of construction bots as T, available as Z, and so on. And you can see them here. Logistics says 2800 out of 2830. So that's available and then out of total. And construction is 2500 out of 2500. So what I didn't want was attrition to just eat up all the bots until there's only a few left and then you don't have any and things start to break. Because that's what's happening on another moon that we'll talk about maybe in a bit. Um, but on our home planet, we construct our own robots. So as long as I've got the resources to build more, which honestly it's no big deal, we shouldn't really ever run out of logistics bots or construction bots. Because we're always building them. We just need a way to release them into the network. So if you take a bot and put it into a RoboPort, assuming there's space, that gets added to the logistics network. But we don't just want to infinitely put them in, or it just will fill up with 100,000 bots, and just uh, you'll just construct them as fast as you can, they'll just get thrown into the network, and eventually you'll lag your game out, because you'll have way too many bots just flying around, slowing things down. It's, it's probably not ideal. So, I did a little bit of a logic system here. Um, we're reading these numbers these values. I've got two decider combinators. These guys are able to take a variable, do a comparison, like greater than, less than, or equal to, stuff like that. And you can put another variable in or a constant. So I just set 2.5 thousand. So if the total number of construction bots is less than 2.5 thousand, well, I could have just said add more bots, but I wanted to be fancier than that. So I took it to another level. I also want in the logistics network, if we have zero out of 2,500 bots, let's say, 
That means we are building so much stuff that the bots can't keep up with the queue. And in that case, I thought, well, maybe we should still release more bots. So Zed is our available construction bots. And if that's really low, less than 100, I will also effectively send a signal to release more bots. But if you just wire them both in, I'm not exactly sure how the game will interpret it. So one more step. These two machines will output a 1 on a variable. Just A will equal 1, B will equal 1. I could probably share the output if I really wanted to, but it's easier to explain like this. And we're going to use another machine, the Arithmetic Combinator, which does different <laughs> comparisons. Instead of, um, you know, mathematical comparisons like numerical with the decider, it will do logical comparisons um, like and or not x or you know again a little bit more programming style but again if you took math it's uh it's in set theory and all that stuff you know you, you can you can you can do a bunch of that um some of them are a little bit more complicated to explain quickly but you can do advanced math with the arithmetic combinator so all i'm saying here is if a is one or b is one for these are just if it's true effectively it's it will output c is one and um that one will control this little inserter so if we have uh, less than 2,500 construction bots or we have less than 100 available at the moment, release more bots. I figure that's easy, right? I, you know, it's a bit more complicated than it needs to be, but it's fun. I did the same thing for logistics bots and this one actually has slightly more um, sanity to it because there's a technology um, limitation here, swarm safety, and this only applies to logistic bots, but they eventually explode. But as you research this to higher and higher tiers, you block off larger and larger numbers that are safe. So at the moment, we've done five levels, and it's 500 each. So up to 2,500 logistic bots, it will, the technology will stop them from damaging things when they blow up. They still blow up, but, but they won't cause collateral damage. And if I research another tier, it'll go up to 3,000. So having this set slightly below 2,500, I thought was a pretty clever solution. We'll never, well, okay, it's currently at 2,800 because we ran out and then my release more when it's low triggered. So we got above 2,500 by by having got to zero out of 2,800 or something. So it's kind of a little bit, um, it's, it's a bit self-sustaining. Those 2,830 over time will attrition down to 2,500, at which point they will stop damaging things at least. I'm not sure if releasing more at low availability is really a good idea in the long run, but it was kind of fun to set this all up, so I did it. So that was one of the sort of more complicated additions I've added. Other than that, it's just been tweaking machines and flattening the world, really. Um, yeah, I definitely know that this base runs really low on red circuits. It, it's all backed up right now because I'm not really consuming much. We're not We're not building anything or researching anything. But as soon as we start doing things, uh, the red circuits here will back up. And I've, I've tried my best to speed them up. Um, you know, I've got a couple um, of these uh, uh, beacons that speed things up with ma max pro uh, productivity. And they run slow because we run out of green circuits. And they also have productivity. But these guys, uh, with the number I've got here, they're actually limited on wood. Uh, I cannot bring wood in fast enough to make more run. And it's actually belt speed limited. Like, no matter how many wood chunks I grow, this blue belt, and that's the best I've got, cannot feed, I don't even think, all of these machines at the same time. So, there's always a bottleneck, and I can't really do much about it without changing wood to stone, or building a separate lane with a separate wood lane, you know, somewhere else that comes from a different source. So that kind of, I'm hitting limitations on space at this point. I can't really m upgrade that anymore. Um, so my, my green and red circuits, which eventually turn into a whole bunch of other stuff, including blue circuits, they look great right now, but they really do chug once I start using things. So the, the red circuits eventually end up down here and get upgraded to blue, uh, the best of circuits. But again, it's kind of limited by, um, you know, wood in the, of all things. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So the reason for the mega base upgrade is to eventually fix a lot of the throughput weaknesses of this base. It'll make the base much easier to understand if I streamline this, make it a little bit less spaghetti, less of this weird jank, 
you know, where is this copper going? It goes up, it goes forward, or it goes up, it goes right, it goes down. Some of it comes in from this side and joins in from somewhere else. Some of it gets split into a half belt. Some more of it gets down here, gets split into a half belt. This one stays as a full belt, but they kind of overlap each other and go to wherever the heck they go. Like, this is a, this is a disaster. You know, it's fun, it's great, but it's a bit of a disaster. So, uh, you know, it'd be nice to, to have, like, a main bus. If you've seen other Factorio or factory building games, it's pretty common. I sort of had the idea of a main bus here because I had, um, you know, coal, copper, iron, technically, stone, and glass. Like, this was the idea at one point. It, it just fell apart, you know. So, I need to commit, you know. And the research right now just goes to nowhere. We used to have labs here. But now all the labs are in space, so all the belting of research around doesn't really matter anymore. So if I was rebuilding... Excuse me, the hiccups keep attacking. If I rebuild this eventually, probably not today, but I want the research... Like, where you construct it. Like, this is where we make our red science. Which isn't all that expensive anymore, you know, it's for relatively low tier tech. But there's no need to share belts and do all this random junk. They just need to have a... Um, a way to get into space and I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that but at some point we need to automate cargo rockets that go from here that go into orbit because the only way at the moment that I can figure out to get circuits and science into space is to land it on a cargo rocket and then have the bots ferry it around into my my current labs uh, up here basically um, the, the nice thing of just shooting bullets up into space for raw resources, or sort of raw resources, just doesn't work on circuits and science, so we'll have to come up with a different solution, you know, one of these days. What I am doing today, I, I just recently turned it on, um, this is my space scaffolding, and this will hold, I don't know how much exactly, I think 50,000, give or take, um, 100 per slot times 512, so yeah, 51,000. Um, but 51,000, it, it looks like we've built a lot of space. You know, the actual starting asteroid or platform was just this white part um, with a tiny little part over here. So, you know, we've expanded the gray zone pretty, pretty wide. But if we want to do, like, significant space manufacturing and next level science, you know, we might have enough space for now, but I feel like this will run out pretty quickly. Um, even just power, you know, we need, we need power up here and solar is pretty good, but I probably want to build more layers of this when we need more power. And if I am doing rockets la landing, la uh, launching and landing, those guys take up a lot more space than these kind of, um, uh, capsule deliveries. Uh, but something like this for all resources that we use up in space, and that's just going to take a lot of room, right? Like if we need, you know couple dozen or more, honestly, probably like 30 to 40 resources need to be sent from land to space to run all the space stuff. We really need a lot of room for it. So I figured start building some stuff up here. This does, uh, it burns through a lot of resources that we're constantly shipping up. So steel, heat shielding, and at the moment our bottleneck is um, this low density structure. So back at home, you can see those get sh shipped up to space here. They all conveniently in the same area. Um, this is where the low density stuff gets shot up, but we're not making enough uh, to keep the, the gun fully loaded. So you could go backwards and be like, well, what's going on? Low density. This is, I even made a label for it, right? You're like, this is hardly anything. So you chase, chase it back. Another programming thing. <laughs> Trace route it back. Um, so we've got a bunch of machines here working. They're working full speed, but I could fix them. Right now, they are not maximum productivity. So we'll do this as an, an example. The thing is, this is not a very good, like, long-term solution. Um, because I've, I've only got so much space. And... They will, I'm actually fairly confident, run out of plastic, glass, steel, or copper. Probably steel. Now, by going four productivity modules, you get an extra 32% output, which means more of the rare stuff. But it slows it down. Uh, they're only working at, you know, 
minus 80% speed, but there's a way to fix that. Uh, we will control four at a time. And yeah, this is where it gets to be a little bit jankier because we don't have... Um, I don't have easy ways of getting the beacons to overlap without messing up because they only have a, a relatively small reach. I put it over here, but I'd still have to break other things, right? So the trick is now I need to make sure that the inserters aren't overlapping with the building. And uh, it looks like that's all I had to do. So that's put four of them at super speed. And compared to what they used to do, they're making you know more output for per material in. That's that little purple bar filling up. And they're working at plus 80% speed instead of, you know, whatever they were before I messed with it. So this will certainly increase the output as long as the resources can hold up. And this one doesn't work. Um, I'm just going to turn this one off, actually. Um, it's it's almost a waste of resources um, because these guys all get the speed boost. The other place I'm building it is right here. And I could probably speed these up as well if I was tricky. So let's try to do that. Um, could probably put it over here, uh, the, uh, the beacon, La Bacon. I've kind of switched to not using red, uh, belts anymore. Um, it just takes up inventory space, so I've, I've kind of, over time, started limiting, like, the lower tier things, like the iron pipes, and then the slower belts, so I'm just trying to clear them out of my inventory right now just so I've got more space you know so the blue belts used to be too expensive I didn't want to waste them but nowadays I'll just build everything out of blue belts because it's not that expensive anymore. meanwhile Vestrian we should talk about Vestrian here once I'm, I'm done upgrading here but yeah so you know whatever the bottleneck is like this we can we can slap down a, a better um you know, module setup. Uh, oh, this is a problem. Those actually line up perfectly with where that beacon is. Oops. Okay, hold on. Um, we can fix it. That'll still hit all the buildings I want. Uh, the problem will be... I still need that sulfur which we will now have to do a little bit more jank. Everyone's favorite. So there, it works just fine. <laughs> totally uh, by plan. Also, I realized I didn't upgrade all of these to uh, tier three. And now, technically that needs to be there. The output switches to there. The input can stay. And that should go back to work. Just took it a second for the uh, inserters to figure out what was going on, but uh, no problem. It uses a lot of copper plates, so... Why are those not dropping those off? Oh, I managed to not connect up the underground belts. Every now and then when you're deleting underground belts, sometimes they just disconnect and... You know. There you go. So, with that, uh, you know, I don't know... You know, we could math it out, but we definitely went... Well, we could actually double-check exactly how much we increased our throughput here. Production screen. I like showing this off. We've got a nice little graph here. Uh, if I can find low-density structure in my gigantic list, I think there's a way to type it in. Yeah, this stuff. Once you've highlighted it, you can see your current, um, you know very recent this is a five second graph you can kind of see the production goes up and down but usually one minute gives you a somewhat useful average and if you look back like over the last 10 minutes it looks like it was averaging i don't know somewhere around 80 to 90 per minute and then when it's got less requests it goes down and when it's got more requests it goes up but recently now we're hitting about 120 or 130 so we probably made like a 50 percent throughput improvement Assuming we could get enough plastic, and it kind of looks like we might not be getting enough plastic. <laughs> There's always something. 
Um, so then you're like, well, what's wrong with the plastic? And you're like, well, it's just not fast enough, you know? What are you going to do about that? Well, tell you what I'm going to do about that. Um, oh, this is going to be hard. So I need three spots for a beacon. Oh, no, we can put it... Yeah, we can put it there. Oh, sorry. I don't have iron pipes anymore. Alright, maximum speed. Repower the stuff that needs to be powered. And we no longer need speed modules in these buildings. We might as well just get... I don't know if productivity is super valuable for plastic. It does mean we use a bit less coal and uh, crude oil, basically. So, it's probably not the worst thing to make more productive. And I could probably fit in... Well... That won't... I'd like to hit these two, but... Let's not worry about it. The point is, we sped up three of them, and, and when we rebuild the base to be better, and stronger, and faster, maybe even harder, um, next time, we'll make sure that we leave space for these beacons. Because, uh, as you can probably tell, I didn't really plan for those. Alright, so we can have a look, see if the plastic's keeping up a little bit better. It's not backing up, so we're probably not making enough still. But it's much closer. It looks like it actually might be pretty close to the right amount. Um, I like to eyeball it. Um, if it's backing up, sort of compressing, like it is right there, that means you're making a bit too much. And if it's getting all the way to the end, um, then you're probably not making enough. But uh, it actually looks like we're making a little bit more than we need. So that's good. That little upgrade should keep our low-density uh, machines working at full speed. It'll eventually back up. Assuming everyone's going at full speed, yeah. And then it'll just back up to here and they'll use... They'll just output slightly slower. It's, it's fine. So that's good. Uh, so I did mention we should look at Vestrian. I'll, I'll do a quick look at our two uh, moons. This is our Vulcanite miner. And, you know, it's doing okay. We've come here a few times and gotten frustrated. I, I made a mega wall and some pretty nice turret defenses. We even have the artillery shells keeping uh, nearby enemy biters a little bit further away. Like... These guys here are going to spawn a, a nest soon, and then the artillery shells will destroy it as soon as it gets created. So, like, that works. And then the main thing here is we're mining the Vulcanite, processing it, um, and then shooting it right here. These guns shoot it back to, uh, you know, our whole planet, basically. So, we do need a lot of Vulcanite. This is working out okay, but... It just turned out to be very difficult on this. This was like supposed to be a very low threat planet with very low biters. Uh, but that was not accurate. It turned out to be incredibly dangerous. Uh, therefore, I only made a small base. And I don't really feel like making a bigger one. Because I pretty much have to automate everything. And I don't really want to automate everything. Um, it doesn't make enough bots. or And it doesn't make any artillery cannons shells. Um, if I can find a robot yeah, they've only got 200 construction bots left. Once we run out of construction bots, um, you know, wall, walls getting damaged won't get repaired after that. So I'll have to send some more bots. But um, they can't really construct their own unless I really expand the resources and manufacturing on this planet. Which I just don't really want to do. Like, I'd have to get iron... I think I need copper for sure as well, and there might not be very much copper on this planet. So, it just, it's a big pain, and, and I can't just easily ship, like, I make lots of bots here, so it's like, sure, if I could just send some bots there remotely, it would be fine, but there's not really an easy way to do it. Um, I can't put a load of uh, construction bots into one of those cannons and just fire it. I have to send an entire cargo ship full. So, a cargo ship can hold, like, I don't know, probably... How big is the stack? 50. Uh, it's like 500 uh, slots. So 50 times 500. It can hold a tremendous amount of supplies. And sending it with just you know 50 bots sounds like a giant waste. So I don't like to do that either. Anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, I know one thing I did that I should show before I forget. The other moon that we didn't review. Uh, Morrigan got a bit of an upgrade. 
This was my first moon base. And this one doesn't have any biters on it, so it's way easier to practice builds on. And I think at the very end of the last stream, I set up the meteor defenses here. Because this base, this moon kept getting pummeled by meteors constantly. I don't know why, if it's... I don't know if it actually says anything about it. But for whatever reason, this place gets hit by, by meteors constantly. Um, the other... The other moon, Vestrian, actually, I don't know, might be get some meteors, but I'd say way, way fewer. They get 7% biters destroying everything, but they don't see a ton of meteors I, for now. Anyway, so this place needed the meteor defense system, so I figured that out. And I, I kind of emergency crafted the, um, uh, the ammunition. And I think when I came up here last stream, I'm like, oh, I ran out of steel because I made a billion iron chests or steel chests. Uh, but we fixed that. Uh, no longer will we make, you know, a million of these. And I think I delivered some steel here. I'm not sure where it is. But um, it ran out of steel because I wasted it all. But I shipped some more. And uh, it still might not have enough. Yeah, it's still pretty low on steel. But it at least it's working. And I built enough of these, like, random buildings. I can remotely craft almost anything we need here. Because it's got pretty good stocks. Um... So that's kind of funny. Uh, and it does have access to copper and iron, so... You know, this base I, I like a lot more than the... The one that's currently being destroyed. Um, but I did start the work on the next major resource, uh, Beryllium, or Beryl. The problem is, um, although I've got the raw, the, the, the raw ore that is mined out as Beryl, and I stored up a bunch of it. You know, got a... Got a 50,000 barrel. I'm like, well, this place already does a lot of manufacturing because this is where we get all our immersite. You know, this is where all the purple stuff gets done. That's nice. And uh, eventually gets shot back to our planet from here. Immersite plates, immersite crystals, pew pew, also super fuel. It works. The problem is we can't actually process all of the ber ber beryllium because it gets turned into... Beryllium sulfate with some sulfuric acid. That's easy enough. But then the next step, unfortunately, with beryllium sulfate, which I was going to do here, but it turns out we can't. So I'm going to have to shoot it somewhere else. Because if I left them my, my layout here, you start with adding acid to the raw ore. But the next step, beryllium sulfate, the next processing, needs cryonite. And, you know, funnily enough... This moon was where we got Cryonite. However, it didn't have very much and it's all gone. So, because there's no way to get more beryllium on the moon, the Morrigan, we need to get Cryonite, or there's no way to get Cryonite to, to, to process the barrel. Although we have a ton of barrel, we can't actually process it here. So we have to send it somewhere else. So where can we get Cryonite? Well, the best place that I can find is Frost, which is way, way far away. But it has infinite cryonite and some other goodies, including iridite, which we do not have yet either. No beryllium, but if we shoot the beryllium here, we should be able to process it here. Or, alternatively, we just mine the cryonite and shoot that. Best, basically, putting all the manufacturing back on Novus, where both barrel could be shot and cryonite could be shot, and we just do it all here. That might make more sense. Um, because... I'm a little bit concerned about power. Um, you know, solar solar panel is pretty garbage out here. And there's not really very much oil in terms of, like, oil power. Or even coal for coal power. So I don't think it's going to have an amazing, like, power generation. And the hiccups are back. Dang. I'm, no, I'm usually not, like super affected by uh, hiccups, but they got me today. Anyway, we, we probably need to get here for Cryonite one way or the other, and we'll just ship it somewhere. I'm not going to go over all the other planets right now. I'm just looking for ones, and there is a, you know, there's a filter system here with the Universe Explorer. I'm just looking for ones with no biters, because they're so much easier to set up. So we've already got Morrigan. There's Ninla, which I think is where we're going to go for Holmanite. Because that's another of the... There's four resources I need for the next tier of science. Barrel, Holmanite, Iridium, and the Vita Melange. But 
Uh, this place has got lots of fulminite, and the oil is nice. It's a bit low on, like, iron and copper, but I can shoot iron and copper around if I need it, so it should be okay. Also, not very good with solar and then frost. So we've got two planets that we might do, like, little mini outposts on today. I think, I think that will get us access to effectively three of the next... Um, resources for science. So, I didn't show that off either, I suppose, but, you know, in between episodes, I just researched the rest of the junk. Anything that would have come out of the current tier of science has just been finished. And I'm pretty sure I showed this all off last stream. Uh, we was just unlocking all of these, um, actually, I think we did that last stream. Because at the end of last stream, if I remember correctly, we, uh, that's when we built, like, the super researchers up here that go way, way faster than they used to. And, um, yeah, we, we, we kind of just banged out most of the current uh, space tech real fast. So, you know, we've got three three space manufacturers making red, blue, and amber. Well, amber, I think I'm calling them crimson, amber, and teal or something for the, the three space science colors. But um, those guys are basically done. I, I'm, I kind of ran out of something, but there's only a couple things left. Artillery shooting speed, more robots, and faster swarm safety for infinity that could even be researched. Everything else needs this new stuff. So we've got, you know, next gen blue, um, next gen green, uh, next gen purple, and next gen orange. So if there's an easier way to show those off. Yeah, we got astronomic, biological, energy, and material. And we can get three of those probably pretty easy. And I think that's what I'm going to try to do today is to get, um, at least get the raw resources. I think it's uh, beryllium for one of them. Uh, Vita Melange is the green one, and I, there's nowhere to get it without fighting biters. So I'm going to hold off on that a little bit longer. But we can definitely get material going, energy going, and astronomic going just by you know, using some safe bases and getting stuff shipped to the moon base. So while we're expanding, I'm just going to let this base load up on really as much space platform as we can make. I'm not sure if we happen to have another... Uh, we don't actually have a, um, uh, a spare warehouse up here to move. Um... I could probably build one or I could just come up here myself, but... Basically, I just, I just want to lot, have a lot of ground space up here, so I can have mostly infinite power and more space, and then when we ship all our resources back here, we'll be able to actually have room to do what we need to do. Uh, I know we're going to need a lot of new buildings that I haven't done yet, so like the telescopes and stuff. There's a whole bunch of stuff we'll have to manufacture in the new buildings, but I'll save that for once we got the metals. Alright, I think that's enough chit-chat. So... I was originally... I'm going to update my to-do list here, because that's certainly more than enough recap time. Uh, I was originally thinking of, of focusing on building up my current base, but I think this is just a very large mega project that won't actually progress us, because what we really need is more research, and this doesn't directly get us research. This just increases some of the efficiency and throughput and understandability of our current base. But I understand my base, and it works, and I can continue to make for a while, more of those weird spot fixes where I just add some beacons, change some modules, just add some more spaghetti belts. And my robots can carry stuff around pretty efficiently. Like, I've got, you know, 2,800 of these logistic bots. Uh, they can fly stuff around pretty well, so as long as I don't totally brick something, I, I can do some short-term fixes and, uh, you know, make things run a bit smoother or, or just fix up a, a bottleneck myself. So that's the plan. That's what I'm going to do. So, how are we going to do it? Well, I have never used the spaceship on stream. So I'm going to use the spaceship on stream first. Because, I don't know, I've never done it. Vestrian's getting destroyed. We're just going to ignore it for now. Um, so, we are... I think I still might set a cargo rocket up. But what I'm going to do is bring a landing pad with me. And so I will need, I'm going to make a, okay. I don't know if I'll need my spacesuit. I might need my spacesuit, but I'm going to need one capsule because we're going to carry that into our spaceship. 
And then we're going to use the space capsule to go from orbit to the surface. I'm going to need a cargo landing pad, which I, of course, never automated because that would be silly. Uh, what do we need to build one of those? Uh, I have automated so many buildings, just not this one. Ten steel chests, thousand concrete, thousand steel, and some radar. Sure. Ten steel chests. Uh, I know I make plenty of radar somewhere around here. Like I said, I know my base, right? I know where everything is. There we go. Radars. I said I needed 10. I got some extras. Uh, then I just needed a whole bunch of concrete and steel. The concrete is right here. Uh, I should turn my logistics off so they don't delete it instantly. Two, three, four. That should be enough. And some steel. I know I have a steel buffer chest from a very long time ago. Also, no one who was playing this game would ever find it. Oh, look. A bunch of steel just sitting there. That's actually not the one I was looking for. Um, that's, this is, this is my standard steel buffer, but <laughs> this is a well-designed base, as you can tell. Turn the logistics back on, build a landing pad. Yeah, we just got to figure out what we want to bring with us. Just plan well before we go. All right, so. We're bringing a space capsule, we're bringing a landing pad, we're bringing a space suit. I need to bring some rocket fuel. Hopefully I remember all the things I need to bring, because I'll probably forget. I'm going to bring like about a hundred maybe. It, should only, it shouldn't take that much to get up and down off the moon, but you never know. I don't know if there's a way to, to actually check it remotely, but we'll bring a bunch of rocket fuel so we can power the... The capsule to go up and down. Um, we're also going to need... I should probably build a rocket silo. And I should bring at least enough cargo rocket parts to get back here. Well, I don't need to get back here. I just need to get back into space to get to my spaceship. But I will need some. And I don't know how many. So we'll bring like... Well, this will be way too much, but it's fine. Each of these is five cargo sections. A full rocket costs a hundred. Um, it's difficult to know how much a space capsule needs. They also need cargo rocket pieces. For instance, on Novus, it's 13 to get into orbit through this. I don't know what it'll be on the other planets, but probably not much more, maybe less. So that'll cover that. I should build Normally, I would use a cargo rocket to get back and forth, but maybe I'm not going to do that anymore. I don't know. Um, but the landing pad for sure. And what I can do is... I can pre-set this a little bit. We're going to fire it to frost. Now, we don't have a landing pad here yet, so the rockets... You could fire it, but it would just sort of explode and all the resources would get spread around. Oh, hiccups. I'm sorry, guys. I might actually take a short break. I'm sorry. Rough start to the stream here. I'm just going to walk around for a couple minutes and hold my breath. I'm just going to put up a, a little be right back notice. Sorry, guys. Ugh. Biology.
Alrighty, live tubers. Hopefully, got that under control. Just gonna try sitting up a little bit straighter here too. Um, let me update my screen a little bit. The to-do list. So I think I've kind of talked myself into it here as we we got, did the uh, the opener. We're not gonna do a base, a, a current base upgrade. We're gonna go expansion planets, and then space science. So it's really specifically. Um, new planet outposts and we're going to need cryonite polminite I don't know what it's called and iridium or something like that whatever those guys are called so we're going to get those set up I don't think that'll actually take too long and then it'll be space station science You know, it's mostly just taking all of those new resources and then um, getting some science hooked up so we can get new buildings and efficiencies and all that good stuff. Because I think I did look at it a little. It's a bit hard to, to parse exactly what gives you what. But there are some things in here that are really nice. Um, I'm not sure what I'm looking forward to the most. Uh, there's new recipes every now and then. I think... I'm trying to think of things that I would want before I rebuild the base. I I wasn't, you know, impressed with the Mark II substations. These are the power distribution things. Um, it only goes from 20 by 20 to 24 by 24. That's not a huge upgrade, but it's probably worth using for my mega base, right? Like if I had those for the mega base, that might help out just spread out the, you know, just a little bit more room. Uh, there's probably, mm, that sounds good. Destroys biters, trees, fish, vita melange, and more. And you'll need life support to survive on the planet. <laughs> Just eradicates all life from the planet. Yeah, we, we could look forward to that one of these days. Definitely. But, uh... Yeah, there's, there's a ton of fancy stuff for later on, but... In the short term, like, what would actually be beneficial to us... Um... I mean, I would love a space elevator, but we're not going to get to that anytime too soon. This is a tier two ex ac accumulator for power. Um, that's not going to happen anytime soon either. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be super easy to get the like the the science pack tier twos. I believe will require even more stuff. I think than the tier one science pack. I haven't actually looked at it very closely. It is possible these won't use a whole lot of more than the last one, but but I don't know. Um, I mean, we could get Spider-Trons. That's not too far away. That might be fun. If we're going to go, um, you know, colonize planets that have uh, lots of biters on them, bring in some Spider-Trons along, that sounds like fun. Um, biological science is the one we're going to probably not have an option to do easily. Never get out of these once I'm in there. Um, but yeah, you know, energy stuff. There's, there's just there's so many things. I think the rocket reusability would be nice i'm not sure how far we could go down this line but um each one of these gives you more of the car of the rocket parts back every time you research it so um so it's certainly nice to get some more mm. anyway we'll, we'll figure that out in a bit for now let's continue planning our trip to the planet frost so like i said i'm gonna fly there with this stuff in my inventory this is like the minimum i think you want to bring probably you know wearing your your your, your spacesuit probably maybe i don't know uh let me throw those away i'm just gonna get rid of my shields for now i don't well they might be you know i, I put on the uh the energy absorber but it's fine. Um, oh, geez, what do I need to bring? I don't want to spend like an hour preparing, but it, it's going to take a little bit of time. Uh, the rocket itself, we're going to launch with the bulk resources to build the base. So we can look at this. We can look at it first. That's, that's probably something. We're going to go to Frost. 
So this is a icy rock, you know, as as you get. Now, it says it has water, but does that? I don't know if I can use an offshore pump to get it, because there's a flag for a waterless planet. But I don't think you can use an offshore pump in a frozen, like, ice. So I'm not sure. We've got giant packs of cryonite. Because these are certainly what would normally be the lakes, I think. They got some uranium. That's nice. You could generate this planet a little bit. Cryonite's the main thing, the, the nice blue metal. Uh, lots of iron, so once we get it started, we can, um, you know, self-sustainable a little bit. It'll probably want to shoot down meteors and stuff eventually. Uh, this is a core seam. I'm probably not going to set this up the first time I go here, but with some more advanced messing around, we can get cryonite core fragments and then effectively have infinite cryonite out of here. It, but it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a project to set up. Okay, well, I wanted to make sure we had, like, the stuff to get a base running. Ah, there's some water. Okay, okay. So, there is some non-frozen water. We'll probably want to set the base up somewhere near here. Because that way I'll have access to it for, you know, processing if I need it. And pumping fluids around is kind of a pain. So, I'd rather, you know, belt other items over and, and just build the base near the... The, the liquid water. Um, other resources would be nice to find some of that iridium that we were promised. The uh, the map or the the planetary. Okay, there's there. This is a uh, immersite. That's a ton of immersite. We don't really need it because we've got a moon that has it already. But if we ever need more, this is here. Okay, there's a couple hundred thousand iridite. That's not a lot. There's also quite a lot of oil, lots of iron, tons of cryonite, pretty good amount of uranium if we need it, more oil, there is some copper but not lots, there's some more iridite. So it looks like we're not going to get a ton of iridite but I would imagine if we can get, I don't know how much exactly but maybe a million or so, maybe half a million. That'll, that'll probably be enough to get the science going. Like like the current tier of cryonite, we were able to get this science. We fully researched all of the cryonite science. We just don't have the spare cryonite for manufacturing, basically. And then the barrel will need it. So we'll be shooting cryonite here to process the beryllium. We might also... Um, one thing we could do, actually, yeah, is... Um, let, let's, let's, before we even go, let's look at the processing required for iridite and holmium. Because I actually haven't looked at it yet, and for all we know, it might be very complicated. So we'll probably want chemical uh, plants. In fact, I probably want to build more than that many. So we'll let that stack up a bit more. Uh, other things we're very likely to use will be, like... We don't use electrolysis super often. Filtration comes up pretty regularly. Atmospheric condensers, you generally just need for like nitrogen and oxygen and stuff. Uh, I think we'll probably want pulverizers. We might need centrifuges. It's nice to have a couple storage tanks. Uh, we could start with like having a couple mines as we plan it out. Anything else that I would build with? I think that's all the main stuff for... Oh, the... the don't forget the furnaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta cook stuff. Alright, so I like to do this... Also, if you're wondering, I did delete all of my my wind farms. Yes, yes. I didn't mention it, but you probably noticed. Alright, so we... Well, I can't place the drills, but we're gonna get iridium. Or iridite. Iridite. 
we for now we'll be turning it i mean we could delivery capsule it back but that's kind of a pain so let's see if we can at least process it here so it starts with a pulverizer so let's start with a pulverizer and we're going to try to make crushed iridite so that will be raw mined iridite in crushed oh well that's gonna be a bit weird so we're gonna need a loop for this one um So the way I'll probably plan this out will be a system like this, where one of the two will loop back to the input part. It's like this is from the mines, and this is back, but we want to prioritize the recycling aspect so that it's using it returning some of it back to the loop and we can have like a bunch of machines and that way the excess iridite will just get sent back and then we'll also need to filter off the sand and I don't know what I'll do with that but that'll end up with us getting just the crushed iridite, which is the stuff we want. So what do we do with that? Crushed iridite. We just want this to turn into powder. Uh-oh. This is looking... It's looking real complicated real fast. Uh, iridium powder. Uh-oh, I have no idea. This, this whole thing is going to get off the rails if I start seeing a bunch of uh, intermediate components that I've never seen before. Okay, this might... May, maybe we should send this back to Novus after all. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> it's possible we're not going to be doing this. This is why I want to test it before we go. Uh, maybe we can crush it at first. I think you probably get a more efficient capsule of crushed ir iridite rather than just pure mined iridite. But this is not looking super... Super easy to process. Oh, freaking... Press E to close most of the time, except when you're in a... In, in the recipe book. So then I'm typing E to close, but it's messing up my uh, recipe searcher. All right, so then the goal is to turn that crushed iridite to make iridium powder, but first, nitric acid, not super complicated, but you need rare metals, and then nitrogen and oxygen. And hydrogen. You can see all the little circles. Red is for hydrogen, white is for oxygen, blue is for nitrogen. And then you need hydrogen chloride, which is not hard to make again. It's just power consuming. It's it's chlorine and hydrogen. So those two fine. Crushed iridite will have. But what the frick is a cation? We use two and we might get some back. We're still going to have to do the loop back for getting crushed, we're gonna get, like every step of the way doesn't guarantee you the stuff you want. It's like 50% powder, 50% crushed. This, this is gonna be a trick, but we'll do the same loop system with the powder, with with the crushed, to cycle the crushed back in. It'll, it'll go down and back up or something. So we definitely need a lot of splitters for, for looping. The two acids in are fine. I don't know about these cations. They'll have to recycle as well, but I'll have to bring new ones in from whatever they are. And then dirty iridium water is another thing that we've never used. I mean, I kind of guessed I'd need a filtration plant. Uh... So usually it's dirty water, but dirty iridium water is different. There's dirty holmium water, 
And then there's three recipes for just regular dirty water that you can just make into iron, copper, or raw, rare, if you care. But then the three that we're on right now, Holmium, Iridium, well, just Holmium and Iridium, they've got special... a special recycling of dirty water. Now, I could probably just burn it. Chances are I can throw it into a flare stack and it'll just disappear. But we should try to learn how to handle it correctly. You get... Crushed Iridite back. You might lose a cation. And you get some stone junk. Okay, but the real problem is what is that cation? Because I've never seen it. On the plus side, you can shoot them with the delivery cannons. Alright. Uh... Plastic, Vulcanite, Acid, and Steam. So we could be making them right now. We have Vulcanite. We've got Plastic. You do get quite a lot. So I, I really will need somewhere on Novus. Oh, I never even looked. It's right here. Yeah, there's uh, anions and cations. All right. Well, I, I didn't recognize that. Okay, this is way more complicated. That just gets us... So I have to make the cations out of vulcanite and other stuff. We use some to process crushed into powder and also to do the filtering. But the goal here is to see where the powder goes so we can sort of finish the basic lane. Uh, here we powder. That's the recipe. What do we do with it? You make blast cake. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is in a centrifuge. See, this is why I've been postponing this. I've been up and not excited about trying to figure this one out for a while. All right. Iridium blast cakes. Now, the problem there is they need enriched Vulcanite, which I'm not shooting around because I didn't think I would need it. But we will need this powder, you know, the net gain of powder. Then you have to add enriched Vulcanite, which at the moment... I could probably split some off and shoot it. I don't know if that's a great idea. Because every time you process one ore, you only get so much, and then you have to enrich it kind of like like uranium enrichment. I have to be careful I don't pull out too much, or else we won't be able to make blocks. Because they use a lot of enriched vulcanite too. So yeah, the easiest way would just be to add a, a, a box and start shooting enriched vulcanite. On the other hand, the long-term solution might just be shooting either raw vulcanite or enriched plus crushed. I'm probably just going to mine it and shoot it, honestly. I was planning on doing like the, the processing on the planet locally, but I think there's too much overlap now. Um, like there's, there's, there, it's not like it's got one use. It's got multiple other things that need it. Um, glass cake, vulcanite. So yeah, I guess I didn't look at it, but it's only the vulcanite blocks, which is what mostly we need, and then the blast cakes. But that's still two completely different resources. It would probably be better just to have the enriched vulcanite on my main planet. But yeah, that's not quite what I was uh, what I wanted. But what we saw as well was that if we do Holmium, it will be similar, I think, at some level. I thought I saw one that needed. What was the one? Something. Something, I needed, I needed, uh, 
the anions, right? What, what are the cations? No, we're using the cations, but the anions are used in something. And that's the one that needs all of the cryonite stuff. Like, it, 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 yeah, so making holmium cro chloride, which is one of their intermediate ones, we will need the anions from cryonite. So, like, there's a lot of mixing back and forth. Also, hey there, Robert. Um, not a lot of sexy aliens right now, just a lot of complicated construction formulas. And it's really starting to smash my brain a little bit here. Oh, I'm not sure if I'm even ready to tackle this. Okay, let's let's finish the line, though. We need iridium powder into iridium blast cakes, if I can figure out how to do that. What do you do with some blast cake? Put some icing on it. Uh, you turn blast cake into ingots at an industrial furnace, but you definitely need pyroflux. So throw down a furnace. That'll get you the ingots. And then technically you probably need to turn the ingots into plates for most uses. So that's sort of the chain. It's mine it. And then figure out a way to get the crush sort of looping, but then working. And then it starts getting complicated here because you need these cations. It still has a loop system with a bunch of waste product, and you have to loop. You have to loop both the crushed and the cations back by adding more in and also more cations. The dirty water needs to get filtered out, which will give you more that you can put back into the system. To finally get the powder, which needs vulcanite to turn into cake, which needs pyroflux to turn into ingots, and then you can finally get your iridium plates, which is what we will need for the actual building. So that's that's a bit of a crazy one. I guess while we're here, let's prepare myself mentally. Let's look at Holmium at the same time. I'm hoping it's similar, uh, but we'll see. Crushed Holmanite. Um, you just mine it, and then you crush it. So far, so good. I think it's another one of these, another chemical plant, maybe. Uh, that's crushed holmanite. So one of the differences here is the iridium gives you back iridite that you have to loop. Holmium at least doesn't. It just only gives you crushed and stone, and stone's relatively easy to deal with. So there's no loop. So this is a little bit easier just off the bat. And then the second step is hydrogen chloride it will need a loop because it's inputting crushed holmanite and outputting crushed holmanite so we need that to stay in the system we need the anions to also loop although we're losing half of them and then we're getting holmium chloride out of it so we will once again need to figure out anions and I can't really even start anions until I get the cryonite so we have to start shipping cryonite here so first step go to frost get cryonite send it to novus so that we can start that process I think iridite and holmanite might take a while yeah it's this is very this is this is the most complicated thing yet I think like there's been varying degrees of complexity up to this point this is a this is taking it to another level We're just going to hold off on the anions for now, but assuming we have those, we throw them in the mix, we end up with holmium chloride. You think that goes into another uh, one of these? Yeah, holmium chloride turns into holmium powder. Oddly enough, you add copper cable. I've never seen a smelting system where you add a non-metal ore, like a resource. This is something manufactured. So you need copper into copper cables just to, to continue the holmium process. So that's weird. But at that point, we have holmium powder. Do we think we just cook it again, just like the other ones? Holmium powder. So there's two ways. I could add coal and sand and directly cook it, which sounds like the bad way to do it. Or just add pyroflux. Uh, you could probably do some math to see which gives you more. This is 100 powder for one ingot. This is 
50 powder for 250 liquid. And then I would need a um, to cast it, which is pretty easy to show. Grab some casters. So all the liquid would come out and you would spend, you also, you still need sand, unfortunately. So, you know, we, it, it might be self-sufficient in that you get rocks that you can crush into sand. But I don't know if you'd get enough, you know, to actually do the input for here. So you might need to actually bring an out, out exterior. This is 250 liquid for one ingot. We get 250 for 50. So that means 50 powder is one ingot. The alternate recipe was 100 powder per ingot. So this would definitely give you half as many holmium ingots for the powder. And it would cost you coal and sand, which might not be a big problem. Pyroflux is probably more expensive, but it's also pretty cheap. Now, 10 sand per ingot versus 2 sand per ingot. Yeah, I think this is the optimal recipe. Whew. All right. Yeah, we, we definitely need to cook. Um, that's the blast cake for you. So that's two systems, and they look pretty similar, right? They both have anion, cation, pulverizer, chemical plants, um, centrifuge, cooking, and then casting. I guess there's no ingots for, for iridium. Let me just double check I didn't miss it. Usually the ingots are better than the plates for uh, shooting around. There are iridium ingots. I just take the blast cake and cook it in a furnace. So I probably just clicked. Oh. Yeah, that's an ingot. Never mind. Right, 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 right. Oh, I guess it's just you can't get molten. Right. The difference is you don't you don't go to the molten step. You just go straight to the ingot phase. And you there's no option but to use pyroflux. That's fine. So the only difference is we're using Technically, one extra building to get to your final product, which is the plates. But we can we can disassemble the ingots, you know, when we need them. Well, there's uh, one more. Uh, well, beryllium I already have the layout for, so I don't really need to redo beryllium. It's uh, correctly laid out here. So I've already got, like, the manufacturing process for beryllium. It needs the cryonite rods... At least it doesn't need anions. So we're going to have already figured out how to make sulfate easy enough. Then you add the cryonite rods to make hydroxide. Then you just take the hydroxide and make powder, which that's very easy. And then it's got that split. You can use the coal and sand or the pyroflux, which I think we're just going to do pyroflux. And that gets us the molten beryllium which you, again, still add sand to and get the ingots and then the plates. The beryllium might be a bit easier because it seems to only need cryonite rods. It doesn't need the anions or cations, and there's no weird loops. So I think this maybe is still the first one we're going to do because I think it's the easiest. Uh, and then the only other one left, there's there's technically four resources that we, we need to figure out. Four new raw resources. These two look like hell. The last one is Vita Melange, and I'm not in a rush at all because I have to fight biters to even get this started. But in theory, we mine, and I, I could show you. What that would look like, uh, I think like Buttercup, yeah, Vita Buttercup. Let's have a quick look at another planet or moon, but. Totally normal looking planet, full of uh, spice. Uh, hopefully. I think this is the one that has low threat, but biter meteors. But the low threat we learned doesn't really mean anything, so there we go. So Vita Melange at least looks like a regular ore that you can mine. And 
We should see it in the resource line here. Yeah. So it's going to go this one here. So you're going to get nuggets. And then bloom and spice and extract. Hey, Dark, Dark Angel. I definitely use spreadsheets uh, from time to time, no doubt about it. But right now, we're just getting the basics of, of this system. So, nuggets. You mine the Vita Melange. You get wood, stone, and nuggets. That's weird. Are we going to guess that it's the same general process as the other resources of this tier? Uh, well, this is spice into extract. We're not there yet. We need... Maybe I should just look it up in the thing here. Nuggets. What do we do with nuggets? Uh, we try to make bloom out of it, which is in a greenhouse. Uh oh. Oh, boy. Fertilizer. I don't like making fertilizer. <laughs> We've done it before, it's it's fine, but it's just one of those things that takes a long time. Alright, so there we go. New recipe. I never even noticed that they added into our greenhouses. Ye old greenhouse bloom. So then the nuggets, we go we go ore to nugget, and then some junk. And then nugget plus fertilizer into bloom. At least it's only got one output, so that's good. What do we do with Bloom? We make the spice at a furnace. So we've got those laying around. We also need Vulcanite blocks, which are on Novus, so that'll be ready to go. Uh, we get Spice, extract, and some methane gas. Well, we can vent the methane gas easily enough. Um, spice and extracts. I'm not sure if this is the end of the chain. This is weird. This is way more biological than your average ores. Alright, just two trance. Um, let's check spice first, because the extract is really rare. You only get 10% chance of one. You're going to get mostly spice. And it looks like this is the final thing that we're just using. Oh, I, maybe it's like uranium where you mostly get the bad uranium. And then you have to enrich it to get the good stuff. You do use spice for biochemical data, which is how we're going to make green science. So we definitely need spice. But we will also need extract. So let's look at this one. It's at a chemical plant. This will definitely be part of the production chain. So you're going to take your 40 spice. It'll be 400 spice for every one extract on average. Right? 40 and 0.1. So you're going to get a lot more spice than extract. Not even close. You take 30 spice and one extract, which is still... Way more extract than you get from the mining process or the smelting process. Remember, we said 400 to 1. This is 30 to 1, so you don't get nearly enough to run this. But then it, it evens it out. You get 20 spice backs, so you lose 10 spice, and you get an average of like 6 extracts. So yeah, it is very much like the Covarex enrichment. So this system will be kind of complicated. We'll, we'll, when we're actually doing this, we're going to need to probably get rid of the light oil... And then we're going to have this feeding into itself. So we're going to have, you know, spice and extract feeding input on a couple lanes. And then this stuff is going to loop until we have enough extract. And then we're going to draw them out. And that's going to be a little bit complicated to work out exactly how much we need. But um, overall, the Vita Melange line isn't actually very complicated. There's not too many steps. And some of them are fairly easy, like crushing them, no big deal. Uh, whatever you call this, uh, growing them, I guess. Uh, the nugget does need fertilizer, but, you know, that's okay. And then cooking it is just vulcanite, that's not too bad. And then you just do a an, sort of enrichment process. And that, I believe that is all we'll need to get the extract, 
which we will be using for the next year of modules and science and you know whatever else we need like vitalic acid but i don't know we don't even we don't even have this unlocked yet so it doesn't even matter all right that's the four things uh Iridite and Holmium look to be a little bit more difficult. Vitamelange looks easier, except that all the actual raw resources on Viter Planet, which is annoying. So Barrel is definitely the easiest one, and I, I, let me let me see what Barrel will get us, because I forget which of the sciences it unlocks. Uh, it unlocks astronomic science. So this is the one we're going to go for. She just conveniently ended up on the bluest of sciences. So, that's fine. We can look forward to some of these upgrades. Heck, we could get a cryo gun maybe out of it. And, uh, you know, some of these things will unlock. That's fine. And and then after this, if we, if we can accomplish, you know, dark blue science today, maybe we'll tackle um, irid iridite or holminum. Holmin holmin because those two look kind of crazy. But, uh, yeah, let's, let's get on with it, right? Let's just get on with it. Um, okay, so I'm still going to go to Frost. Uh, we're going to... We're going to take our spaceship. So that means I'm going to technically... I think I'm going to capsule to orbit. Let's just let's get all this prep. I'm going to start loading these up pretty soon, but... Uh, Uh, still need way more. Need 13 of these. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then like another 100 liquid fuel. 9, 10, 11. So this is just saving us one cargo rocket into the orbit, but this should be fine. So we've got more than enough fuel, more than enough storage. Uh, this does... I'm f I hate using these these capsules because it limits what I can. Maybe I'm not gonna do this. I don't know. I I just I find these such a huge waste. You got to bring all the fuel and rockets, and then it still limits how much cargo you can bring. I'm gonna do it once on stream, but I really think this is a waste of your time. You know, we're, we're gonna use this to get to our spaceship basically, but. It's just so expensive, and you can't even bring your inventory. So I have to put this... Anything I want to bring with me has to go in the cargo rocket, which is going to... Um, uh, we're we're going to build the landing pad. Alright, so we're going to... I do need a capsule, but we're bringing a capsule with us. I'm just going to... This is like a backup capsule in, things, in case things go terrible. All right, so what do we need on the planet? Once I drop my inventory off, I will be able to go to space. I want to make sure I do not forget this landing pad. Just go there. I guess we've got a little bit more fuel. We can get a little bit of space here. Three more slots. Okay, um, oh boy, this is, this is going to be a bit of a mess. Cryonite, we, we need... I, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Blue is thinking. Big brain. The plan is to go to Frost to get... We need the Cryonite. Now, I actually think I just want to shoot it back. I don't think I want to process it up here. So this is really going to be a tiny base. We're just going to mine Cryonite and shoot it back. I'm not... We don't need to defend it. We just need enough power to run the mining drills and a space gun. I'll come back later for the... The Iridite, but we're not going to do that the first trip. Because it's just way too complicated, I think. Well, we could set up the mining and shooting. Um, yeah... I, 
I am I am torn on how I want to run this. Yeah, we're gonna bring a bunch of big drills, not many other machines. I'll probably bring the beacons. I gotta bring enough modules. Uh, power cables, belts. There's a bunch of stuff like that we're gonna have to bring along. I need power. How are we gonna run stuff on a place that has like no very limited solar? Okay, let's find my guns because we're gonna be we're gonna be shooting shooting capsules back. I really hate the alarms. They just never stop. They're usually on a planet that I can't do anything about it. They just always buzz at me. Didn't I set up a... I always forget if I set it up. It's a gun making building to shoot. Well, I may have already done it, but I'll make a new one because I forgot now. This is the downside of a very unorganized uh, mall. What I want is these. Actually, I could try to just request it on my network. Before I before I go rebuilding it, let's see if there's some in the system. Uh, there's 48 in storage. We got them immediately, which means... Someone nearby was building... Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> Alright. It's just ready for the next building. But yeah, we, we got lots of those. Okay, we don't even need 20, but that that's... That's spares. And it's one stack, so might as well bring the whole stack. Okay, so we're going to put those on Frost to shoot stuff around. Um, we probably should build some receiving pads as well. There's also some of those auto-constructed. Convenient. So we got about a stack of cannon chests. We're gonna bring more of the big drills, or big, yeah, big drills. Get your drill on. Um, I think two stacks of those because we want to make sure we got enough. Although they, that I mean that's probably way more than we'll need. Ah, Fifty is tons. Um. We need communications back and forth as well. Did I don't know if I automated these? So we, we have to use satellite transmitters and receivers to communicate home. And I looks like I automated these as well. I just didn't know. They're probably standing right beside me in here, yeah, these guys. That's the transmitter and that's the receiver somewhere nearby. All right. Or no. We did not get any receivers. That's a pretty good signal that I didn't automate receivers. So we'll get that hooked up. Uh, green motors, blue car or blue circuits. This really is the lazy man's way of doing it, but steel and copper plates. So yeah, we'll just let the bots deal with it. Uh, we'll have uh, some of those soon enough. And I'll just keep figuring out what to bring to this space outpost. Um, so this will be enough cannons to deliver items back and forth. Mining. Maybe some more beacons if we want to do that. Although I'm not sure we're going to have the power required for that. Immediately got thrown out because I had the logistics on. We'll bring a few more uh, beacons. Can't forget they need the signal receivers. Probably won't need that many, but, but I'll bring half a dozen. Uh, probably want to bring some radar. No, I won't need very many, but it's nice to be able to... No, no, I won't need it. Never mind. The um, satellite system can see without needing radars. It's, radars are nice, but we don't need them. And they use too much power. Uh, 
power is something we need to think about. That's definitely on my list. Let's put these in the spaceship because we're going to, you know, shoot them to the planet we're going to. Because uh, carrying them in our inventory is just going to be a pain. Uh, so we've got beacons. We've got the basic deliveries, the drills. I'm going to need a ton of belts, so we're going to send more than this to get that set up. I actually don't think we'll need the storage tanks for this round. Uh, they should probably they'll probably need some inserters. So we'll give them a chunk of good inserters for whatever kinds they need. Probably bring more. Oh, hi Maria. Good tunes, just very singy. Uh, if I'm gonna rely on them shooting um, uh, Cryonite back, unfortunately, I don't really have a way to automate it yet. Because uh, I have to manufacture these cannon capsules remotely. And I can't send cannon shells either via cannon shell. So we're going to maybe stock up a few more of these. Like, I wish I'd not limited this one quite as much. Um, it'll fill up fairly quickly. These, these guys will build a lot of delivery cannon shells. But we definitely want a good chunk of this cargo rocket with those. Uh, but we can send, like, another cargo rocket. It's not particularly difficult to get another re restock going. I do generally like to bring at least a, a token amount of basic resources, iron, copper, steel. I'll probably throw some more in, but just to get started. So much singing. Oh, I know we're going to need a lot of... Um, Explosives, because I saw a lot of cliffs in this planet. So we can... Why are these bots going so crazy? Oh, they're just restocking my iron. That's fine. Uh, let's bring at least a few stacks of cliff explosives. Thanks, trashing. You're just making my life miserable. It's, it's great most of the time, the auto logistics, until you don't want it to work, and then it you can't carry extras around. All right. Throw those in there. I'll throw some circuits for odd construction projects. This isn't much for materials, but... You know, emergency assembly machines. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to have bots. Uh, I know I need to keep giving them more belts, so we'll just keep throwing those in there. Definitely want them to have... They'll need some storage chests to load into the cannons. So I'll at least give them a passive stack and a requester stack. That'll last a fair while. Didn't I already... Sorry. Signal transmitter thing I forgot to put in. Yeah, and then I gotta go pick up the receivers. They should be maybe done by now. I just wish traveling between planets wasn't so expensive because it really punishes you for bringing, like, missing something. Also, my copper doesn't seem to be doing very good here. Now that my base is manufacturing stuff again, you can see where some of my shortages are. I don't think we'll need 10 receivers, but that's one stack. I said I didn't want to spend an hour prepping for this flight, but honestly, that might be how long it takes. <laughs> uh, signal receiver. I just picked it up. I also saw some more junk I don't need. We're probably not dealing with liquids on this planet. At least not if all we're doing is mining cryonite. But I have to think about where am I getting the power from. Uh, we've still got lots of space on the rocket. So nothing wrong with another stack of iron copper. Uh, we're going to need... We might need modules. Power distribution. Didn't see any of that. 
at least a little bit of the random bits and bobs that get used in emergency crafting. Because most of the stuff here we can't bring. If we're, if we're doing the, uh, the spaceship trick, we, we'd only carry 20 inventory slots, so we're not going to be able to bring a lot of our usual stuff. So I want to make sure I've kind of dropped off a nice round stash of things. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me double check. Sometimes mining needs a sub-resource. Okay, I don't think it needs anything. The, um, I believe it was raw rare metals required some sort of acid to mine, and also uranium required some. Like, we can check. Yeah, it would say requires sulfuric acid or whatever on the ore page. So I was just, like, it would really suck if I'm planning to get cryonite and I missed that you needed uh, some sort of liquid acid of some sort to, to actually get it out of the ground. But no, no, we're good. The big drill will definitely work, so we'll be okay. All right. Um, so all we need to run is a bunch of big mining drills, a couple of delivery capsule cannons, some belts and inserters. But we will need some power. How are we going to get power out here? That's still going to require, you know, I don't know, 50 megawatts, 100 megawatts maybe? Pretty short day-night cycle. Really bad solar efficiency. There is water, so, you know, you could mine coal to, <laughs> to burn into steam. Could try to run a oil. Uranium's just way too much work to set up. I don't think. I don't think cryonite has a like. If we had something that had a megajoule value, um, you can just you can use it to generate. You can just cook it, right? Like the the vulcanite stuff has a megajoule number, ten megajoule fuel value. So like even just basic. Um, halfway processed vulcanite you can just throw into a, a turbine well a, a boiler and, and then run a turbine on it uh however cryonite does not have or shouldn't have a no it does not have a a, a fuel value so that's not going to work on cryonite anyway for cheap energy Immersite, I'm pretty sure you can't use as a fuel either. So it's kind of coal, oil, or solar. Mmm, I'm not a huge fan of that. We're gonna have to pull out some calculators here. Uh, because solar's gonna suck. Is there any other way we could power this base? Like, technically... I could ship off like a crate of uranium fuel. I have to imagine that 500 fuel would last quite a while. Um, and it wouldn't need a, a super large reactor. This is a 2x2 two two, sort of. Um, I don't think you would need four nuclear plants. One might be enough. This guy can generate, assuming you keep it fueled, uh, I think somewhere around a gigawatt or something like that. I forget how this all works exactly, but we don't we won't need that much power, basically. What can I what is there any fuel sources I can delivery capsule relatively easy from here? Because maybe we just shoot stuff there and, and then use it to, to make steam. Oh yeah, we, we can deliver capsule the, the oil product fuel. That's pretty easy. Um, we can just shoot coal at it, or solid fuel. 
I don't think rocket fuel is great for boilers. But solid fuel will be fine. Okay, I think that's what my solution will be. We're just gonna waste, sort of, delivery capsules with um, solid fuel and we're just gonna shoot them to uh, the moon. You know. So we'll have to get that set up and we'll need to... There's a few things we'll need to do here, no doubt. Um, this will need its own satellite receiver. We'll, we'll do this when we get back to Novus after we're done our trip, but we'll bring, let's bring some solid fuel with us and then we'll, um, we'll finish that when we get back. Hopefully. Well, <laughs> the problem is that adding in some solid fuel manufacturing here isn't super easy. <laughs> um... You know, I am making some solid fuel, so it's possible I could split some off. My base is such a mess. Oh, this is a disaster. Uh, let, let's get, I'm going to grab some big fuel refineries and we're just going to, we're just going to do it. I don't think we'll need that many. Just do it. Oh, we also can... Even though I didn't pick up one myself, I can tell the robots to build it. We will need that receiver to control the shoot the shots. And I could just use a requester chest here, the lazy solution. And then I can create the solid fuel somewhere not too far away, and then the bots will fly it here. Sure. That will work. <laughs> in, in a way, it will work. But we have to get to Frost and set it all up. And then we can shoot it. So let's get... Uh... I believe you can make solid fuel out of any of the crude oil byproducts. Yeah, light oil, petroleum, or heavy oil. So, which one do you think I've got the most of? I am making a lot of pure petroleum, but that does get used for like sulfuric acid and stuff. I am making some heavy oil, but only three, and two light oil. So we have, in theory, the most petroleum gas. And I have another giant lane of petroleum gas smelters here, or refineries. About half of them are running, probably full time. And I haven't upgraded them, like I can, uh, you know, I can speed beacon them up and, and make them go way faster and all that, but I just didn't have the desire. Um, are these running? These are running mostly full speed. That makes me worry a little bit, <laughs> because... I don't have max oil, even. I, have, I haven't kept track of my oil stocks in a very long time. They're definitely not full, though. Uh, <clears throat> my current oil income is over here. These bad boys are my pump jacks. And we've got 1.8 million to go, which is a fair amount. I do have another one with 6 million oil ready to hook up at any point. That's ready. And there's actually a lot of oil. Uh, there's another big chunk over here at 2 million. Maybe we just take like the little 2 million stack and make like a solid fuel. Sure, why not? I don't want to tap into my base's use because I'm worried that it's going to break something if I don't, if I don't really plan it out carefully, which I'm trying to go quicker because... I wanna, I wanna get the next progress going, not just spend all day um, messing around here. We're already a couple hours into the stream. Uh. All right, so we got some oil here that we never tapped. Um, uh, 
it's not too much, so that's fairly quick. Just need a couple um, power connectors ready to go. Might as well make them as productive as possible so they last as long as we can. Uh, that does slow them down. We could throw some beacons in if we really care. I don't know if I care enough. Maybe... Yeah, I don't want to take up too much space. Like, I'm going to make a, a, a sort of temporary um, oil refinery line somewhere around here. Okay, that all connects up. And then we've just got the crude coming out. Pretty easy. Luckily, these nice steel pipes, they go pretty far underground. They don't mess up your other builds too much. Pretty safe to run around like this. Definitely need to go further, though. But we can bring these fairly close to where our gun is. Yeah, this is pretty good. So right around here, we'll do a... I don't expect we're going to need all that much. So I'm just going to do like a couple refineries. And then just turn it all into solid fuel and just probably just belt it right in, actually. That'll save us some bot time. So this shouldn't be super complicated by any means. Uh, we, could, we could math out, if you want... Um, I'm going to do... I'll put four down. That's cer certainly more than we need. Um, but you, you could try to math out, like, what the most efficient crude oil into solid fuel recipe is. Because there is multiple recipes to do this. I love my jetpack and my uh, the grapple gun. It's, it's a lot of fun zooming around like that. Alright, so... If I put down the oil refinery, if we go just petroleum gas, uh, I have to get water in here too. Ugh. But we can turn all the oil, you lose 10% of it. You can turn almost all the oil into gas and then turn all the gas into fuel. So you get one fuel per 20 gas and you get 90 gas per oil. So 100 oil turns into 90, which turns into 4.5. Okay, but what about the other options? Unfortunately, they're way more complicated. <laughs> so if we wanted to go with either the light or heavy oil, they actually output all three rather than just the one. So then you'd have to add like a more complicated system, splitting them up into the three components and then turning them all into solid fuel. Hold on. We're going to do it. The most important thing. Solid fuel math. So, we need to know first crude. We already found this out. Crude to uh, gas is 100 to 90. We'll just leave it as a ratio, easy enough. Um, let me look at the other recipes. Uh, crude to light is 100 to 20 heavy, 70 light, and 30 gas is the, the way they so I'm just going to put some more variables just to make it a little bit easier to follow along. 100 crude to 90 gas. 100 crude to 20. I don't want... I'm just trying to think of easy ways of keeping this understandable. And then the last of the refineries do crude to heavy... 
and then you get 100 crude again, turns into 70 H, 30 light, and 20 Gs. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but how much actual fuel do you get out of those? So we already saw the one. Um, you get 20 gas turns into one fuel or Ten light turns into one fuel, or twenty heavy turns into one fuel. So if everything was equal, the light oil probably gives you the most fuel out of it, because you get ten to one instead of twenty to one. So if we just break these down, that will eventually be four point five fuel for a hundred crude. Every hundred crude gives you four point five fuel. This one would be 20 heavy would be 1 plus 7 plus 1.5, uh, 9.5. So you get actually twice as much fuel from it. See, it's worth it. Look at that. What a difference. Um, 70 heavy is 3.5 plus 3 plus one is uh, 7.5. So although the simplest is just to go straight to gas and then straight to solid fuel, you actually get like half efficiency. So I guess we really should, unless, I, unless I'm being lazy, we should just do light oil into fuel. Great deal, right? All right. Let's do it. Uh, we also need to get water, no matter what system we do, we need to get the water connected, so. Let's. I like, I think we were gonna wanna leave like a gap between these. And I think I've decided after all that three is enough. Uh, all right, so the way I like to connect these um, is the first input uh, is connected uh, perpendicularly with underground pipes because underground pipes don't connect across liquids and you can't have two non-underground pipes connecting or else they'll, you know, error. But the second one can just go out a little bit. I think three tiles is just easier to see. Two is enough, but it's a little bit easier to look at like this and fix. And then we just need some water. Well, there's water over there. Um, I'm actually going to specifically do it here because this will put the water pipe right beside the oil pipe. Just it's a little bit easier to look at. And when I'm doing massive builds and I have to fix everything, at least it's all in the same kind of spot. Um, all right, we can bring some water in here quick enough. Maybe a little bit of power. Alright, water's done. That's mostly everything we need. Now we just gotta sort out the outputs. This is some chill music. For the power, I'll just put it in the back. So we're gonna need... I didn't look at the speeds of these processings, but the solid fuel gets crafted very quickly. Oh, you know what? We might as well be like super efficient here. I wasn't really planning on going this deep, but we're going to get as much out of this oil as we possibly can. So, I'm going to move these out of the way. 
using the copy paste function so they remember the recipe. Someone will build it eventually, it's fine. Uh, I need to connect up the outputs, but I would also like them to be beacons. I turned it off. I used to request beacons. Actually, are we even inside the, uh, the logistics net? We are definitely within the logistics network. Everything will show up eventually. So, I'm not sure if one beacon can hit all of those. Um. I'm going to leave a three gap for a beacon and then we'll try to figure that out. This is how everything will connect. This is going to take up way more space than normal, but, you know. This is what I get for being fancy. Oil refineries, I feel like this just always happens. It starts out like, oh, it's simple enough. And then you start putting in the pipes, and you're like, oh, right, it's a disaster. It's it's a mess. Uh, we did get those beacons. I can hit all of them at once. Oh, it's beautiful. I planned it. Totally did it on purpose. So that means we're getting max productivity and good speed. It's, I mean, it's not as fast as they can go, but it's pretty good. Uh... I mean, ideally, maybe you have this connected to the, the same, you know, you could have the three refineries and also three um, fuel refineries at the same time, but whatever. It's, it's not really a thing. All right. I don't know if we're going to need more than three of these. All the liquids join together. Let's start. It would be nice if they were, like, parallel. Could we... One more space so that we might be able to put the beacons. Uh, this is silly, but, you know. And these guys can also be max productivity. So we really are getting a ton of solid fuel for every uh, ounce of oil we're drilling. Not that we really have an oil shortage, but this will last... I believe a very, very long time. If it works. If it works! And like I said, I haven't tested the throughput or anything. It's definitely possible that we need more than three um, fuel refineries to process this much uh, crude oil. Uh, we will once again speed mod it up. And I am looking at it, I am positive there's a way to do this for one beacon to cover it all. At least if this is all we need. But Fine. I guess you might need a longer wire. Alright, and then we just need to get the solid fuel out. It's a lot of work. Actually, can an inserter keep up even? Uh, 0.5 seconds times 3.6. That's going to be making a lot of solid fuel. You know what? You know what? We're going the way of the future. We're not going to even use inserters here. We're going to actually... This is like way overkill to use a fast loader. That's what we're going to do. Uh, then we need to get these to join together, which might be tricky. Uh, I can't move that any further. It's like the only spot it can be in, even. Um...
I just mostly don't know, you know, if this is going to be enough. So that'll come up, that'll go forward, and maybe I'll just underground. It's a bit of a mess, you know, like, like I said, like I said. what you can go where you originally were that's fine all right that should get everything together and it's conveniently very close to where we wanted it so I don't need, I don't even really need to use the bots this, this thing is obsolete already and um, you can use the loader to get it in super fast so like I said I don't know there's no buffer here yet I don't think we'll need it. I don't know, once this is running, you know, where the bottleneck will be. It looks like, we're, right, because we're making, you know, if I if I go back to my, my text, my notepad, right? Um, we are making mostly light oil. So one cycle, you know, these, 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 the transition from liquid to fuel or solid, is 20 to 1 is 1 cycle, 30 to 1.5 is 1 and a half cycles, but it will be 7 light oil cycles. So you probably need 7 more uh, light oil um, fuel refineries than the other ones, or, you know, more light oil than the others to keep the ratios. Sorry, the music. Some of the real, like, techno-y trance bzz, 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 house music stuff just totally derails my brain. I can't speak. Classic. All right, but this is chill. Uh, so, yeah, if I wanted to streamline this a bit, probably, like, one or two more of these. And you could probably sneak... Like, I'll put one more in just to... Just to say I tried. It's not much. Um, you know. The, the best way of connecting pipes. Back around the outside. And then uh, we'll do the same thing here with the outputs. Just use splitters for everything, I guess. There we go. So, I mean, this is still not a perfect ratio by any means, but that'll, you know, it'll use more light oil, which will let the gas and heavy oil also run a bit more. Yeah, the pipe system, you know, this is meant to be super classic. But what we can do now is we probably get, well, 1.9 million oil times uh, 16%, so, I don't know, 2.3 million maybe. That crude oil gets turned into, I'll pull up my notepad here, 2.3 million will be turned into, well, every 100 crude will make 9.5 solid fuel, except more than that because we're getting an extra... 18% or 24% and then another 32%. So it's all multiplicative. So 2.3 million oil will turn into more solid fuel than you'd expect, is, is all I'm trying to say. The, the 1.9 million raw that we start with will be multiplied three times on its way to becoming solid fuel. I feel like that's pretty good. Anyway, that, that should last forever. And then now we've got this ready, assuming we, uh, there's one more thing we need then. Um, we need to connect it to some uh, logic so that the belt, like the problem with these guns is they just keep firing once you turn them on. And if the chest you're firing into is full, it just explodes and destroys everything. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, <laughs> interplanetary ballistics. <laughs> so we need uh, this guy, we're gonna need a, we're gonna need a new network here. And this is going to be the Frost Network. Because that's the, the moon we're going to. 
And what it will need is a little bit of logic. I always build these rather than uh, just hold on to them. And what we can say is once once we've figured it out, uh, this, this is not connected to a chest yet. But eventually it will be. And we're just going to read the amount of solid fuel in said future chest. And if it's less than like 500, then allow solid fuel to pass, fill this bad boy up, and it'll shoot another load. And once it's got more than 500, um, this will stop it and it won't overflow. That should be fine. That's almost everything that we need to get fuel. And then that way, in technically, we could probably do this on any of our expansion bases that has water. Because I was worried about power, right? Like, if you if you weren't around, just a real quick recap. The planet we're going to has really bad solar and not enough coal or oil locally that I really want to mess with it. Plus, I don't want to build a huge base here. But we can certainly use some water, and that does remind me, then, the next thing we need to load our spaceship up with is the way to turn that fuel into power. So, to do that, easy enough, we'll go to our uh, mall, go shopping. We will need some number of regular... Uh, these guys. Regular steam engines. You don't need the fancy ones for nuclear power, but... I'll bring like 40, that, that's certainly more than we'll need. But we'll also need boilers to boil water heated by solid fuel. 50 will be more than enough, I'm pretty confident. And with that, we should be able to run a nice system. And if I want to be real fancy, I'll use some storage tanks to hold steam before it gets turned into engines, and that way it kind of has like a battery backup too. Although, it's kind of pointless, but I, I like doing stuff like that. All right, let's put those in the rocket, and let's 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 double check what else we need. Um, that means I definitely need some pipes. A pump for water is nice, and I need some offshore. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how much water we'll use, but let's build like ten or so of these pumps. Send them along, so we should be able to, with what we've got here, get home. This should be more than enough rocket parts to get home. We might need more belts. Just to keep throwing belts in as we get more. We've got delivery capsules to prime the return cryonite. We've got a variety of small amounts of minor resources that will get us any sort of emergency crafts that I didn't plan for. Because you know I'm going to forget something. So we're going to just keep throwing in the random assortment of bits and bobs that... Uh, might come really handy. <laughs> There's the pumps. Um, what else am I missing? I've got to be missing something. Uh, storage. So I, I did send them some baby chests. I'm going to also manually craft a few bigger chests. Although I, I need resources. Steel beams. Alright, alright. Let's, let's grab some of those. I have automated, like, most buildings, but, you know, not all. Uh, we'll build, like, four of these, I think. Just let the bots bring it. It's fine. Just chill. Any day, concrete? Get you coming? We, uh... We got lots of logistic bots flying around. They're not really super fast. Like, if you have a nice setup where, like, let's say you've got, like, all the resources in a nice row, either alphabetized or somehow logically assigned, you can just grab out of them way quicker than having the robots bring you stuff like this, because they only bring, like, two at a time right now. But I would have to set up a place that has all possible resources in a nice, tidy row, which the bots could even fill up. You probably should consider that at some point, but it's fine. All right, we'll bring our fourth warehouse, and I'm not planning on doing roboports on this planet, so we don't need to do any kind of requester systems. This should be okay. Um, I'm going to slap in some more beacons.
think I threw some in already. But we do go through a fair number of productivity ones if we want to max out the Cryonite Mines. Um, in fact, I'm going to go manually pick up some more. Uh, the Tier 3 modules are pretty expensive in this mod, in Space Exploration or Crestorio. So, I don't really have tons of these bad boys yet. But I've been starting to stockpile a few. Uh, so I'll bring like 200 with me and that, that should be enough more. I'll grab one more stack of the speed modules as well. And that should be enough. Because we're not really, like I said, we're not doing a mega outpost. It's just a, a baby outpost. I mean, I could bring some solar panels with me. I don't know. You know what? I'll bring a few. <laughs> I don't plan on really going ham with them, but... It's just so much easier to set up for long term than anything else. Alright. We've still got a ton of storage available. I hate going without this full. So what we're going to do next is just randomly fill it up with junk. The best way of doing things. So things that we can always use in a base that is not well prepared are the basic resources. So let's grab... Well, that's a bit too much. Let's grab like one row of copper cables. Maybe two rows of copper plates. Let's grab some iron plates. Two rows of those should be plenty. Let's get some steel. Okay, and then other resources that we might need that I don't want to have to fly around would be stuff like plastic. So a row of plastic just in case. Um, I hate it when we run out of uh, low density structure because it's super hard to build. You generally don't need a lot for low tech stuff, but running out really sucks. We also similarly don't usually need a lot of heat shielding, but I'm going to bring a row of those. Uh, what other things do we use that I forget about? Um, oh, some circuits and motors. Now, I really don't expect we're going to need very many of these, so I'm going to bring not that many. Blue circuits are pretty high tech for most things, and you generally don't need that many. Uh, you tend to go through red a lot quicker, and certainly green. Green's nearby, just blind. And I'll bring uh, the rest of Blue Motors. Okay. Uh, there's not too many more random things I would think to bring. I ran out of fuel. I should bring some fuel for my jetpack. That's a good idea. Alright. There we go. Filling our spaceship up a little bit better. So the fuel comes in right here. I don't actually bring in very much. I could probably bring way more, but this, this is fine. My my advanced fuel actually gets manufactured off-world, so... <sighs> okay, anything else we should definitely be bringing? Well, it couldn't hurt to have a row of iron gears for random crafting, iron sticks for random crafting, and then the steel versions in maybe lower numbers, not like it matters too much. And concrete is something that definitely is annoying to make if you suddenly needed it. So we'll bring a full row of that. Uh, don't need walls or guns or any of that. Maybe stone bricks? I don't know. We'll bring half a row. Glass I forgot about. Let's bring a full row of glass. And... Oh, uh, the green motors, we might want some. These are my highest tech motors, somewhere in here. Probably won't need too many. There are some mid-range motors that I don't use very often, but... These guys come up 
in weird times, so multi-cylinder engines will bring them there. I don't even really make very many of them because not much needs them. And there's another, that's a multi-cylinder, there is a single cylinder engine which similarly doesn't get used by very much, so. Yeah, I, I hardly make any at all of these, but uh, let's have some emergency backups. Definitely want more belts in case we run out because that sucks. And that might be everything. Oh, I didn't grab iron beams. Should probably stock slightly more. <laughs> we're going to the frosty planet. Don't worry, we're getting there. I'm, I'm almost ready. I promise. I just... There's always so much to do. Um, oh, this is my old uh, wind turbine generator. Yeah, we don't need that anymore. I could delete that. Uh, I, I probably forgot something, but let's get to it, right? Let, let's get to it. We're going to put our spacesuit on. I'm going to bring my regular suit. And I'm going to bring... I can bring a bit of stuff with me, just not everything. So, I can only bring... 15 more slots worth of stuff. That's assuming I brought everything. I really hope... I really hope I've got everything I need for to set the space up. I don't want to have to redo this. Uh, right, no. I want to bring this with me. I can make spider bots one of these days. Just not yet. One, two, three, two. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's actually a good one for auto building. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. In case I need to breathe, 12, 13, is that everything I can bring? I got five more slots. It doesn't matter. Let's just get out of here. Uh, we're going Novus Orbit. We're going to space. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't hear that. The news for the Wizard of the Coast guy. All right. Hello, Space Base. We're not going to be here for very long. We're just we're stopping by on the way to our spaceship because we've never used the stupid thing. We're going. Integrity check. Integrity field valid. We're going to fly to Frost. We're going to the outer system. Uh, technically, Frost Orbit, I suppose, is the actual location. We ready? There's some stuff in our ship that I haven't really messed with, but you know, some random resources. Go. Engage. <laughs> the, the music's pretty good, right? It's time to engage. We're engaged. We're in space. We're spacing. We've we got turrets that shoot rocks while we travel through space. I have no idea how spaceship works here. Playing a mod called Space Exploration. We're going speed 100 and rising. We're using weird blue fuel and fancy accumulators that ran out of power immediately. We don't have enough power. The batteries are starting to not work full time. Maybe we'll get destroyed by asteroids on the way anyway. The Canary Prospector. All right, it's got a better name. <laughs> I am very concerned that our batteries drained like instantly, but what can you do about it, right? Build a better spaceship. I don't know how long this takes. If I was on like a cargo ship, we'd be there by now. I don't think this spaceship is very good. <laughs> I just got a feeling this is like the default one they give you. I didn't build it really. I just fixed it up. 
Um, I really barely have the resources. I mean, we know Robert's uh, motivation to go to space. Pack of C batteries? Yeah, I probably should plug those in. I'm a little bit concerned with all these flashing no power, no power, no power. <laughs> um, it looks like we cannot go full speed. Our, our maximum speed is 117 somethings. Maybe meteors per second. I don't know. But... I think the turrets just draw too much power to shoot asteroids so that we don't die. And that keeps the accumulators down. Even though we've got we've got three of these really nice uh, solar panels that hold. They make us quite a lot of power. Although less and less as we travel all the way from the star. But I don't have any other, like, onboard reactors. From, I, I don't have any dilithium crystals to throw in. <laughs> um... I wonder what happens if you just hop out of your ship. <laughs> that seems like a bad idea. Uh, this, the door just opens. You just jump right out. It's like we're playing uh, FDL suddenly. Um, but, you know, we're, we're traveling. This is super slow, though. I don't know if I'm ever going to do this again. Uh, even if we could go full speed, it was going to take, like, three minutes of just sitting here. My cargo ship, we would have been there by now. It just would have crashed. So, I don't know if this is really a great solution, but, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying. This feels like a cool thing to add to the game, for a game that doesn't have travel at all. But, like, this takes forever. <laughs> We know what faction you play. Dark elf man. Um, yeah, we are we are slowing down. We're, we're down to quarter speed here. I think, you know, the the the, the solar power the solar power continues to get worse. Yet the number of asteroids on the map continues to grow. Our time, it's still going to take, because our speed keeps going down, our time to destination has never dropped. It's, it's still over four minutes. <laughs> this is so bad. How, like, how long have we actually been flying for? Because, alright, this was a huge mistake. I thought the spaceship would be cool. In, instead, it's trash. Like, this is, this is, the engines won't even stay on. That's not how space works, though. You don't slow down when your engines turn off. Like, your speed is is, is, is mostly con constant. The velocity is, is constant. The, 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 the engines are for acceleration or deceleration. So, like, once it takes four minutes to get somewhere, you could turn them off and it should take four minutes to get there. But apparently that's not how travel works here. Wow. Are we ever going to get here? This is like one of those Windows XP completion bars where it just slowly ticks and then fills back up and then ticks down a little bit and it's like unknown number of seconds to go and then suddenly it says like 500 years to complete and then it'll be done in five seconds. But not really, it's more like a month and then maybe an hour and then maybe five years and then maybe next millennia and then back to four minutes again. <laughs> I hope you guys have something to drink. Because I was not expecting a, sh a trip that on my cargo rocket I'm expecting would take a few seconds would suddenly take half an hour. 4.30. It's, it's right back up to as long as it when we started. Huh. I uh, think I need to write a letter to the manager. Um, wait, how did we lose a, I lost an inserter in orbit? 
Oh, something's gone wrong, and I... <laughs> I don't know what's happened. Hey, there's our ship! We're, we're, we're more than halfway there. We're, we're getting there. Um, but no, some, something happened. Um... What? What? What is going on? Uh, something's broken. Uh, this, I can't, I can't click on anything. I, I'm stuck in a ship that's barely moving. Meanwhile, my space base is getting destroyed, and I don't even know what's... Get me out! I don't want to go to space! I want to be... I don't even know how to get back to orbit normally. This is so dumb. Like, the only way I seem to be able to get... No, here we go. Planet orbit. There we go. Finally found a way to get here. What the crap?! Why is everything breaking suddenly? This, this was working... For so long. What? Is... You... I have... I literally took the ship off and everything broke. Did it... Oh my god. You know what it is? The ship must have connected the power grid. And with the power grid shut off, everything just starts exploding. Which is lovely. It's beautiful. And then the bots are depowered. I don't even know if they'll be able to do that. Oh my god. Like, I don't think there's anything I can do. I can't even come back. What the f- It's gonna take us, like, Infinity time. We're still four minutes away from our destination. <laughs> Same as it has been for the last ten minutes. Meanwhile, everything has... This is so stupid. Boy, this is how to, to make me uninstall a game quick. What? There's... And I don't know why... Like, I understand that the power disconnected. That was my bad. I didn't realize that everything was connected through the ship. I messed that up. But why does the power going mean everything explodes? I don't understand. Like, this sh this shouldn't be possible. Yeah, good. Just blow- burn everything down. I- I can't- I can't... I can't do anything! <laughs> like, the only thing I can control is what the bots build to reconnect the power. But, we're 0 out of 500 construction bots because they're all depowered trying to recharge with no power. So they can't even put the... This is the stupidest shit. <laughs> Uh, no, the anti-meteor guns would be on here, and, uh, they're fine. One, two, three, four, five, six. There was a meteor that, you know, the, I didn't see the alert, but a bunch of meteors came. But they didn't shoot all the guns, so they actually would have shot all the meteors down. So it wasn't the meteors. I definitely have enough ammunition and guns to cover that. It's something about the logic... Is there a way I can stop it here? Like, these are supposed to say enough. Can I just... How do I... How do I... Why are these just permanently on suddenly? This has never happened before, ever. I mean, the... I really don't understand why suddenly 
everything's broken. So my... Please, bots. Okay, they're, they're getting to it here. Okay, are we done? We're just firing off the last of their ammo, but they're not getting any more. I have n no idea why the logic suddenly failed. Because all of these systems were connected up to the receivers, which should just automatically say, hey, the chest is full, stop working. But somehow... And I, I really don't understand how this is even possible. What the crap. The fuck? Is it just gone now? I just want to go here. Okay. Um. Yeah, I... I guess if the power stops, yeah, that's probably all it was. So this, this sucks. This really sucks. Like these whole systems are depend on the ground based delivery, knowing that these chests are full, which they all were. But as soon as the power dropped for even just a blip, like it was down for a minute or two, but whatever. As soon as the power goes down, the transmitter stops, and therefore all your logic is broken. And I mean, I didn't realize it very quickly, so it took a while, but... I figured out the power problem a little bit. <sighs> I, gotta, I gotta go the other moon, because there's... Boy, am I glad that I have robots on these planets. Okay, I'm literally in the process. Oh, I can't stop these. How do I even stop them? Okay, no, no, no. Just turn them off. What am I thinking? I can just turn them off. Just, just off. 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 Okay. This is, this is so stupid. Boy, uh, I mean, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sound real salty right now, but this is a terrible, terrible design. And it just furthers my hatred of shipping resources between planets, which unfortunately is like the entire game now. Everything, because, like, I'm on the way to a planet where the whole point is to shoot Cryonite back to my home base or my well, home base and also probably the space base as well. But then all we need is one mistake like that and it just destroys... Oh, it's so bad. That, it's ridiculous. Like, the bots are going to be here for years cleaning this up. There's no way to, like, prioritize getting the power hooked up. I don't actually think there's any way to fix this without returning. Because the bots won't... You know, they're not going to recharge. They, they're only getting... I don't know where they're getting... They're getting a little bit of power from here. And that's it. I mean, I could try to shut stuff off. I can't... But you can't really turn machines off. And I can't... Did I, I, did I arrive at least? Okay, we, we got here. I don't know how long it took, but, but we, we are in frost orbit. Uh, there's probably no rocks nearby, but we'll just anchor here. So we are actually at our destination. We could spend another half an hour to go back, but... What a waste. What a waste. You know how many resources we just deleted there? St 
there any way I can do this without spending an hour getting back? And this is like a relatively early space logistics system. And I already can't remember where all my space guns are that are just going to destroy everything. This is with like guns on Novus and two moons and they destroyed it. Imagine once we've got like a couple dozen planets all firing resources around. This really, really demoralizing. That is just brutal. And it's not like you can pause the game and figure it out. It's just... There's so much destroyed. We're 639 construction bots deficit. They're, they still need to repair the busted stuff. They're trying to recharge on 8 megawatts out of 160 required. On a planet that has, or on a, on a base that has 2 gigawatts of power. <laughs> we can't even get to, to 100 megawatts. Oh, they really need to stop picking those up. Uh, can we like... Yeah, yeah, okay, shift deconstruct tells them to ignore it okay that might help yeah it's decreasing the number I'll have to pick that up eventually but okay they're repairing things yeah that's what we... okay note for future it, it doesn't necessarily fix all your problems but if there's junk on the ground that your bots are you know back you know they've got like a queue of 5,000 Instead of deconstructing, which is not what you want to do, if you hold shift and deconstruct, it will undo deconstruction orders. And it was auto set to deconstruct all these items on the ground. Which we turned off and now things are finally fixing. Yeah. Yeah, we're actually, we're back just like that. Assuming... I'm not going to turn them back on, but, you know, the power is working... Yeah, we just had like 10 minutes with no power. Chunk in the trunk. Yeah, the bots... I mean, the bots... I couldn't have fixed this without bots at all, right? It, if, if, if there were no bots, we couldn't have even placed this power pole. So it would have been a complete disaster. The bots are still good. They're just... They're just not very smart. Okay, I'm just gonna be quiet and listen to this nice chill... Uh, Bossa Nova tune or whatever. Oh, I cannot believe it. I don't even know if there's any way to like tell them to pick this stuff back up. You just do a chunk, but like I can't deconstruct everything. I'll just have to leave it as a mess till I get back. I'll clean up myself. Um. Okay. Before we go to Frost. The biggest problem is some of these chests are busted and they can't replace them. So they're missing two level two red chests. I might be able to finagle a way to fix that. Okay, this this is a, a trick. We don't have any space assembly machines. Why wouldn't I leave space assembly machines up here? Okay, we can create... <laughs> this is the point we're at now. We're going to craft space assembly machines in space automatically via bot travel. So we can build a space assembly machine. So that we can have it build... We're gonna need two of them. We need one to make a passive for whatever, blah, 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 blah. This one needs to make that. Which, to get those working, we need more requester chests. And then a provider chest at the end, which I hope we've got here. Yeah, we've got those. 
And I hope I've also left some inserters. <laughs> this is so dumb. We're gonna have the bots fix the problems that I cause, sort of. Steel beams and steel plates. Assuming we have those. <laughs> steel plates. Looks like we got some. And, uh... Steel plates. Also looks like we got some. So we'll get some, uh... Some chests, and then we'll upgrade those chests with some green and red circuits, which, again, I'm assuming we have. I don't know. Nope. It's just turtles all the way down. So, um... I would also like some green circuits. Um, yeah, no, no, no. Actually, I think there is stone tablets up here. <laughs> this is so dumb. Just to get things working without coming back. Uh, we need copper cables and stone tablets, which I'm not sure, but maybe... <laughs> we don't have enough of it either. All right. But what if... <laughs> What if we, what if we have, uh, copper? We'll do it like this. We'll get copper, and then... <laughs> it's fine. Um, it's working. It's working exactly like it's supposed to work. All right, we're just trying to get these things remotely, but we made the chests, but then we don't have any green circuits. So we're trying to make green circuits, which honestly we should probably do like this as well. No. Uh, that. Just easier to control with their own chests, so you don't overproduce. Uh... But then we need stone tablets, which I thought we had, but, you know. Um. I don't even know how to make stone tablets. This is the kind of thing I don't know how to do. Uh. Bricks. Do we have bricks? The orbit of, like, Pluto right now or something. And I'm trying to find stone bricks in space. This is... This is the low we've fallen. Uh, brick. We have bricks! Alright. We will survive. And this is still faster than flying back, so... This is still worth it, because it would take... Maybe we just turn on one at a time. This is Vulcanite. Let's just see what it does first. Make, make sure it's working, you know? So it should be coming here, yeah, and then it just reads the chest as long as they are not empty. We've already got more Vulcanite than we need, so it shouldn't be shooting anymore. Like it was. Okay, now let's get, um, Immersight. Forgot you- most machines do not have an on-off switch, so I- I- I forgot that was even an option. Most of the time, you can't do that. Alright. Meanwhile, other problems. Apparently, we're not making Iridium plates anymore. This was backed up for so long, I thought it would never run out. But we just wasted half of the entire chest. And now, it turns out we're not making enough raw metals. Oh, it's just missing the um, speed modules. I see. It's fine. It's slow. But I never put the beacons with the speed over here. Uh, it'll fill up again. But we, we wasted so much. That is... That's kind of crazy. Because I don't really have a ton of raw metal. There's 100,000. And we need to turn the raw metals into... Uh, to help make Immersite plate. And it's just all pretty slow. But it had built up a nice backlog. And we just wasted most of it. 
because nothing actually uses this other than some science. So we don't we normally don't use very much of this stuff. But if you just waste it. Okay, and then we gotta fix We're almost at the we're almost at our new moon, I, I promise. We just gotta fix this. I sure hope it doesn't blow up again. This was my emergency, just destroy everything. Because I was so mad the, the the auto logic just failed me. I mean, it's a lesson. We, we have learned that uh, you can't trust logic networks across, uh, across space. That's a painful lesson. Alright, and once the bots reconnect these, we should be getting the regular resources back into space. Although maybe they're already full, so you don't need to shoot anymore. Yeah, the the logic is working. Good. This is the stuff that we probably want to send more of. Okay. There's still a, a huge mess, but... Hmm... Is there a way to... I'd have to put only the stuff that we want to pick up. So like we can whitelist to filter only things that we know have been exploded. Uh... Maybe... Where... Why is there no tab for resources though? I feel like missing some tabs here. Yeah, I can't do what I want to do. Um, that's too bad. I mean, I could blacklist the buildings. And then it would work, but I have to put in every single building and including, like, insert... Okay, it's not worth it to clean up the floor, I don't think. Because I can't do it without deleting a bunch of stuff, or just very slowly. But once I'm here myself, I can just run around and it'll be fine. Okay, um... Next trick. We need to, you know... We need to go down, land on a planet. We're, we're, we're above the planet Frost, or the moon Frost. I've never tried this before. I don't know how this works. <laughs> Just put that over there. Double check the stats in it. You do need a little bit of fuel. Cool. We can bring a lot of cargo down, just not up. Uh, so, you know, we could bring some junk with us if we wanted. Whatever's in our ship. Maybe I should put some more accumulators in here or something. There's not much space left, but like more power but I can't even build spaceship walls like all the stuff you need to upgrade your ship we still can't build I don't think so other than what came inside the ship when we snagged it and there were some construction materials somewhere yeah I still have 45 walls and a flat solar panel so I could put this if I could squish this in somewhere I think this would make the ship a lot better because it needs more power, clearly, right? Like, the biggest problem is the power generation for flying in terms of our speed problems, but... Storage of batteries would be good and then more power generation. But. Anyway, let's go, uh, let's, let's head on down to, uh, Funky Town. And uh, I want to be near the water and, uh, cryonite area because the whole point was to keep this simple, you know? So simple. Mm. We're on a new planet. I guess I can leave that there. We'll be going back up eventually. It will need a bunch of fuel and I'm sure I have enough uh, parts here. And let's temporarily just Put this down because as soon as we put that down it doesn't need any power at all this is what my this was my whole plan was to be clever right and boy do i not feel very clever um we can take 
you know, as much rocket cargo as we can fit into one rocket. Pick that landing pad I just plopped down. And remember how long it took us to get there. Let's see how, how much quicker a non-spaceship is. Oh, it just disappears after a while. Um, oh, it's already here. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a lot faster, you know. Uh, okay, let's uh, drop off enough of these that we can get off the planet. And I think I can just wear my good armor here. We're going to take the space suit up. We will need a lot more fuel, which we definitely brought extra. I didn't act. Oh, we didn't even bring enough fuel. I'm like, surely like a couple hundred fuel will be enough to get back into space. So we're stuck here. That's great. I actually have to craft liquid rocket fuel or whatever type of fuel to get back to my spaceship. I never would have guessed that. 136 wouldn't be enough to get off. Oh, <laughs> so dumb. So dumb. All right, let's grab things we we need to build. Let me go. No, I don't want to bring. It's kind of my inventory from back home. Just bring all all this random bits and bobs so I can probably build whatever I need. If we're stranded here, deep space. The spaceship I'm flying above us that we can't get to. Yeah, that would be rough if you had to start from scratch. It won't be that bad. Um... We can send solid fuel here because we already have it set up. And uh, actually, I think. Let me double check. Yeah, we have uh, rocket fuel hooked up. It's only going to orbit right now, but we could switch that and just fire a load of um, of rocket fuel. So we're fine. We we can shoot rocket fuel. It's funny how few things you can send through these guns, but apparently, like. Solid rocket fuel is fine. You can just you can cannon that anywhere. Just don't send. Uh, I don't know. Science packs. Alrighty, alrighty. Um, let's blow stuff up. Welcome to a new planet. Bring out the bots and the grenades. We need some building space. All right, that's mostly all we need to clean up. So we're going to be just mining from this one deposit. I don't think I'm going to worry about any of the others right now. And um, we'll have a little mini base to the south of it. So let's get a little bit of basic power. This is not permanent power. Wait, I have a, hold on. I have a uh, blueprint for this. even faster so I know solar panel on this planet is bad but it's also very quick to set up and we'll get well it's nighttime but you know we'll get some Wait. so power first then I'll get my um, well Baby power first, and then I'll get my uh, solid field going. Is that all? That's all the solar panels I brought. That's fine. So we didn't bring very many, but it is enough to get some amount of power going. I think. 
Right, we can make 10 megawatts with that, which is certainly enough to get stuff going. So right beside it, I'll just do the, uh, the steam. Some nice ice sheets. Um, let me make sure I've grabbed my resources I will need. So we're going to want offshore pumps. I got a bunch of pipes. We're going to want steam turbines, boilers, and some liquid tanks, which... I know we're in here, right? I definitely brought them. Also, let's get the signal receivers. Which apparently is way more power than I thought, so this might not work perfectly. Uh, if you were a liquid storage tank, where would you be? That's where it is. All right, so steam engines go like so. I'm just gonna be like chill and connect them up with these and uh, just put them in the network. Then. I want to save more space for that, but well, this is not going to be very much. So I'm going to have like maybe four steam tanks just because I want to. Girls just want to have fun or something. So those will fill up with steam, pump them into the turbines, which... You know, I have more, so we'll just put them all down. I don't know. I have no idea if I brought enough or how much power this will actually make. It's all a uh, fun time to have. I really don't think they're going to each need their own individual pump, but uh, they're getting one. So that should be super good pressure for the steam line. Now we've got to make the steam. So for that, we need water, and then we need boilers. Just going to put it here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten-ish. We'll see how far that gets us. I'm going to assume we need a couple water pumps, maybe. I don't know. I have not done the math on these sorts of things. I don't even know if they can share a, a pipe very well, but... Overkill, the best kind of kill as we've discussed. Alright, water is super easy. Uh, and then we need to get them fuel, which... Steam comes out the one side, so we might as well just have fuel on the other. Easy enough to extend if we need more fuel. Uh, I didn't bring the cheap inserters, my bad. We're just gonna use the expensive ones. Which of course means I need to extend the power network. Cause why would I build things close together? Okay. Uh, so we got to bring in, that's where delivery cannons come in. Something like that. So we're going to shoot fuel, solid fuel here. We're going to offload it onto this belt. We're going to just use one of our fast unloaders. Because that's easier. Um, this is going to need some logic, which is the hard part. So, it actually needs a receiver. 
no, this needs a transmitter. Uh, we need to transmit... Okay, hold on. This is where I wanted those big chests. Um, I'm actually doing this wrong. Uh, well, I usually have a buffer so that those explosions don't happen. It didn't help me much, <laughs> as you guys saw. Um, we're just going to try it. It's fine. So this is just going to... assume. I actually have to double check this works, but it's a transmitter. Uh, that uses a lot of power, but we'll be getting more. This is why we need those solar panels to get started, I guess. It doesn't even get enough power. Ugh. Use the frost network. That'll transmit it back to Novus once in a while. You can see the energy cannot keep up. So that means this won't work until we get more power into it. I mean, I can put a mega power down, but... It'll, okay, we shouldn't turn this on until it's nighttime, is what I'm hearing. Uh, I need some of those logic circuits, which I never have any of. And we're going to double check back on Novus if it can read the contents of this chest. I'm just going to put some rocks in there. It's hilarious, but... It's fine. It's for science. There's 111 rocks. If we go back to Novus, this receiver is on the same network, wired to this tile. It should be able to read how many rocks are there. It knows there's less than 500, so it is working. But if there was only 100, it still thinks it should work. I don't know if that... I don't know if you can connect to uh, the cargo chest. Because it should be disabled now. Yeah. See, that's that's why I normally have a, a buffer chest. Because these aren't regular chests. And I feel like it should work. Oh, no. It's the power. It might be working. It's really hard to know. Disabled. It, it does work when it has power during the day. When it's daytime on that planet, it works. Okay, good. That's, that's fine. That's great. I don't want it to fire very much then. Because I have no idea what's going to happen. Prepare for incoming damage. We need to get the fuel here. We need to get these rocks out of the way because, you know. Good test test run. Um Yeah. That that I sure hope it works. Oh wait, wait, wait. Because we need the power immediately, let's let's make sure the power gets looped back in. Um for now, I might leave some space for more steam turbines if I feel like I want more. And I'm going to specifically make sure there's a pump to keep the pressure up. Because I really don't want this transmitter to stop working. Because apparently... Everything will explode instantly if that happens. We've learned. I'm sure, we'll want the power over here eventually. Anyway, that's fine. Okay. Uh, I guess we can turn it on. The, the nope. Right. I did it wrong. My bad. That's the water. <laughs> we need the steam. And normally we go straight from turbines to, to boilers. Or uh, boilers to turbines. 
I'm doing it more complicated because I'm a dummy. Okay. A slight change of plan. I realized that some of the rocks I destroyed happened to have coal in them. I'm just gonna start with that. And we're gonna see if these this works. Can I move that like one over? No, that has to be there to connect. Oh, that's all the turbines I had anyway. So we have as many turbines as I brought. 39? I thought I brought like 40 or something. Or There must be more in the storage or something. I feel like I definitely brought more than that. But maybe I lied. Um, so these guys can go 750 power each if they're if it's needed. What's what's 39 times 750? That's how much power we can make day or night, and then during the day we make a little extra. I should have brought some accumulators if I was bringing solar, but. The solar is pretty weak. It just will use slightly less steam during the day. All right. Well, let's 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 do it. We uh, turned the coal that we picked up randomly into steam, which gave us a few thousand steam, which gets us some more consistent power for Operation Shoot Blue in the face. With space guns. It's got the right destination. Luckily I forgot to load it with ammunition or it would have already shot it and destroyed it. There it goes. Alright. Solid fuel has been delivered. This should keep these guys running for quite a long time. So 10 megawatts is negative already. Like, I don't know if this is enough power. I feel like we're going to need way more power to run anything here. I think the solid fuel would work. I just, I don't think I brought enough turbines or engines. Can I make more engines? I'm so glad I just always bring stuff with me. Alright, why are we not receiving... <laughs> it shot once, that's good, but it should be shooting more. There's not enough power back on- what? There's tons of power here. We have four times more power than we need. Well, it looks like it's working. I just was firing kind of slow to start. I don't know why. You know what? It's the distance. Because we're shooting to a moon that's really far away, it needs way more electricity than the ones that just shoot into orbit. Well, 300 versus... It just needs about twice as much energy. I mean, I guess that makes sense. So it just, it's going to charge slower and shoot slower because it has to shoot further. But it is loading up. Now we need to make sure this doesn't overfill. So it is currently, you know, 20 stacked. Each pellet is 50, which isn't very much. But each 50 should last quite a while. Once the coal is gone, like, the solid fuel burns pretty slow. So... What did I set it to? Does anyone remember? Blue doesn't remember anything. 100. So as soon as there's 100 in there, it should stop. And then once it gets drawn out... Okay, well it's at 100. It should be stopped. 
130. Okay, let's go back. Sorry, a lot. Of, see, just received another one that put it at 150. But but that's okay because the um the signal here stops the belt. It doesn't stop what's already in here. So like it's gonna fire a couple more times until it has um not enough solid fuel for one more shot. But it won't accept more solid fuel now, now that it's done shooting, it's out of solid fuel to fire, until this goes below 100 and then it refills. So it will always shoot probably more than once. And that's why we wanted to set the 100 pretty low so that it's like, yeah, 100 plus a couple shots or a few shots doesn't overflow the chest. But that should work then. Assuming this thing stays powered, which is a bit of a question, but... We're delivering the stuff that keeps it powered, so there's no way that can ever break. Let's just quietly expand these uh, steam turbines a little bit. Seeing as we're betting everything on this never breaking. Uh, for speed of light, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm going to try to just share one pump here. It's probably fine. I don't really think each of these needs their own pump. I was just being silly. Uh, so, so eventually, I don't know when, but one day we will... Uh, we need to travel between stars, and that's when the speed of light really kicks in. So it should normally take a long long time to travel between stars uh, and I, I don't know what kind of technology this this mod is gonna give us to make that not just sit around for hours it was already pretty bad riding my spaceship between planets um, so one thing I'm curious about will be if I, you can use these storage tanks of steam as a bit of a guideline for how many uh, boilers you need uh, because it functions a bit like a battery um, these turbines will stay, the boilers will stay on full speed until the, the storage tanks fill up. And as long as they're going, as long as that number, you know, 24,000, 26,000, if that's going up, then you're making more steam than you're consuming for electricity. And it just turns it into electricity, uh, with the orange line. Whenever the power, whenever the solar is not enough, um, or soon enough, solar will not be enough during the day either. But, uh, we'll probably need more of these, I'm going to guess. Because we're certainly getting enough solid fuel to run these more, more, much more than that. Okay, well let's, let's start doing what we actually came here to do, which is, you know, <laughs> mining. Uh, we're not even processing it, we're, we're just here to mine it and then send it back. Um, That's what these big drills are for. Now, I, like I said earlier, I'm not sure about the power consumption. Like, what I was doing back at home when I was just practicing oops, was doing a system sort of like this, like a 3x3 three three grid, except in the middle I put the beacon which affects all of them. And then each of them... Oh, I gotta pick up more of my modules, because... The whole point was to get as much as possible. But this ends up using a lot of power, so I don't know if this is gonna work... here. <laughs> right? So this means each of these machines will give us an extra 90% productivity, so you get way more out than you should based on the, the, the rocks. And it runs at a pretty good speed. But it does use a ton of power. So I'm not sure if this is worth it. It might be better to go... Well, I didn't bring a lot. But it actually might be better to be going efficiency modules. I don't even know if I brought any of those now that I think about it. Ah, uh, I didn't bring any efficiency modules. Can I build any? Sure. Some, anyway. Let's just... For now, we'll see what kind of power draw 
this would cost us. Because this is like a quarter of what we would want to be mining if, if we want to get it all hooked up. Just have these joined together. We don't really need too much complicated construction here. Uh, I lost a radar? What is going on? No How did they... Cheaters! I'm... They just swam over? I thought I built... Well, the bots will fix it eventually. Uh... There is radar in the logistics system. Apparently I didn't build this connection correctly. It, it must be shallow water so they can move through it. Man, everything goes wrong when I'm not there to fix it. I, I, I left it idling back at home for probably like 10, 20 hours while I was doing other things, not really paying attention, right? Just listening to a podcast and, you know, slowly building a couple things in the background but not really paying much attention. And nothing broke. As soon as we're streaming... Go to a new planet and it just falls apart. Alright, let's connect it to the grid. So that's such as it is. How's the power? So our, our demand went up to 43 megawatts. Which during the day... Well, it's nighttime right now, so we'll see. We'll, we'll just let things go for a second, see what happens. Oh, they're already turning off. Uh, no, we need that. Where's my, um, I, I'm sure I brought a warehouse or five, right? I, I want them all running full speed to see just how much power this is versus my, uh, my production. Uh, speed mods. Let's bring some more goodies here that I probably should have in my inventory. Uh. I'm going to set this up in a second. Didn't I? Oh, jeez. What am I looking for, guys? I just said I'm looking for something. The warehouses. Didn't I? Maybe I put them in the wrong chest. I definitely meant to bring a couple large warehouses, but... Unless they're just blending in and I can't see them. Unfortunately, I don't... There's like a mod that you sort chests, but I don't think you can just naturally, like, sort this. Which is kind of annoying. Or it's like already in my inventory and I just can't see it. That's... That's a what liquid tank. I want that, but for... I'm sure we built a few of these bad boys. Flying biters. You just reminded me of uh, XCOM, uh, the enemy unknown one, you know, with Long War and all that and stuff. I believe there was rumors of Long War guys adding, like, flying and jumping. Well, they already had jumping, but the chrysalids needed to be able to fly. It's not very nice. <laughs> Alright. Whatever. One warehouse will get the job done. Alright. So that, once the backlog fills up, we'll turn all the machines back on. It's daytime, so we can see the draw. So our solar can only handle, you know, 11 megawatts-ish, 10.2 maximum during the day. So the steam engines have to cover everything else. I'm actually just going to pull up my calculator here. 64 times 750... That's only, well, you could actually just do it the other way around, 58 minus 10, but yeah, 48 megawatts. It's enough, but I don't have much room. And that's probably using steam faster than we're making it. Um, normally it's two steam engines per, um, per boiler, yeah. 
So we're running... We, we can math it out. We're running 64 engines, which means we need 32 boilers. We'll go at least that far. We might split to go the other direction or something, because at some point the pipes with steam won't work. It's it's too much. Liquids and gases are a bit jank in, in Factorial, so. I'm also a bit limited by the number of inserters I brought. So, I know I brought a couple hundred at least, but. All right, now we could. Yeah, I, I can move that over and do the the uh, mirror version, basically. Okay. Um, 33 water each. The water pumps give us 1250. Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, we're not even using one of the three water pumps right now, so we're okay on water. Especially considering one's not even powered. Especially considering none of them are powered. None of them were powered. Alright. That's it's fine. It's fine. I know what I'm doing. Alright, so that's... Uh, 21 of those, which is still not enough. Our, our steam should be decreasing. So we'll get something like this. Oops, they need to... Dang it. Almost caught them all. Alright, we'll get another stack. Um, I think I'll just make one of the water pipes go to each lane. Rather than having them all group up together and should be fine. Water, connect up. So I'll just do like this. So technically two are going to that one and one is going to the other one, but that should be fine. You can check on the pump. It's still not using its maximum pump speed there, 700 to 1250. So that should be more than enough. I'm, I'm getting lots of water, uh, but we do need to get the steam out. Huh. Brought lots of pipes. This is never enough. It's probably right in the way, isn't it? <laughs> it's funny when you're building stuff. Uh, why are you out of power? Because by moving that, it just disconnected it from me. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right. That should be enough to keep the current power running, which is barely enough to run eight drills. I was hoping to do a bit more than that. Um, let's see how much we're actually getting in terms of throughput here. Uh, about 700 per minute. Hmm. We definitely like to have a bit more. Let's set up the... Because I have to figure out how much the delivery will cost us as well, right? Because that's more power. Uh, I do want it over here. Okay, I like to use... Stack inserters here, but I'm not going to because it's easier to control a belt than five stack inserters. And these belts are actually faster anyway, so. Alright, we need the gun. And then we need the other one. We've already got a receiver, but a transmitter, but now we need a receiver 
so that this doesn't overload the target destination, because it will. And that's only 2 megawatts, but... The gun is using 21 megawatts. I... But only until it charges up. And then it's down to 100 kilowatts. Whew. Ah, uh, that's a bit pricey. Similar to the other system, we want to just dis disable the input. Can you... Now, I feel like I've tried this before. Yeah. You can't connect the machine to the logistics network, so I can't, like, shut it off. I also can't connect the loader, so it's the belt. That's why I always end up on the belt. If the destination... For just regular cryonite is less than I don't even know let's just start with 500 it's uh oh it's 20 per stack oh this is not good so this is why you generally this is why I had been and normally would continue you you don't you don't ship the first tier of mind resource out because each shot only sends 20 one stack if we if we could process it even a little bit, it would be more efficient. So like if we could if we could pulverize it, which would cost us more power, we would get cryonite powder, which still has a stack size of 50, but um I don't think I brought any I was planning on not oh, I can I can certainly build one. I just want to double check here, because power actually looks like it's going to be the limiting factor. Even though I was relatively proactive. Not enough. I mean, I could try to slap down more steam power out of the, the solid fuel and make that work. But, yeah, like, shooting around the 20 per stack is... I mean, crushed is already going to 50, so that's an automatic two and a half times, but it might be better, actually, uh, it depends on the recipe, right? Like, if it's, like, five ore per one crushed, and then a, 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 a stack of crushed is, like, let's say, 200, or, well, 50 instead of 20. You know, that that's a lot more per capsule, and we only have so many capsules to shoot. So, uh, let's just double-check the recipe here. Just one-to-one. -one. Mm. So that would give us about a two and a half times efficiency going from a 20 stack to a 50 stack. What's the next step? Because that's, that's easy, but... The ideally you want the rods, but then you need heavy oil. And the crystal needs steam, which we actually have. But if you shoot the crystals, you also need to shoot the powder, because the crystals are not all you need. You need, uh... The crystals are part of the recipe for the rods, but you still need the powder as well. Which we're probably not going to be able to make. No, we, we can make the powder. We just can't get all the way to the rods. That would be ideal. Just, I'm thinking. I'm thinking really hard. Cryonite only matters for powder. Powder only matters for crystals and rods. Crystals only go to rods. So there's no other use for the subcomponents. Um, unlike the vulcanite, where we knew that parts of the vulcanite were needed for other smelting processes, cryonite, it's rods you care about. Nothing else matters. It's all about getting to rods and then they're used in a bunch of stuff. 
There is slush, but it's made out of rods. And we're not worried about that right now. So... I'm thinking. I'm just trying to think. Should I still try to do this, the processing here? Can we do the processing here? I mean... We can send a near-infinite amount of solid fuel. Each solid fuel is worth... 20 megajoules of energy. We send 50 at a time, so effectively one, one gigajoule per shot. Uh, a gigajoule is a gigawatt each, basically. And if you just calculated it, let's say one, one shot of solid fuel was a gigajoule. At our current c consumption... A gigajoule will last 20 seconds-ish. That's still a shot every 20 seconds. That's not cheap. <laughs> and that's with our current consumption. If we try to build a base here, it's going to probably need, like, a lot more. Why is everything so difficult? Um... The problem, the worry I have is if I just shoot 20 piles of, of, um, that's actually the wrong one. It's not the core fragments. I want cryonite. That's, that's the one I want. Um, but yeah, 20 per shot. We brought three and a half thousand, um, you know, ammunition. But that's, if you, if you can only carry 20 per shot assuming we can even power it uh 3.5 3500 times 20 each that's only 70,000 cryonite that's not even very much really like it sounds good but it's not that much mm. The, the midway would be the powder, which we know goes in stacks of 50. So instead of 70,000, that would be... Uh, two and a half times, 140, 175, something like that. That would be better, but if we could get to rods... It's 200. Hmm. Crystals are in chemical plants. Yeah, but I didn't really bring the stuff, right? Like... I mean, maybe I should just fly back home and bring more stuff. <laughs> and just not use my spaceship. Gonna do a cool trick. Uh, that's too far away, actually. Needs two of them. Though. These are very expensive machines, but I like them. There you go. So that'll empty this out. So if we land here, um, you need space in the in the landing pad for the cargo rocket, or I don't know what happens. Probably something bad. So we need for it to get out. Um. Oh boy. I wasn't planning on, on building a cargo rocket. But I probably could. 
Stupid spaceship. That space trip was so bad. It's like I really don't want to have to do that. I guess I can't really leave the spaceship here. I have to fly it home once or... <laughs> but next time, we're just flying here in a cargo ship. We're not taking any spaceship. Uh... Let's see how many more turbines I could build. Because the solar panel is almost nothing, right? Like, over the last period of time, the solar panels have averaged about... F well, that's too far back. Maybe, but, eh. Looks like they average about 8 megawatts. 11 during the day, and then decrease, and then back up. So that was... Uh, you know, 200, pal pa 200 panels for an average of, like, 8 megawatts is not very good. I mean, so... The whole problem is the, is the chicken and the egg, right? Yes. We, we need a better spaceship. Uh, I haven't even unlocked the spaceship yet. We, we The only reason we have one is we stole it. So, I'm a long, long way away, so far away from building spaceships. And this is where you unlock the components to do stuff on the spaceship. Um, like, to build more engines. Or booster tanks. Uh, and that's just the unlock, right? Because then the stuff you actually want is, like, ion engines. Which I actually have two of, but <laughs> it's not enough. So, like, I'm already this far down the tech tree accidentally just by getting one for free. I'm sure there's, like, antimatter and stuff. That's probably good. So, I... Yeah, the, the thing is, like, we we can't improve this, the spaceship. <laughs> Not for a long time. It is true, for Robert's sake. You know, the whole point here is to get the cryo rods and shoot them around space so that all planets have enough rods. Um, man, I don't know what to do. Um, I was trying to see how many, like, engines and stuff I could build. Also, these unload way slower than I thought they would. I thought I was being clever there, but... Um, oh, I'm just making a mess now. Um, yeah, this, the solution I normally use is uh, just stack inserters. So we're going back to stack inserters. I was trying to save some power. That's that's my that was my story. But there you go. That should be faster. Yeah, that's way faster. I thought I thought the uh, blue loaders were pretty good, but they can't keep up with stack inserters. All right, uh, so what do I need to build turbines, right? These guys, engines. Gears, motors, plates, iron plates. Gears, what kind of motor was that? The blue motors. Well, I brought some. And then iron plates. I definitely brought some. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's a hundred extra. That's that's seventy-five megawatts of power. If we can run them, so we'll probably need more boilers. But you know, I know I brought like fifty. <laughs> I need fifty more for fifty uh, for a hundred boilers. Uh, I think I've only got the ten. So we need forty more boilers. Not electric. So stone furnaces and pipes. I did not bring pipes for stone furnaces. Pipes are just iron though. So 40... We need 160 pipes. Three, four, five, six. We can just keep track of the number. We need 160. This might take a little while. Um, 
So that's the pipes. And then stone furnaces, I'm a little bit worried about. You just need stone. But, you know, I didn't bring stone. Why would I bring stone to space? But, you know, we already found some. Uh, is that enough? Five. We needed... 40. Ah, we're good. Okay. So we can, we can significantly increase our steam power. Um... I'm going to move this this column. Oh, I forgot. When I dumped everything in here, I forgot that I threw my bots in, and I actually need those. Guys, nice. get to work. So much faster than me doing it, I promise. So I'll leave them some solar panels, certainly, but it's barely power at this point. It's solar Kool-Aid. Okay, we're getting more of these. Right, right. I really messed up my inventory when I dumped everything in here. Definitely not a smart plan. Miss, missing out on half the stuff I need. Let's get some pipes. Okay. Keep everything connected. Looks like we're good. Getting a lot of uh, crunchy snow sounds, if people are into that. ASMR with blue. I don't think I can fit another column there, so. Okay. And, uh. I think. Like, there's some amount of you don't want too many turbines connected to the same pump because there's a maximum like liquid throughput through pipes although I, I i think it's 12 per column so like 24 per pump should be fine I, i'm pretty sure but you can come into some weird problems with um water throughput it's it's not my favorite thing to deal with let's just be honest Still crafting, it'll be fine. Let's see if I can find some more of those steel pumps while I'm waiting. I brought all those p mining drills, and we uh, we are not going to be able to power them. Done a great job of messing up my inventory. <laughs> right, I brought some efficiency modules to test out, or I, I made a few. Guess we could uh, build that. I could probably afford to build the rocket launch pad. No, we got the, we have the landing pad, but we could probably do the launch one if I wanted. Yeah, we don't have enough blue inserters for anything either. Yeah, resources are going to get a little thin here. Even though I, I prepped this 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 uh, trip for so long, and then everything just fell apart anyway. It just doesn't seem fair, you know. I was looking for pumps. I'm sure they're in here somewhere. Oh, the sorting. Um, these guys there.
Okay. Our total steam has gone up, which is a good sign. It's probably because our uh, inventory is full, yeah. Yeah. I... I think we're going to still have to process it here. For, it, for anything remotely efficient, I think we're actually going to have to do that. It's a bit weird, but... Did I bring 200 electric motors? Four, yes. Did I bring... Man, these are expensive. Uh, 10 storage, 10 radar. Uh-oh, what do we need for radars? Stone brick. Um, We can make stone brick. You know what else I didn't bring was like furnaces. <laughs> I can't, I can't even make a furnace. Cause you need stone bricks to make furnaces. <laughs> That's kind of annoying. Um, my, my, my basic furnaces can be used to make stone bricks. Oh. <laughs> 160 uh, of these is what we need. Don't forget. Actually, slightly more than that because we also want the... Um... Yeah, we just need a lot. I didn't bring any. One to one, so that'll be 200. Easy enough. Alright, uh, he crafts faster than I do. Especially if I go bam. Okay, we're getting some furnaces. I can steal some solid fuel. We're going all the way back to basics. I don't use this very often, but if you hold the Z button down, it'll put one in at a time, which is something speedrunners do all the time. All right, that'll get me some bricks. Old fashioned. Got my pipes. Just leave that there in case we want to craft more. Uh. All right, we're, we're making some very, very slow progress. Storage tanks, what do they need? Nothing, easy. All right, we have some bricks. Let us use our bricks to craft. Uh, we're trying to get to the radar. We just needed bricks. All right. Oh, uh, automation cores. I think I think I brought at least a few. Because I, I did try to cover a lot of the basics for stuff that I might need if things go wrong. And, you know, things may have gone a little wrong. Yeah, I, I brought a bit. I remember thinking, I won't need radar in space because, you know, I'll have a satellite. It'll be fine. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, something like that, right? One more. Dang it! Dang it, Bobby! Uh, one more, please. Is that all the bricks we got, too? There. All right. Still ended up with 11. <laughs> I just can't. Ah. Alright, we can craft a cargo rocket. This is going to take a little bit of time. So that will let me launch from here back home pretty easily. Um, 
We probably don't need a bazillion bricks, but I mean, what else are we gonna do? We can just let those run. That's fine. Ah, uh, right, because we didn't have enough fuel to leave. In. <laughs> we still don't even have enough fuel to leave. Did I, I brought another cannon. Okay, okay, hold on. We can do this relatively easily. Um. You need another smart wire. Which you need copper for. Which normally I have in my inventory, but problems. So always will be problems. Just have logic wire right there. Okay, so what I'm gonna use this one for? We got that cargo rocket. Good, good, good. I'm just gonna put it over here. Actually, yes. Okay, and then connect that up. So it is going to send how much fuel is in the contents here. We're going to pop back to Novus. And this is a wild stream slash VOD for the future tubers trying to figure out what the heck Luenculo is doing. But um, we're trying. We're trying my best. Uh, yep, things just keep getting destroyed. That's how it is. Okay. We can conveniently use so at the moment this is being sent to Novus's orbit which is not what I want you're definitely in the way oh but I need it to Fine, we just have to remember to reconnect the wire. Can we... Maybe from here connect up? Dang it! That's why I had one of those close by. The, um... Connection distance on these is much, much longer. For uh, even logic wires. Please stop. Reset this, because we're going to just destroy everything if we're not careful. Okay, that should stop the solid fuel. Once this gets built, or we'll do the liquid fuel, or the rocket fuel. Of course. Freaking power! Okay, also requesting. Also need to connect... Yeah. This time we want to send rocket fuel, but only up to a certain amount. Let's just say 100 again. Okay. This, this one's going to frost. Select target. And turn it on, I think, is all I missed. It's already on. So that should get us the rocket fuel so we can get out of there. That's definitely needed. Thank you, bots, for being able to build stuff remotely. Uh, we will need a fuel refinery to fuel that up. Of course. I bet you I didn't bring a fuel refinery. Uh, 
Where would a fuel refinery be? And there's a big fuel refinery somewhere, but this is fine. We're in the colonies. We don't need the big boys. Um, I think all we're doing is basically taking rocket fuel and turning it into uh, unpacking it basically. So yeah, easy. And then just with some pipes. All right. So this will fill up eventually. It will take a while with rocket fuel. And assuming we can build a rocket here, which is always a trick. Um, we can use this to launch back home. And we could use this to deliver the cryonite. We just have to... I don't know if this is worth it, but this might be what we do. In fact, I I think I'm leaning more and more onto this being what we do. Which is, unfortunately, a real pain in my neck. But But you'll see as I get further along in the build here. Unpack cargo sections of rockets. Technically, we're just going to put bots down because we're eventually going to be using bots. I, it's, I can see it coming. Uh, surely we brought a few single cylinder motors. Just to save myself a little bit of sanity. Alright, alright. So, the idea here is we put the packed cargo rocket parts there. There's two types of cargo rockets. They look almost identical. Those are unpacked. These are packed. We have to do this at a one of these machines. So the packed ones go in and then you get five out. We can just put a bunch in and it'll be consumed as building a rocket. However, if we want to be smart, we don't want to insert more rocket parts than it needs to build a rocket. So simple logistics system here. Really not complicated, but we want a hundred max. So this will just allow it to keep inserting until that number gets to 100. Assuming we brought enough packed rocket sections, which is what we've done. Because I, I, I prepared that part knowing that we might want to be flying back on a rocket at some point. So. The trouble will be automating it. So it needs the capsule, it needs a bunch of rocket sections, and it needs the fuel. The fuel is going to take a while. It's going at the speed that fuel can fly. It's very inefficient to just shoot fuel across the solar system. This is why I didn't want to use cargo rockets. But this can hold a tremendous amount of cryonite, whether we go ore or processed. So, at least there's that. How many more? We've got 10 more of these. Somehow we got all off. We have two left. Oh no, we have many more. I did craft quite a few. We're just going to assume that uh, the pumps can go that far. All right. So that puts us at uh, 160 engines, which is a lot more power. Once again, limited by perhaps the uh, the burning.
Oh, that's so much faster. I ran out of parts already. <laughs> Wasn't I in the process of crafting a whole bunch of boilers and then I stopped? They need to be connected to the power grid, of course. And I didn't have enough pipes. We're really going fly by the seat of your pants here. I have no idea if these are nearly enough of anything to make anything else work. But, they should be working. You can double check that the water's okay. Certainly looks like we're not using that much water. Steam, it's because the, uh, the backup tanks are full. Seeing as we're sort of planning on going heavier into, um... Oops. <laughs> I, uh... Certainly have those somewhere, you know. <laughs> what happens? You can't beacon steam engines, right? No. Only things that can accept modules, I'm pretty sure. It would be kind of funny if you could um, beacon the, a turbine. I've never tried it. Uh, this is what I was looking for. So I'm just going to have uh, a larger storage of steam, because I don't know what else to do right now. But that'll get the boilers running, sort of stress test the uh, delivery of solid fuel a little bit. Our rocket is built, and its fuel is getting there. Um... Power network is... Well, we're not using very much right now, so that's good. Okay, uh... What else do I want to do on this good-for-nothing planet? Uh, the whole point was to, to get Cryonite out of here. Uh, there's one more thing here. Um, I usually... This is a bit silly... But there is a reason, um... So, if I do set up bots at some point, uh, what I'll do to automate it, and there's, there's a couple ways I could do it, this wastes a couple, um, crafting cycles, but I want... This one to request... So, so when when your um, when your ship lands, your cargo rocket lands, if I have in the inventory these packed ones, you know you can bring packed ro uh, rocket sections five at a time in in a, in a pack. But when it lands, you also get a percentage of the hundred back. You you don't lose all of them. So the hundred that are in this, when it lands somewhere, we will get twenty or thirty whatever back. So what I'm going to say is. I want those to end up here to be packed and stored so that eventually when we launch the next rocket, we've got lots of buffer um, pa packets, basically, to build a new one. Um, so that's where that all should go, especially once I get some logistics hooked up, if we do do the RoboPort stuff, which is kind of feeling like I might. Um... what I think about your cryonite. Just throw it on the ground. <laughs> Just... Oh... This, this is... This trip... For all I tried to prepare, I think preparing on stream is just harder. Um... It's just harder. Let's, let's just hook up more mining. 
We don't really have the power for anything, but... At least it'll look like we built a bit more. A little bit inefficient on some of these spots, but... And we're out of modules anyway, so it's not even going to really work. Um, the next chunk... It needs... Uh, You can just see how much power this would take to run the whole thing. Uh, we need a lot of modules and a lot of power. But uh, this is approximately where we would want the next beacons. I think... I think I need some landfill. <laughs> uh, I bet you I didn't bring any landfill with me. 50 stones per landfill. That's, yeah. It's not even enough for tiny hole. Yeah, you need a, a tremendous amount of that to, to actually make those work. Uh, well, I think I'm about ready to just give up on this expedition and head home. Parts of it have been successful. Mostly overall, I'd say this was kind of a disaster. Um, and we're just going to be constantly wasting power and also some minor resources like the, the solid fuel and the rocket fuel. Whatever, let's get out of here. Why does this number keep changing? Like, the, the required amount seems to not be consistent. Also, um, I can't leave. Just in case you're wondering. We need more fuel. Let me just stop for a second. I'm actually kind of surprised at how slowly we're getting um, rocket fuel. I didn't ever, never really looked at the throughput on this bad boy. I think it's just the charging speed of this or something. Because it's so much further away, it, it just fires it really slowly compared to other shots. It's really not a power problem, it's just a charging speed problem. Alright, these guns are, are getting obsoleted very quickly now, unfortunately. I, I thought these would be really cool, but... They're just not a very good solution to my problem. Like, it works, it's just slow. Okay. Unfortunately, we can't take anything back with us. Or very little. Very little. This is the worst decision we ever made coming to this junk pile. The only thing that I can say that's good is that we have the, the bases set up. This will be refueled the next time we come back. So we don't need to fly our spaceship here again. Um, we can just take a cargo ship back and forth. And bring more stuff with us next time, because I did not bring enough. Oh, I should probably make sure I'm wearing my um, spacesuit. Just make sure you're wearing your spacesuit before we go to space, that's all. 
Alright, I'm done with this ice ball. It was a learning expedition. Yeah, we learned. What was supposed to be kind of easy turned out to be kind of terrible. This is not where I was supposed to land, by the way. Why am I suffocating? Oh, I know why. The, um, life support modules I probably left on the planet because I didn't have any inventory space. <laughs> At least I got to bring my flat solar panel back. Are these- these are pointless, right? These don't do anything. I mean, they're- they're cool. Huzzah! I have improved the spaceship! <laughs> Who needs doors and walls? Maybe let's do a structural integrity test just in case. Uh... No, we're fine. Totally structurally sound. Well, we have, uh, three to four, so what, 33% more power. Should help. If these ion streams supplies ever ran out, I think we're doomed, but as long as we have them, the the engines will technically shoot us forward. I wonder if you could just disable the turrets, like, what happens if there's no laser turrets, right? Like, do we need those? Could I fit any more capacitors? Like, is there anything clever? Like, these doors are not technically needed? I don't think I can... Unless I've got a box with some capacitors in them. Which I might. You never you never know. The uh the spaceship came with most of this weird stuff on it, so I just left it here because it's weird. Like Tesla gun, that sounds cool. Um, it, it sounded cooler like 10 years ago. Nowadays, I don't know. Tesla <laughs> just doesn't have the brand recognition the same as it used to, I don't think. All right, let's go. Let's let's go back. Looks like it should be fine. If, if I had some more accumulators, I'd pop them down. But I don't. And I don't think I could make them. So, let's go. I would like to fly back home. So, t who, who's we should vet? We should have a voting in the chat. How long is it going to take to fly home? Last time it took forever and everything exploded. But um, maybe, maybe heading towards the planet will be better than leaving the planet. New course plotted. I don't know why I don't know my max speed. It says test max speed for estimate, but. I don't know how to do that. I don't really want to read that either. <laughs> it's, it's great when there's like in-game tutorials. It's not my preferred style when it's like a gigantic wall of text. Wall of wall of text. Apparently, you need to be streamlined even in space for some reason. By 30% speed. Don't make a box. Which is weird, because normally space wouldn't care. There's signals, there's automation. That's nice and all, but... I just don't know why it's so slow. Uh, target speed unlimited. Oh, you can put maximums. Huh. I guess maybe while we're in the system... Hey there, Kent. Uh, there's just asteroids everywhere. And then when you're traveling between stars, you get to go full speed. But for us, we're always actually going slower because... I guess there's just a lot of debris. Oh well, let's see. I don't know what I'm doing. We are... Uh... We're going. We're not going. Engage. Now we're going. They set a course. I'm I'm the captain, the navigator, and the helmsman all, all in one. Well, 
let's see how our speed do today. I did put in that extra solar panel, so that that's gotta help. It's already going down, and we're up. That that really didn't. Ah. Uh. I mean, I, on the plus side, we still have enough power to destroy asteroids. Wait a second. No. It can't take 20 minutes, can it? I'm gonna go get a drink. <laughs> this spaceship sucks. You can ride a cargo ship with weight, with more inventory total than this. You can just do one cargo shuttle that's practically free and you're there instantly. Or you can wait 20 minutes on your higher tech ion stream, you know, stuff I can't even build ship. Something seems a little bit busted. I, I don't know what we could do. I have to think about it. I'm going to get a drink. You guys make sure the asteroids don't kill us. All right, blue is back. It looks like not much has happened. <laughs> Our ship is still flying. That's good. We're we're not there yet, but you know. Are are we going maybe a little faster? I really thought having that extra solar panel would make a difference, but I don't know. Looks like maybe it won't take quite 20 minutes, but I'm pretty confident in saying the freebie spaceship you get at the beginning. Uh, I, I, I missed the sexy alien, oh no. 
Even Twitch won't allow it. The auto, the auto Twitch bot is like, sexy is illegal. You can't say sexy on Twitch. Man, the censorship there. That's something. It's about as good as when they censored creep. Don't be, don't be creeping. Um. Well, if there was a flyby sexy alien, I'm sure Robert would have uh, screenshotted it. I don't really use other people's blueprints generally, unless I need them. Like, I generally get tired working out nuclear reactors, so I'll just use a blueprint for that. But most of the time, I just try to make my own stuff. You'll, I'll show you the base when we get back. I've been having a, this has been a rough stream. This has not been been terribly successful, so I'm, I'm happy to do a minor base review when we go. Oh, this this trip, something about this ship has just sucked the life out of me. As soon as we launched. Heck, we can look at it while we're flying back. I uh, <clears throat> had a slight error uh, on on launch because uh, you know I, I parked the ship, you know, in, in orbit, and uh, I didn't notice that it happened to have a little substation pylon that connected you know the power to all the stuff. And what we learned was that as soon as the power goes down, your signal transmitters stop, which means anything trying to block your base from being exploded by delivery cannons uh, fails. And that was a humongous disaster while we were stuck in a spaceship, you know, in half an hour from our base. So, <laughs> you know, we eventually got around that and, and I'll, I'll fix it eventually. But, but um, yeah, it, it, it didn't go well. <laughs> so uh, that was the first thing that happened, you know, and, and then we, uh, you know, we went to Frost <laughs> the furthest away um, planetary body from our from our star, and uh, you know it had lots of cryonite, which was just something we wanted, easy and very little solar. So it just I don't know. I just like I didn't bring the right stuff. It sort of worked, but in the end we just gave up on it, and we're not actually getting anything out of it at all. But at least it's set up for cargo ships, so you know that's good. But yeah, this ship, it's it's it. I guess it goes okay speed if you're in the inner system. Like, I think if you flew around inside the first asteroid belt, it can probably get between these three planets in a reasonable time. It's kind of funny traveling along this line because it's the planet and then the moons that orbit it. This is just a, a way of of drawing, uh, you know, a, a planetary body, like it's a, it's just a, it's an abstract concept of how the moons work around planets for orbital stuff. But like the moons are technically in orbit of the planet, so you wouldn't get to Vestrian first. You'd, you'd get to Novus, and then like everything would be like very, very close to Novus comparatively, com you know, compared to travel to another planet. But maybe they're trying to give me some other information I'm not aware of, but. <sighs> All right, we're here. I haven't made any smart anchors or anything because I don't really like my spaceship. I'm just going to park it in the hole I had it in before. All right. But yeah, this 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 ship doesn't seem to be very good. Um, you know, I, I snuck in that extra solar panel, but I don't know what I would need to do to make it better. We only have, you know, we, ha we have enough resources we could expand it a bit I don't know why I'm not allowed to oh am I in still in end mode yeah um... yeah uh, you know we could, we could probably build it a little bit wider um, or, or fatter at the back or something I, I don't know but I, I don't have any more engines or boosters or anything that would actually help that. So all we could try to do would be to load it up on solar panels. And I don't, I can't build these. Like, this is as good as we'll get, which is a third as good. Oh, yeah. Uh, I could try to put some more accumulators on it. But again, I can't build these either. So we'd be getting about a third of the efficiency per, you know, baby accumulator. Unless it came with a couple hidden somewhere. Eh, it did come with a couple. Maybe we could fit them in. Um, 
Maybe I should have always done this from the beginning when you got it. Maybe you're meant to, like, try to fit these in. It, I don't think it's going to make much difference, but it will hold the charge a bit longer when we launch. Could move the RoboPort over, I guess. That gives me enough spot for, you know, one more. Uh, I'd have to put a normal accumulator, though, next time. Um, I, I don't know if this would really make much difference. Actually, I think... It's, it's just... <laughs> this the OCD, you know. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit more symmetrical. Um... I guess, like, the interior walls don't do much, do they? Like, it looks cool and spaceshipy, but I but maybe, maybe if you start getting damage from asteroids and stuff, you want to have, uh, you know, barriers or something, but I just don't know enough about spaceships to really know how to optimize it. I, I clearly needs more power, but I don't know what else we could do. All right, uh, apparently didn't bring my um, my life support module with me back on the last trip. So let's just hop in a uh, one of these bad boys. Find ourselves nine fuel, which I prepared for this inevitably. I think we're fine. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Home we go. I don't, still don't think I've ever landed where I told the... <laughs> like, I don't think we've ever landed in the spot where I wanted to land with those things. I always click a spot and then it just goes wherever it wants. Uh, Alright, so let's clean up my inventory a little bit here. Um, I don't have an automated dumping ground for a lot of this stuff yet. One day. I probably want the fuel for something. We'll put our proper armor back on and we'll save the thruster suit for later. We'll pick up most of our regular inventory and then turn on logistics to get the rest. And that should give the bot something to do. So, home sweet home. Uh, it's, it's difficult to describe our, our home base. Uh, we've, we've done a decent job pushing the biters back. You know, I've expanded a fair bit from the olden days. The biters have been super aggro and making it... I still don't have a way to, like, leave my base myself and clear it. Um, the... The artillery get the job done. That's been the only way we've been able to expand, basically. So, basically, whenever I want to expand, I use artillery to clear out a corner and just build a new wall. So, we could probably expand as much as we want at this point. It's, it's fine. But it's only thanks to artillery. And uh, I do have, like, an ammo belt that runs the perimeter of the base, and by now it's pretty well stocked. So I've got some regular turrets and some artillery space and flamethrowers and laser turrets. So the walls are pretty well defended, and uh, I can bombard the aliens from anywhere. So, like, that has been a success. Um, the general defensive structure, I don't think, I don't think our home will ever fall. Uh, we would, uh, maybe if the biters get nukes or something, but until then, I think we're good. Um, we even have, you know, of course, you know, some, some bot manufactories and a smart system that will input more bots into the logistics network when it runs lower than 2,500 construction bots. So if they get killed by biters, they already get replaced. So uh, I've milled repair packs. I, I think I, I, it would be very difficult for them to ever break through the walls. I think even if I ran out of ammo... Uh, there'd be enough energy forever to run the laser turrets. Uh, so the only way we'd ever lose the wall would be we run out of artillery and they start building worms, you know, between laser turret distance and worm distance, and they start destroying it. But I think they would kill bots quickly, but we would replace them for a very long time. But that would be a pretty significant drain. 
But as long as the artillery destroys any nearby worms, we don't really take very much damage, and what damage we take gets repaired for free. So I started concreting in the, the oceans and stuff to go make a solar grid, because I don't know how to make power at this point. We're at the... I mean, it should be fairly obvious for anyone popping in, but we're at the... Um, uh, the hard tier of science? I don't know what to call it. You know, we've got all basically all of the, the first three interesting space sciences done, and now we're into the, the four pack that come after that that require a lot of work, it turns out. And um, I was going to do nuclear power, but it just seems like it's not worth it. And therefore, I just went with more solar with better arrays. Uh, we are in the process of making a more proper designed uh, fragment pulverizer distribution uh, with some beacons and stuff. This was just test layouts, but it's a, it's a huge project. It, it will take up you know, the top half of the base, and I just didn't want to do it this stream. But one of these days when I want to upgrade my resource income, um, I've got a plan. Everything else, you know, this is the old manufacturing. This is what needs to be upgraded and streamlined a little bit. And then the actual old base is, the production center is just been upgraded since the beginning. So there's no blueprints. This is just, uh, hey, we started with some, like literally my, my crash down ship was around here and it's just been built up around that, which was been fun, but it's getting old. <laughs> it's definitely getting old. Um, never really automated any of the hard to ship stuff. Although it's pretty easy to get it back to orbit if we need it. Uh, I tried to automate the um, raw resources via space guns. And it has almost been an entire failure. Like, like literally, these delivery cannons have not worked the way I thought they would work. And have generally been a big letdown. So, a nice idea. I like this row of guns, but... Still not making enough of this low density stuff. Not even close. Let me just double check it's working. We, we set this up earlier in the stream. Ah, it's copper. It's always something. So. I mean, we're running at like... Two-thirds capacity, maybe. It's not super delayed, but we're not getting enough copper. Why are we not getting enough copper? I, I think it's just the overall demand is too much for the amount of dumb splitting we're doing. Assuming it's coming in at maximum lane. Yeah, we've, we've got one full blue belt coming in. It's just not enough for everything that needs it. So That's why we need to upgrade the, uh, the smelting lanes, basically. Now, I could certainly optimize more copper to go to low density rather than wherever else it's going. Currently, it's getting, like, quartered, which is not great. Uh... Probably don't need that splitter anymore. Uh, that was for when I had two different copper incomes. I had like a copper mine to the left and then a copper mine to the north. And I just wanted them to blend together. Uh, but we don't really need that anymore. And in fact, that's the same lane. It, it just takes a longer route. <laughs> it's all the same income. So splitting it there doesn't make a lot of sense in hindsight. Uh, that'll probably slow down something that's using... Or it's just a pure optimization. Funny that. You just delete one thing and everything flows. Yeah, no, it's going to slow down here. Yeah, because this will be drawing more to whatever's demanding it there, which is like copper wires and circuits. Um, but more of it, in fact, it's even backing up now. So we'll get maximum low density, which is good, but we'll be slowing down some probably circuit production. But it's just a matter of prioritization at this point. Um, our green circuits might be getting less wires here in a minute. But they're usually limited on wood rather than, than copper. And I really do need to switch like everything to the max productivity. Because clearly we can't input enough resources to, to keep it going. Uh, what do I want to do? Well... Now that we're home, it actually will take less time than a single sh ship. We could just load this up and go straight back to Frost Landing Pad now that it's all set up. And we could just fix it, or at least try to fix it. I don't actually know still what I want to do there. 
And I might end up doing it like between streams just in my downtime when I don't have to try to commentate and talk, but I, I so the whole the whole frost cryonite mines are powered off of uh like solid fuel launches. I just don't know if I can get enough power there to be happy about running the full cryonite um system, right? Like you gotta You gotta run pulverizers. You need uh, pulverizers, chemical plants, and and then furnaces. And they definitely use a lot of power to do it like productivity wise, like efficiently. Now I could ignore I could ignore productivity and speed mods. And just go, well, this patch has 17 million cryonite. I don't need it to be 35 million cryonite that gets multiplied. There's lots of cryonite on this planet. It's just further away. So maybe going, you know, plus 90% and speed, speed up. Like, that just uses a lot of power that I maybe shouldn't spend. And a lot of mods that I don't have either, technically. But shipping them out, I don't know. I just feel like it's such a waste cannoning up raw cryonite. Like, that's my problem right now. It's like 20 per stack, 20 per shot, and then I have to get the bullets here. And, like, you... so I do have a moon that produces its own bullets. Um, so I can show you how you do it. It's, it's not super hard, but... So this was our original baby cryonite that had a little bit of cryonite, and then it technically also had a ton of immersite. So this became our immersite moon. And it will also be our barrel moon. It just, you know, we, we need the cryonite to process the barrel. Um, so that's that's the reason we're going for cryonite, right? Uh, but we are manufacturing these bullets, or the, the capsules. The thing is, you can't really produce all that stuff locally, so you have to ship Struck density, low density, copper cables. He makes his own explosives easy enough. And maybe cables, I guess. But but at the very least, the um the, the low density and the heat shielding, you probably need to send. Uh, so I think we used up all that we could craft. So like this thing will continue shooting Immersite and a barrel back at us. But it'll still run out of ammo for the, the guns. Um, it In fact, it already has. Um, I was just... You know, it probably it probably ran out in the uh, space apocalypse when they were destroying all my bases. So almost certainly they just burned through like a few hundred capsules for nothing and just wasted everything. You can see where they wasted it. Oh, so even this isn't working. Nothing is working. I mean, it's it's storing up, it's refilling the stockpile slowly that was wasted, but that'll take a while. Ugh, gross. I don't know what you're supposed to do. I, I know that the, the, the trick for space exploration is all about, like, logistics between planets. And getting resources shipped around the right places. But I don't know what the game thinks you're supposed to do at this tech level. Like... These space guns just seem terrible. So am I really supposed to be automating, like, cargo rockets? I've, I've had people suggest that. But, I mean, these are even more of a pain, right? Like, because the throughput is, what, 500? 500 slots? 500 stacks? You don't really want to be shooting rockets around unless they're pretty much full. And a lot of times, you know, you don't want to send just one thing. Like, one rocket per item, I don't know if that's really very efficient either, because... You'll be sitting there for 10 hours waiting for it to fill up. And building them is not cheap. Like, each cargo rocket requires four structure, low density structure, four control units, a cargo pod, a rocket fuel tank, and four heat shieldings. You can see the total resources there 34 bricks, 53 plastic, 32 sulfur, 73. Like, that's times a hundred for one rocket and yeah you get a little bit back so it's research 
motors. You know, you can't... There's no other way to send them to, between planets. So this is the only way to send stuff like that. And it's, it's kind of crazy. So that's why my mega base is probably in, in demand. If, if I had a better overall base construction, you know, I could keep more of these running full speed. I mean, it's not even that bad. I've got like, well, this one's not even connected, right? I've got seven low density structures with max productivity and low density structures with max productivity and good speed mods. That's a pretty decent throughput, I would say. But you can see what it turns into. It, it's not much. That doesn't count the heat shielding, which is pretty easy. I Comparatively, heat shielding is cheap. You know, this stuff's not so bad. I never even bothered to speed it up. Wow, we only have so many tablets. It's it's stuff like the the green motors, the low density, the blue te the blue circuits. Those are the guys that really really slow us down. I cannot make enough red circuits to even come close. I mean, it looks like we're barely making any, so maybe I should. Well, something was stealing them. This looks more like normal. Let's just double check what's going on on the giant gap of red belt. Just follow it back to the production. It doesn't even have its own belt, it's <laughs> so bad. So we're stealing some to make the, the tier 2 productivity modules that's almost full, but you know, we use a lot on the threes and we need the threes. We really do need a lot of level 3 productivity. Following it back, splitting it off. We use it to make uh, the rocket control units if you're trying to make cargo ships. We use it to make cargo pods if you're trying to make rockets. Again, they're just squished in here dumbly, but it's a lot of things that use reds. Following it further back up. This is our buffer or sort of storage for us to use and the bots. And yeah, none of them are working. So we're not getting enough copper cables. Because we're not getting enough copper plates. I mean, I said we might run into problems. Uh, balancer is still doing its job. We just cannot get enough copper, period. I guess I could... So, because I split the copper here, I could certainly run a second lane of copper down. That's not even particularly difficult. And then just have one go left and one go right. Now, I probably don't have enough blue belts for this just on me. I don't know how many we'll need. This is uh, not a short trip. And it will be much worse when we make the uh, smelting base all that much larger. Sure. Ah, oh, come on. If I had just held... <laughs> if I had just held the button down, it would have auto-belted underground like that it's it's this is very wasteful like everything glue does all right so this is where we want it this is where the copper comes from anyway oh yeah i didn't have access to uh blue loaders back when i built this so that up a little bit. Now I don't know if we'll be making enough copper on the input side. Yeah. Should have known. Alright. 
Stop yelling at me. It's just... Nothing. It's nothing. I wish I could set the alerts to be like, this is actually an alert and this is nothing. Because sometimes you need to know. And technically we lost 27 bots for nothing. But it's like it doesn't matter. They're free now. Okay, so interestingly enough, I actually did the math on these uh, ingot to plate converters. You cannot build enough fast inserters to actually output it as fast as they, uh, they can craft. Um, especially if you speed them up. <laughs> so... It's kind of funny. I didn't I didn't check it out when I built this, but you actually need to use loaders. If you want maximum throughput anyway, so quick fix is uh, something like that. And then the trick then is you have to use, um, you know, splitters to join them in basically, because you can't, well, I mean you can, but it will only go into one side of the lane like that. So, Usually it's probably something like this, which takes up more space. It's a bit janky. And it's still only going at the speed of one blue. Which... Um, I'd have to do the math again. It's 10 plates every 1.25 seconds. Let's just max it out so we do the math correctly once. It's 1.25 seconds divided by a speed of 3.25. So that's a crafting speed of 0.38 seconds. Uh, so it's 10 divided by that. I did this the dumb way, though. So you're getting 26, I think, plates per second. Assuming you can keep it full of ingots. A belt can hold 45. A blue belt can hold 45. So one machine is more than half of a blue lane. That's crazy. So like this whole idea of running through the whole system like that, it's absolutely impossible. Um, we would need... Assuming we can, you know, get the ingots as quickly as, as we can. There's really no point even having, you know, maximum speed here. Because we, we literally can't fit it onto the belt. Um, it's a 45. So I think maybe dropping it down to 275 would work. So it was 125 divided by now 275. Score that. And it's 10 divided by that, if I remember correctly. Yeah, 22. Okay, that actually works out really well. So in theory, once these guys have sort of evened out, uh, it's 22 crafted per second, and then output at, well, 22 per second overall, combined to 44 on this point, and the belt can hold 45. So that's slightly more than maximum production which means eventually it will take a little while they should drop down to zero stored between cycles but it will take a while and that's assuming there's space here which is assuming it's coming out fast enough so that's what's not happening there's not enough room to store it because i never actually connected up the bottom because i wasn't sure how much copper we'd have uh but easy enough so we're just going to switcheroo here. Alright, that doubles the copper into the base. Uh, now, I'm not 100% sure if I've got them balanced at all. Wait. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's the two ways in. One gets split, but this left basically never gets used. That's just for ammunition. This is where it gets chunked at significantly. And I think I actually, you know, because at this point, this is a full lane. So balancing those two in won't matter, although. Okay, there's there's some discussion about, like, proper lane balancers. In this scenario, though, I don't think it matters because 
At this point, it's just chest tier 45 each. There's no balancing that you can do. If one lane uses more than 45 per second, it, there's nothing you can do because until it's off the lane, you can't add more to it. So you'd have to like, like if you paid close attention, one of the things I did with my cables is halfway through the thing that uses the most cables, I split some more in. Although it's all backed up now because who knows why. Apparently, in the time it took to get more copper, everything backed up all the way to the beginning. It's hilarious. You go from not enough to do anything to everything shuts off. It really is hilarious. Uh, so I can't test anything that I just did because... I store a bit of those. I didn't need nearly that much. Alright. So if we, if we check the thing that I cared about... Anyway, the low-density structure is working just fine. <laughs> Resources are great. Nothing to worry about. It's crazy. But uh, let me go back and, and double-check the, the copper input. Because... I should... Don't think I'll need um, uh, these things. Actually, go through the ingots very quickly. I built more than I, I probably needed, but let's mirror the top, the bottom of the top, and I think we're gonna go to four each instead of six. So that's just two full blue lanes, which is already a, a ton. And it's not my favorite, but it does give me a bit more space to connect things up. Okay, that should be enough to fill two blue lanes. And then we'll do the same kind of idea up here, kind of mirror. Because I didn't know, and like for the longest time, I did never have a copper ingot backup like this. Like it never... It never had this many, but um, we finally got there, and now I know why, how to set my inserters up, or my, my assemblers up a little better. I guess I could have probably just used a uh, blueprint to copy-paste, but whatever. No, no, I'll use that. Wait. Uh. Sure. High speed copper fixing. All right, and that should get all of that moving in as fast as possible. So we are making quite a lot of copper. As well, <laughs> it's always the, the, the buffers though. We can only produce as much copper as this many uh, 107 casters can make. And I have some speed mods in them, but not fully upgraded. Uh, but they're very slow, very, very slow. But I have to imagine that with two full copper belts going into my base, that's a pretty good upgrade. And honestly, while I'm here, I might do it with iron as well. Um, I kind of have it set up for it already. We are actually using more steel. It would be 102,000 if it was full. So we're actually consuming steel a bit faster than we're creating it. Which doesn't surprise me too much. We actually have um, more molten iron than we're consuming, which means it's just a matter of speed. Uh, 
And I have some low-tech speed mods in there, and I never got to, you know, beacon it up. But also, we're at the point where the, the Molten Iron barely gets to the end here. Even though there's, you know, maximum liquid at the right side with a, with a steel pump pushing, it still can't fill the end up quick enough through this many machines, which I guess shouldn't surprise people. Now, what I could do... I'm, I'm slowly learning a few tricks for um, liquid management that make things a little better. Um, more pumps tends to be good, but also not splitting the output of pumps, because liquids don't seem to work by normal rules. Um, I expect by doing that, both lanes of steel will push to the end, but we'll see. It should have its own dedicated pump pushing, but maybe it will work, maybe it won't. So the point is, even putting more speed here, um, the, the, the molten liquid won't even get this far down the lane, I don't think. Well, maybe, but it doesn't really look like it. Steel is just hard to make. Anyway, let's get the iron. Uh, so unlike copper, uh, iron is created at about half the speed, uh, or unpacked at about half the speed. So instead of like, you know, potentially 26 or 27 copper per second out, uh, iron at best is half of that because it's 2.5 seconds. So um, even super speed, you know, you probably don't need its own blue belt. But legitimately, this might be too much anyway. So let's let's speed that belt and inserter or loader off. And I've got it in a weird system, but it's currently backed up anyway. I don't think one fast inserter is actually anywhere near enough to keep up with these. So, at the very least, let's double it. Now that I know. And we can get the power there other ways. And... Without going crazy with speed mods, we'll just put a couple in each. And then the rest of the iron ingots get stored because we do technically use them. That's a lot. But I was planning on shooting them somewhere, basically. In case, in case like, one of my bases needs uh, ingots for iron or copper. It's, it's a bit annoying that the stack size is 50 instead of 200. But remember, each of these is worth 10, so it's really more like 500. So you shooting them through space capsules or space cargo ships, you're still getting two and a half times the value per shot or per square uh, so it's good but yeah, it could be better uh, I'd like to get the steel moving a bit better it's certainly not the unpacking that's at fault it's just the casting part I think we're making more molten iron than we can consume as well because not all of the enriched iron is even getting uh, processed here and I, I it, you can just tell that the the storage tank is basically always full, so if I can figure out an easy way to, to get more steel, and maybe now that I've got like more access to modules, if I just run the ones closer to the pump at a higher um, oh, I ran out. Let's I forgot I turned that off. All right, just clean up inventory. Let's go pick up some more speed mods. I I have a fair number of those. The only level 3 mods we don't make are the efficiency ones because I actually don't have enough cryonite. But um, the other ones are okay. Just just a little expensive. Basically, preparing for the mega base, we, we definitely want to have a lot of modules for that. I'll let the bots clear up my inventory for me. Thanks, guys. Sometimes they're good bros. Zoom. The crazy thing is how little of distance we've actually made it to space exploration for how many hours we've done this game. How 
not much progress we've made, actually. It's, it's kind of weird. Alright, let's uh, pump these up a bit. So, like I said, I'm not... These machines are just so slow. Like, or it's 100 seconds per cycle. It's so slow. I could slap a beacon in here. Barely. But I, I could. Um, and then I'd have to, like, pipe the, the liquid around the beacon. But, but it would work. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Wish I had better beacons. I I'll look it up in the tech tree, but I bet you the next level of beacons is quite a ways away. Compact beacon? So we're using basic beacons. Um, I don't know exactly which ones are... Ooh, energy beaming. Transferring power? Oh boy, that'll be the day. Could we make a, a station around the star? full of solar panels like would that be maximum solar efficiency and then just beam it wherever we want kind of like a little baby dyson sphere oh man i want to do that if that's possible because you could yeah right i could i could build a station here right in front of the star 1500 percent solar power our current uh amount yeah, that's like three times better than the solar panels on our space station. Oh, that'd be so cool. <laughs> like, on Novus Station, each one of these, my current tech solar power, would be 1.2 megawatts per tile. The better ones are like 3.7 megawatts a tile, but they would be about three times better that's 10 megawatts per square. That's that's so crazy. Even these mid-tier ones would be pretty awesome. Actually, these this is my next tier of solar panel. They're not much better than these ones. Like, they're better, but it's not a huge jump. 1.9 versus 1.2 and less other places. But All right, that's... Okay, got sidetracked. Cool idea. Um, you can... Like, while, while I'm... It's beaming. Um, energy beaming, just to, just to get an idea. Yeah. Uh, energy and material level 3 and astronomic level 3. We don't even have level 1, so like it's, it's, it's nowhere even remotely close, but that's really cool. And it looks like it can shoot a gigawatt, so one of these for every gigawatt of, uh, of solar panels. And then you just need a receiver somewhere. Yeah. I mean, these things look pretty expensive. <laughs> Neighbor bonus? Alright, so they're going to make you do, like, nuclear reactor style, where you've got to... Yeah. Alright, it's actually probably way more complicated than I'm giving it credit, but... I, it looks cool. I, I don't know if it's actually good, but it certainly sounds fun. Um, but I was trying to find beacons, right? So it looks like, you know, my basic beacon has a branching path upgrade to go either compact or wide. And they are pretty, well, energy two is pretty far away. And... Energy 2 still, yeah. So either way, it's... We have to get Energy 1 and figure out Energy 2, which, again, I'm assuming is pretty complicated. I don't actually know, but assumedly, not easy. So, probably not going to happen anytime soon. Construction-wise, Immersite, we've got. Energy Control Unit, we don't got. Holmium, we don't got. And Energy Catalog. But you'll need the Energy Catalog to get the research. I think you need the energy control unit for the research as well. And then Holmium is part of the, uh, the other researches. So that's nothing actually rare at that point. Just for interest sake, how do they work? 
10 modules at 75%. Maximum power module mo a maximum module power of 7.5. Oh, it's a two tile radius. Oh. So it's really like only going to work on a couple machines at a time. Compared to my current one which is Eight modules, half power with four squares. Or sorry, three three tiles. Right, I see. The maximum module power is meant like if you have eight of the same one. It's the same as having four rather than eight. So compact beacon, you'd get ten modules. So you get two more slots and a higher transmission efficiency. So for really compact builds, if you're just trying to get one machine working maximum, this is what you want. Whereas the, well, Compact 2 comes later. 10 at 100% speed. The wide one has 15 modules. Okay, it actually has the same potential boost. You just spend 50% uh, more modules to get it. Oh, and four, okay, this is the way to go though. Uh, although it costs you five more modules, transmitting it 14 tiles wide means, like, if you need two compact beacons to run a production line, for instance, let's say you can get maybe six machines running with two compact beacons, that'll cost you 10 modules, or 20 modules. But one wide area beacon would probably cover way more machines than that. And you'd have the same effective. You, you would need five. You need fifteen modules instead of twenty, for the same overall boost. Yeah. Okay. That's. I feel like that's clearly superior. These are maybe a little cheaper in certain situations, a bit niche, but almost always wide area. Ah. But that's a ways away, unfortunately. Something to look forward to, but we're not going to get too soon. And then the upgraded will be. Still fourteen tiles, but now you can have twenty for a. 10 power. Yeah, it's the same overall bonus. Just twice as many modules, but affects like half your base. I mean, uh, a, 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 it's not the whole base. A uh, electric substation is 20 by 20. Uh, this is bigger than that, though. Within 14 tiles, that's... Uh, depending on how it counts, 28 wide, but I think... I think it starts from the edge of the machine, so if it's a 3x3 three three machine, instead of a 28 square grid, or 28 tile square, it should be 31, I think. That's, that's huge. So that's fun. I'd like, I'd like to have that. But we're not going to get that anytime soon. I would also like the upgrades to the thruster suit. This is kind of what I was hoping to get today was some one of the new science packs and then unlock something like a better suit, right? Like that'd be cool. Something to look forward to. You can put a lot more modules in it, fly around faster, make more bots. That's nice too. This is a new recipe for uh, electronic components. You get a lot more than the current recipe. And you just need lithium, which, well, is kind of a pain. But there's a lot of really cool stuff. It, this is one of the, it's like the love-hate relationship. There's a lot of stuff in this mod that is just awesome. If we could get material science, we could also get faster belts. We'd go from 45 to 60. Uh, not that expensive. We've got immersium. Actually, I don't think we have immersium gears. We don't know how to make those yet. But we do have immersium. So. Assumedly something material processing in, in here would give us immersive immer gears. Also the Iridium delivery cannon, that's not that important. Maybe cheaper, assuming you have Iridium, but Iridium is super difficult. Like we looked at how to make Iridium. That is, as much as that's a simple recipe, the Iridium part is not easy. More guns I don't care about. Actually, more excited for getting the, um, not that one. The pure damage upgrades are so good. Yeah, 40%. 
40% is still pretty good. Well, uh, what do I want to do? What time is it? It's getting pretty late, Ankylo time. Let me just see if I can find some project that maybe I could accomplish. First, just looking at the steel while I was away, the secret trick there was to double check. Is our steel going up or down after I maybe increase the throughput a bit? And the answer is it is... It's holding steady. Maybe going down a little. You'd have to check it for longer, because the um, you know the cycle time on these is so slow. It's it's hard to get a, a good count. We could we could just look at the graph. Steel plates, what we care about. Steel plates, what we care about. Well, it's got a weird bouncy cycle to it, so it's kind of difficult to say. It doesn't really look like anything I did made a difference. <laughs> I just gotta say, sure, it's been lower long ago, but when we're running the factory, it seems to just sort of gyrate around, averaging around uh, a thousand a minute. Yeah, that's funny. That's over an hour. Yeah, I guess it's because... um. The machines are 100 seconds by default, although a little bit lower with my speed modules. So, one hour is, well, it's, it's a minute and a half-ish per construction, so it's like 45. Yeah, so it's just enough to make a nice little sine wave, like everything. Everything's a sine wave. If you guys ever take, like, university, you know, major math stuff. Everything's a wave. Everything's a side wave. Just break it all down. Uh, cool. Anyway, uh, what is that? What what could I do? What's a, what's a project we could get done today to turn that around to make today's stream more successful? Should we just go back to the frost moon and and try to fix it now that we don't need to fly the spaceship? Maybe it'd be worth it to just go there. Can't think of any other relatively simple projects. So what what would we do here to fix it? Uh, obviously solar is not a real solution, I don't think. I don't really like firing the solid fuel here. I mean, if I can't figure out anything else, that'll do, but... We're not really using any power, but as soon as this turns on, it, it'll it'll suck up all the power. I almost want to, like, check out if any space exploration guides are, like, how to handle power distribution in the mid, early to mid game. I don't know what we're at. I mean, there is coal. Let me see if there's any coal anywhere near us. Well, there's a four. Okay. Blind, blind ankylo. Four point three million coal, right there. Just. I mean, how long would that last? Running, running steam power. I'd still need way more turbines, probably, to run anything big. I mean, there's tons of uranium. A million of uranium is... You know, we, we could... I don't know if this is worth it at all. But we could very easily start some breeder cover X. Like, it's no big deal. We've got more than enough to get it started as much as we want. We would not need... <laughs> you do not need this many Covarex uranium enrichment. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> this, this was a, a fun little big project, but you, you don't need this much. <laughs> if we brought, like, four, it'd be more than enough. Um, but yeah, a million uranium, I think, would run a 2x2 two two 
uh, power plant for a long time. Probably longer than anything else we're looking at. And I don't even really have to work very hard on a 2x2. Two two. Uh, I don't have like a proper ratio for space exploration or Crestorio because Crestorio changes a lot of the... Uh, uh, the ratios and, and recipes. Uh, I copied a blueprint from someone that did a nice little 2x2 two two reactor with some heat pumps and stuff. Uh, but this is like a vanilla system. And the... As much as it works, it's not optimized for the Crestorio recipes. So we could just copy this anyway. It, it's fine. But um, it does need, you know, lots of heat exchangers, lots of steam turbines. You know, the four reactors in the middle. So that gets you around a hundred of these steam turbines, and, and it depends on on how the mod works, um, or how, how Crestorio has rebalanced the heat. Um, but in theory, we could run a lot of power off of this. Especially if I set up the storage system the way I did. Because we won't be using a gigawatt of power, so the stir turbines will probably never run at full speed. So what I like, what I did, if, if you're wondering, because it's been a while. Um, when uh, when a reactor eats a, a, some uranium fuel or some you know nuclear fuel, it heats up slowly to thousand degrees, and the heat is then transferred to heat exchangers to boil water. But the fuel lasts a very long time as it heats up, and it will hold four or five fuel as well. So you can't turn the machine off, it just runs till it runs out of fuel. And if it is still above, I think, 415, whatever the minimum is here, 415 for, for heating. As long as these are over 415, they're outputting heat, and that doesn't matter if there's any room in the steam output. So if the turbines aren't using the steam, then it's just wasting the heat. It, it, the, the, the system will heat up, stay hot. Luckily, it doesn't explode, like maybe a, a real reactor. But it does waste, effectively, the fuel you put into it, and therefore, you know, the uranium. But if you don't want to waste the uranium, because I didn't want to waste the uranium, I set up a system where it will disable the fuel... Um, inserters but you know it would keep running for like 10 minutes after it stopped inserting fuel because remember it holds six fuel and each one lasts like a couple minutes so if you turn it off when it doesn't need the power it'll just keep running anyway for 10 minutes so you really need like a large steam backup or storage of some sort to to continue to build up you know energy while it's got the heat and then it eventually will turn off and just use the steam to make power until the steam runs out. So there's just a, a little bit of logic. Uh, I just did a combinator because I, I split it up two ways because the, the water throughput and steam throughput becomes a big problem. I still probably don't have enough pumps to make this all work. Like I, I got a lot of water in and, and stuff, but the the amount, like I think the hardest part of nuclear on, on bulk is actually getting enough water and steam pushed through it. Um, the heat is kind of easy. The fuel is a little bit tricky, but it's making the water efficiently move through long pipe systems. It's not great. But we know we have water on our frost moon, so if we could... And we know there's uranium. Uh, it needs some steel to make the, uh, the fuel cells, and then we do have to dispose of the old ones, but that can just, just get dumped in a pit somewhere. That's fine. Um... I kind of think this is what I want to do, actually. This is funny. I didn't... This is not what I was expecting, but... I I think we go back with... With a with a plan, with a dream. So my music has ended. Looks like we may have played through the entire playlist. Let me grab something else a little different. Um, what else have I got? Hmm... Can't remember if I like this one or not, but we'll go with some Chrono Trigger. Don't remember if I like the album. It's more than anything. It's a jazz tribute to Chrono Trigger. So it should be chill. 
might be a little quiet. Okay, well, let's just... I mean, I could just copy the whole thing. It's a bit more than I'll probably want to build, but... But, um, that way we can lay it down, and it gives us a, num a numbers for all the stuff we're going to want. All right, all right. This shouldn't take too long. We'll do this. We'll do this. And at the very least, we'll talk. We'll tick off the Cryonite from my to-do list, hopefully, because... Gee whiz. Gotta get something done. Okay. So, I'm gonna bring... We can... Because we're taking our cargo rocket this time... Oh, you're not even allowed... Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think... <laughs> so, holding the raw uranium has always done some damage. And normally, my... I have shields in here. So it's not as much of a problem, but... <laughs> I got rid of them for some reason, because I'm dumb. But we'll, we'll put them back in. Because um, the shields regenerate pretty quickly, and it kind of undoes the, the radiation damage. Uh, so instead... I guess we'll do it the bot way. You know, oddly enough, I think typically people... And like movies, social media, whatever, presumes that robots are unaffected by radiation. Uh, that is not true. Like biology does eventually get, you know, affected, mutated, killed, you know, whatever bad stuff to biological processes. But uh, you know, electronics are also pretty sensitive to bits of uh, high-powered uh, narrow beam radiation rays. I don't like. I don't like seeing a tiny little belt here. What, what's that? That's not enough. We're, we're trying to make capsules. Oh, that's probably my bad. Yeah. I'm trying to fill this up. I'm going to turn that off again. I was uh, planning on expanding the bullet delivery system network, and that was a dumb idea. So That <laughs> apparently found another short point in my base, which is... Um, that's where the heat shields are coming from. So these, yeah, we're not. Mi <laughs> I was just saying a minute ago how ah we don't need any more of these. Funny. I'll make it work. Just gotta believe. Beautiful spaghetti. Done. Uh, and then I'll upgrade the four on the right to just produce more. Right, it's easier. I always do this kind of backwards. I haven't found an easy way to upgrade them. Like, once you've got some modules in, I don't know if there's any shortcut that, like, just fills them all in, like, as conveniently as this would be. Because sometimes you just want to replace everything, but... Now, we'll surely run out of um, stone tablets now, but... Should all be working again. And they still craft pretty slow, so one red inserter should be enough. But I'm going to guess that stone tablets might not keep up. Well... We're doing pretty good, actually. With only one, it's just barely enough. Yeah, it's not actually. It, it shuts off for a second. Yeah, it's because I didn't have room. <laughs> it's so dumb how I all connected all this up. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, trying to think of a way of getting two blue inserters to take stone tablets and then uh, uh, something else to get the steel. There's a reason this all ended up spaghetti. And I can underground to here, but that'll mess up. Yeah, there's just not enough space to really fix that. This is why we need the base rebuild. Anyway, it looks like they're working pretty efficiently, so we make a little bit more heat shields and something. If we wait around for 11 more minutes, too, something fun will happen, maybe. Alright, what was I doing before I got sidetracked? So, <laughs> the uh, perennial question. Alright, I was trying to die to uranium. Or radiation damage. Some shields, probably worth it. I don't really like this beacon all or the energy observer all that much. It's, it's a nice idea, but it's too slow. Alright, so... Right, I was coming down here to make a chest that would request the nuclear power, pell, power cell, wherever they are. That's always the question. There we go. I'm gonna prime it with like 50 and I don't want to have to wait for the drills to get me enough enriched uranium to start the Covarex enrichment process so we want to also prime that with uh, at least a couple hundred of the good stuff which we've got lots and then the cheap stuff we don't need to ship around the base uranium because we can we can certainly get those easily so we're gonna put some uranium we're going to take some uranium. What else do we need? Well, we know that the buildings we didn't bring last time were missing. So we're going to need some number of centrifuges. I don't know how many. We'll bring a stack. We're going to need... Some number of furnaces. We'll bring two stacks. It's probably way more than we'll need. We'll bring... Four stacks of chemical plants. We'll bring six stacks of chemical plants. Bring a stack of assembly machines, and I'm going to turn off my auto uh, logistics because it's going to mess with me here. That'll be fine. Uh, what else do we need? More mining drills? Maybe. Probably not, but I'll bring another stack anyway. It's not like it costs us that much. Uh, I did not bring enough inserters last time, so that was a shortage. But let's focus on the buildings we're gonna I actually have a fair number of beacons up there but I'll bring a couple more stacks uh, we will definitely need a good number of pulverizers for the whole process they tend to get used uh, we might need some recyclers so I'll bring a couple of those I'd wished I had some big fuel refineries so we'll bring them storage tanks are good to have I'm not 100%, but we might need filtration plants or electrolysis or atmospherics. We're just going to bring some of them. Bring some flare stacks. Good for organizing, getting rid of junk. And then we need a whole bunch more. Okay, we're not actually going to use steam turbines, right? We're planning to use our steam engines. We do need the actual steam turbines. Uh, let's take a quick look at the blueprint. Uh, it looks like... 82 for this blueprint. Uh, most of the stuff in there is not too bad, but we'll have to bring all the nuclear uh, building stuff. So, um, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 should be more than enough. Uh, and I'll, I'll bring like two extra stacks. Maybe some meteors will destroy them or something. And I, I do think we'll be setting up some basic roboports up there. Maybe not a ton, but like a couple. Just a minor robo network. So, we want those. Okay, I think that's all the production buildings. Well, other than the, the nuclear reactors. So let's go get the reactor stuff. I have no idea exactly how much we'll need. This will keep our base much busier building stuff for a while. So, it will be four reactors. 
and then a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, looks like 136 pipes and 48 heat exchangers. One stack of heat exchangers and three stacks of pipes. I'm going to bring one extra stack of pipes and one extra stack of heat exchangers. I'm going to bring two stacks of pipes. So no matter what happens, we can definitely connect all the reactors. I don't think we'll need more than four reactors, but I'll bring four more just in case. Just, like, I've had so many problems. Actually, you know, okay, I don't know, oh, I don't know if it's worth it. There is a, a thing in, installed that I haven't used yet. There are ducts, um, and I was playing around with them earlier, but I, I haven't really gotten them figured out. So ducts are like mega liquid pipes. This, this is a duct here. A long straight duct and you can make corners and stuff, but they're super expensive compared to pipes. And they have intakes that have like six pipe intakes and then exhausts, which have six pipe exhausts. And then the duct connects them. But that's the only way to get the liquids in and out. But I believe the idea is the throughput over big distances on these is way better than a pipe. And I have not tested it, so I have no idea. I hope it's functionally infinite for how much of a pain pipes are. But it just needs to be at least six pipes, and then it won't matter at that point, really. Um, but it's not like the duct connects to anything. So in terms of uh, usages on the reactor, it would be good for getting the water nearby, and then you could just pipe from the duct exhaust to the, uh, the heat exchangers, and maybe the steam, if, if you spread this out a bit. But I think this system works. I, I, I don't think I'm going to mess with the ducks. And I, I think I only would do that if I had to ship the water a long way. But pretty conveniently, we got lots of areas to connect some, some uh, offshore pumps. The actual raw uranium isn't very far away from it anyway. So we might as well just belt the uranium down. And then just have the reactor, you know, near the water, right? It, there's tons of space on a new planet, so... I think... And electricity is also... Might as well be superconductors. Because there's no electricity loss for having long wires crossing the planet anyway, so... Belts and wires are basically, you know, zero upkeep. Basically. Speaking of which, uh... Bring them some more substations and long poles... I'm definitely going to bring them more pipes. I did bring quite a lot of belts last time, but it was inserters that I forgot. So I'm going to bring some more blue belts just, just in case. Probably some more loaders just in case. And some more splitters. Although I, I don't think those are the shortage. I, I got to make sure I get the inserters next. Easily forgotten and annoying to make nowadays. Forgot about that one. Okay, power poles, power poles. Reactors, heat pipes, heat exchangers. I want more speed modules and efficiency modules for later. Uh, Robo ports and especially fast inserters. Robo port and bots. Now I don't expect I'll need a ton. But it just makes, like, emergency fixes while you're away possible. If you leave the resources and some bots, you can generally fix a lot of stuff without actually flying all the way out for it. So, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, that should be enough for a fair while. And then, yeah, 500 is fine. And, uh, you probably only need a few RoboPorts, but I'll bring that. Unfortunately, my inserters never got compacted to the convenient areas. They're just spread around again. I forget where blues are. I mean, that's where the yellows go. That's where the blues come out. I know there's a box full of blue inserters. It's right here. I'll, uh, 
I'll update these a little bit. I really like how I've got um, <laughs> the building twice on the same bar. That, that's that's a good sign. This is very rarely a problem with the, the quickness, the speed of which we're building those. All right. Zoom back down. Zoom too far. All right. Bots. Roboports. Inserters. Spare those things. All right. So that's a, a good start. We're a quarter full on the rocket. What else will I need? Well, I gotta put the uranium in, I suppose. We'll just turn the requests off and let a, uh, a fast inserter, or a stack inserter deal with them. Oh, I always forget that I don't have um, nice warehouses, so. I'm just gonna make a, a spread of large warehouses that are really nice for requesting and supplying and storing. It's, it's better. Okay. Oh, a, I also need to make sure I can get home. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. You know, I should just have a, tw a chest that can only hold twenty. Why don't, why don't I do that? Yeah. It's, uh... I gotta... I need those inserters back. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, if it only holds 20, then I just control click it whenever I want to build, bring enough, uh... cargo rockets to build a rocket with me. Seems easy. Alright. Big warehouses for later. Okay. What else do we need for our icy planet? I suppose, uh... I didn't grab any offshore pumps, and I will need quite a few for the, uh... Quite a few for the nuclear reactor. Uh, also, I'll probably want more pumps in general. There's offshore pumps and steel pumps to move stuff around. I just, I seem to have missed so many things last time. I don't want to leave without getting it right. Uh, pipes and stuff. I didn't pick up more of those. So steel pipes. Good number. A couple stacks of the undergrounds. And then a few more steel beams and all that, just for... Just in case. It's kind of annoying to craft if you're in a pinch. And I will probably throw some more random resources in once we're... Once we've got all the important stuff, I'll just toss in whatever seems... Uh, like it'll make a difference. Uh, especially things you can't get on that planet, which I believe is mostly copper. Yeah, we we can definitely get iron pretty easily. Coal's not that bad, especially if you're trying to make steel or something. It's it's not a particularly challenging thing. It's actually very low on stone, oddly enough, and super low on copper. Although there is maybe a little, but things that rely on copper and stone, we're not going to be able to produce locally without um, getting a little bit uh, creative, let's say. So I would like to remember where my copper junk is. And we're just going to bring a couple stacks. Or, you know, a couple rows, I guess. Just because I, I don't want to have to come back to, to this. The, the first trip was already bad enough. I don't want to have to do a third or fourth trip. So make sure they've got the resources they need, you know. Oh yeah, these guys too. While I'm here, I will definitely bring them a stack of all this stuff that I usually just take to the moon. I feel like the uh, 
the cargo rocket's got lots of space, so I should just fill it up, you know. Hey there, Shepard. Uh, we don't need any of these. Those are only for research, but the low line was definitely for lots of things. Okay, let's just refill my basic inventory, and I'll just keep trying to think. You know, we've got 160 slots left for what we would need on our icy moon. I could try to set up a meteor defense there as well. It'd probably have the power to run it easily enough at this point if we get this all set up. Uh, the trouble is, just like on Morrigan, building the ammunition locally is not easy. Uh, these guys. So these are the meteor defense installations. I could bring a bunch of these. That's no big deal. But... You know, we've only got so much ammo, and once that ammo's gone, uh, I'll have to bring a bunch up. Now, I was trying to craft it up here, but batteries, electronic circuits, and steel, it's not super easy to craft just wherever you go. Now, I can get there. <laughs> we, we can make copper cables, and I think we could take stone and cook it into tablets and then turn it into electric circuits electronic circuits batteries are just iron and uh, and sulfuric acid and uh, steel well you might have to send the steel unless I want to do more smelting but even steel's not super hard to make just iron and coke uh, but yeah I just uh, you know you don't have to make it very quickly but you just need some of those resources on the bay, on the on the planet, or else you have to just keep shooting uh, re, uh, resupplies, which sucks. I was, I believe, sending or planning to send steel. I think that was the idea. Yeah, I just never did it. <laughs> uh, anyway, I don't know if I want to do this again. It's going to be a small base. There's, the meteors can't destroy it, right? There's no way. <laughs> Famous last words. Uh, maybe some more modules. I'll do one more round of uh, blue and red modules. Could bring lots of solar... You know, we've got so many solar panels, even with 22% efficiency. Just slap down a few thousand, you'll be fine. The bots are real busy today. I'm just buzzing. Over 3,000, they just uh, keep keep uh, multiplying. That should be lots. Uh, I did bring the stuff for the Covarex enrichment, right? Yeah, so we'll be able to set that up. It's not super complicated in low numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm getting pretty close to just pulling the trigger because it's getting late and I really hope I remembered everything this time. Maybe I'll wait till the, uh... There's, there's an event coming soon-ish. Oops, not that one. Okay, good enough. For a second trip, we've got another 150 spots. I think I'll just bring a bunch of steel and... Maybe some of the, 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 the components and stuff I always forget about. I did bring them some plastic last time. Not a lot of recipes use plastic so far in this mod. Seems to have less, uh, like, I, I seem to remember in vanilla, I ran out of plastic a lot. <laughs> or gas to make plastic, but you know, same difference. Well, 
Why are uh, why are we not making enough beams? It's just really slow to build, I guess. Yeah. You're welcome. And that'll just mean the steel will run out somewhere else, but. Um, right, so electronic components, these bad boys, I know some weird machines sometimes use them, so we should bring a few. Uh, logistics. Two, three, four, I just want to bring like a thousand. And then, what else is kind of weird? I mean, some things use silicone as well, I generally don't have it on hand. Automation cores is something... Let's bring a little bit of silicone with us. A bit more glass, because I forgot to grab that. Quartz, I don't care. What a, what a well-designed base, I love it. Okay, I got the components. I need the automation cores and inserter parts for emergencies. So there's your automation core. I don't even stack up very much of this stuff. Should probably, that's from like way long ago when I only kept four stacks at a time. And then inserter parts. It's probably up in the old base here somewhere. These guys. It looks like that, but goes into a bin. Like that one. They won't need very many, but it's nice to have just for emergency. Bring some regular beams. Some motors, whatever, doesn't matter too much. And then I was gonna bring a few more gears and sticks. Fill up on iron. Alright, let's let's see what the rocket ship is looking like. Filling it up with junk, certainly. Maybe just give it one set of everything in my inventory and then that's good enough. And let the bots refill me one more time. So it's not the worst way of doing it because usually I keep my inventory pretty full of things I use regularly to get... Actually, landfill was something I meant to bring. We can go get some bit of landfill. We'll just bring a, a few stacks of landfill and we'll call it good. And then just refill my own inventory. Uh, best place to get landfill, seeing as I've been doing a lot of ocean filling, uh, up here by my infinite miners. Yeah, we got lots. <laughs> we really do have a lot of landfill. More than we can even store, that's fine. I don't know what to do with it. So this was like an old inventory set that I forgot to pick up. So we'll just take it now. I shouldn't need my space suit. Famous last words. Alright, let's just rejigger my inventory back to normal. Make sure there's nothing dumb in here at least. Too many of those. Uh, I don't want those anymore. They're for uh, putting labels down, which is nice, but I also never use these. The, these, um, I was planning on like making more pathways. These are really good for running fast. Like, they go so fast. I just never remember to use them, so I think I'm just gonna get them out of my inventory. If you're wondering, I did set up some cool automated med pack manufacturing. It doesn't come up very often, but it is nice to have them. Um, I'll show it off. I know I did this off camera, I just forgot about it. Also, the bots are going to cover everything up for a bit anyway. So, back in my research area from the old days, we, uh, we upgrade med kits. So we get basic med kits, plastic, First aid kit, water and oil. 
So we just piped all that in. And actually, looks like I set it up pre for quester chests. So, you know, not very long term viable, but I mean, easily fixed nowadays. Um, and the first aid kits, what are they? I did have these automated long ago, but yeah, biomatter, that's the weird one. So we had a chest with just infinite biomatter, but it does get created automatically here with petroleum gas and oxygen. So this is fine. You'll always get more of these. And it just makes the basic first aid kits. And then we upgrade them, which should be automatic now. And then you need a fancy canister, which is definitely not automated. And those med packs with some gas to make the tier twos. And I don't think we can make the tier threes yet, but. Okay. Uh, this is how we make secure canisters, which we ran out of, which is why we don't have very many med packs. So, it's just glass. Well, this was silly. Recipe plastic, glass, heat, steel, copper. Plastic, glass, uh, copper was in there, heat shield was in there, something else. Steel, of course. Alright, so that'll automate that, which is something I probably should have done. And just in case you need these for anything else, I'll put them in a requester, or a passive provider. And you do get scrap out of it. Which, for now, right. I don't think there's any way we deal with scrap on Earth. Or Novus. I mean, we could. It's, it's just... Alright. I would like... It's all gonna come to my inventory for a second and then leave. Alright. Explosives, yeah, let's bring those. Okay, I feel like that was a nice little catch. So we'll once again make uh, lots of uh, med packs. I don't use them very often, but you know, it's because the biters that kill me tend to kill me in one hit, so it doesn't really make much difference. All right, uh, I guess we're gonna go, we're gonna go. I would like to get this done before midnight, which means I have to get moving. So we got a full rocket. Uh, the return trip already has enough fuel. It's got a. It's it's already built to return, so we don't even need to bring these cargo packages. This is for like the next, next cargo rocket. Also, there is a five percent chance that we fail to land, so you know, keep them XCOM odds up, baby. Let's just go. Remember how long it took to fly here when we used our spaceship. Uh, it's a little bit longer than that. All right, we're here. Got our inventory this time. We'll be offloading some of it. Until that's full. Alright. So, well, let's begin the bot network. Because that will give me a lot more access to getting things working uh, quickly. I would like robots, please. Um, Okay, now, one Roboport can only hold, like, 150 bots, so let's help them out a little bit here. Oh, I can't tell where they line up quite. I like to see the, the orange outline when it's, you know, perfectly linked. That's two. I know we're a little bit limited in water on this map, but it's fine. A 
I'm gonna make it line up. I don't care. Can't stop me. Why is that still not placed? Jeez. Trying to save room for water so I can pump it out if I need to. That's once it's gone, it's it's kind of gone. All right. Of course. Okay. Uh, a couple more, then we'll release the bots. even matter. Okay. So we've got a little network and remembering that the uranium is to the northwest and my proposed nuclear reactor is probably up there. That is the direction I will extend the network. Kind of nice to... I, li I like to... If I'm really feeling like I want to play cleanly, I like to set up the RoboPort network first because they've got the widest area. They don't need to be perfectly spaced or anything, but, you know, it just feels nice. And then you just build your base around them rather than build the base and then find you can't place these. Hey there, Nitzer. Well, I'm glad... Uh... I'm glad you can watch it without being stressed out. Um, boy, there's parts in today's stream that stressed me out too, as everything basically completely fell apart. But hey, we're we're making progress here late at night before uh, the end of the stream a little bit. Release the bots. The best part of any uh, any game is releasing the bots. Goodbye, free bots. Welcome to your new home. All right. Uh, I do need a few of those back, though, actually. Yeah. Could you spare one stack of construction blocks for myself? Alrighty, so... Let's have a quick look at our power system. The RoboPorts will definitely consume some, but once the bots start stop charging, it'll go down, and there's not much here that's going to consume bots for, for a while. We already lost... We brought 500 logistic bots, and one of them blew up before... <laughs> before we could even get recharged. Uh, it's hilarious. Hilariously bad. Oh, there's a, um, right. I preemptively set up a automated, um, logistics requesters long before I even had my bots, so. Thanks, bots. You're the best. I guess I should give them, at the very least, they kind of need a storage like a yellow box somewhere relatively central or they they tend to struggle just picking stuff up like that this is like the bot systems backup we should put something in it and look they're already like oh yes I need to put these somewhere here you go just to get rid of my junk okie doke next well we need we should like we should try to get these up unloaded correctly I'm pretty sure I specifically made some yellow warehouses for this specific task. You will just be upgraded and we'll mirror that. I'm not going to put any filters on them right this second. Um, actually, that. maximum coverage. Uh, you could certainly start organizing these. Um, not with a stack inserter, but a, a filter stack inserter. And I think in our orbital base, we probably will have to do that one of these days. Uh, to cargo land stuff automatically and then just filter it out smartly and then use that to count what's in there. It probably doesn't matter up here much, but this just gives it all the logistic system and, and that'll at least give them the opportunity to fix things if I mess up and die. Uh, alrighty. Well... You know, the goal is 
we can probably drop some modules off in all these. Oh, it already happened. Nice. Right, once they got hit the once they hit the logistics system, they just auto uh, auto connected all this stuff. That's great. So we're gonna want like a couple more mines to connect up these beacons, but otherwise, this place is pretty well set. Uh, I will fill in these like annoying little water pits that just make building harder. And I definitely need some water here for you know youth for production. But we can also cover up some of this to make building miners way easier. Nice to leave like a couple little squares where you can pump it out if you need it, but uh, this just means like building the actual miners is like 20 to 100 times easier. Um, not that we, we need nearly as much, but this will be way more. This is like super overkill, but the best kind of overkill, as I say. Uh, I should have just brought like 15 more uh, solar panels, too. Alright, well, let's get dangerous. Let me turn this back on now. Um, I think... I just got two of these accidentally. Yeah, we're gonna go build a, a nuclear plant. Or right, we're gonna try. We're gonna die trying. So I need to bring the stuff that a nuclear power plant needs. Probably some more pipes would be good. And I know we're not doing a we're not doing a two by four. We're we're doing a two by two. So we won't need near as much of these. I think that's enough for the uh, reactor part, if I remember correctly. And we will need a lot of pipes. Who knows where the pipes ended up? Oh, I saw them at the bottom just as I closed. Oh, that's auto logistics. Thanks. Thanks, auto logistics. You're the best. Best friend. Uh, we will need those centrifuges. Liquid storage tank, super important. More power connectors. More roboports, a bazillion turbines. Might as well bring. No, no, we'll leave the the mining processing for a little bit later. Don't need flare stacks for the nuclear one. We will want maybe the bots to get the Coverex and fuel cells moving around, but it's in the logistics systems now, so it should be fine. Alright, I think... I think we have everything we're... Oh no, the pumps, yeah. More pipes. And more pumps. Alright, that might be enough. Probably run out of, like, electric poles or something. Hey, some more bots. Hello, friend bots. More poles. Try this again. Good night, Dark Angel. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good snooze. I imagine today's stream may have been additional, it's like super snoozy. Alright, so I need a place for a nice reactor. Near the lake, because pumping water long distances stinks. I think we'll just do it like right to the north of the lake. We might bulldoze this to make it nice and flat. The uranium's pretty close by for a little bit of production, Coverex enrichment, and then just pump it in. Don't really want to cover up the scene necessarily, but everything other than that is fair game. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about putting pumps on this little tiny thing. I should have brought a bit more landfill. Uh, so I'm just going to make like a straight line. I don't want to lose too much of my lake, just in case I need way... I did not mean to do that, but I don't think I can undo it. If anyone knows how to delete landfill after you place it accidentally, please let me know, but I don't think there's any way to do that. So we need a lot of water, um, and I'm not joking. Um, there's a reason I did this. <laughs> we need a lot of water. Um, now, 
In theory, these steel pumps move it at 18,000 per second, which is equivalent to around 13 or 14 normal pumps. So, you know, there's that. Just nuke it. Uh, nuking it probably just makes more concrete, honestly, but I like your gusto. Oops. So this is going to be my water storage. I don't really need to store a lot of water, but I'm going to. Uh, so, so this is happening. Now there's a there is a very strong argument to only use uh, underground pipes. It's better for water flow. I don't know exactly how it works, but water is just so jank. Um, it just turns out that underground pipes count as one pipe as far as the game is concerned, whereas if you do overground pipes, each tile counts as a pipe for tr fluid transfer. So, without knowing exactly how it's coded, it's a bit of a mystery, but. Even though you don't need to do underground pipes and you're kind of wasting material, I believe it's generally better for the game to run it like that. And it looks nice. It looks beautiful. Hey, okay, so that's going to be our water. I'll put, uh, I'm not sure where yet, but I'll be putting pumps to push it out fast. So they will be power requirements here, which I guess we might as well do. Oh, no. It's just too big for one, um, one substation. We'll try to keep the symmetry, though. Someone will be happy. Uh, let's make sure my... No, we'll do that one last, maybe. Well, we can look at the blueprint. First, hold on. There's a there's some stuff we got to move. And by move, I mean detonate. I love bots with dynamite. So much fun. Don't like that. Don't like that uh, cliff. Bam. All right, that's nice and clear. Actually, you know what? This planet is pretty nice for building on. There's no trees. It's like flat. There's there's nothing in the way. You can just build, except for some cliffs and you know, some water once in a while. But not very much water either. Rocks and wa rocks and cliffs. Okay. So. The reason I need a lot of space. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is probably going to work. You want to keep it pretty close to the water so that pressure is easy. That does not cover up the core seam up there. I can change the belting and I can change where the storage tanks and all that go. Because I have too many, probably. They've got roboports that I built, but I'll delete those and build them somewhere else. Cool. Get to work. And the best part is I don't have to even build it myself. The robots deal with most of it. <laughs> Blueprints are great. Especially when you've got robots. Okay, so this is not... I actually don't have red belts anymore. I've changed to blue belts, so I can change that. Uh, this is the... Somehow I've duplicated... When I put it down, I must have been holding right. And it like... Where it could fit two, it put two. Normally that won't be a problem, but... Yeah, some things got doubled. Oops. It's funny. Uh, right. I think... I 
think that'll be enough. I, I really, you know, I really, uh, I really made the, the backup liquid storage maybe a bit too huge. What I will do is make them symmetrical, though. Uh, this is... Oh, this is bad. <laughs> oh, some of this got really messed up. I have to manually fix some, some jank. No, that's supposed to be... That's supposed to be there. That's in, and that's out. Okay, so just we, we're missing the belts. I think that's all I'm missing. Oh, they just have regular inserters. That's fine. We don't actually. I can just build a few of those probably. Should have brought. I forgot that the recipe had like regular inserters, but I don't want to. They they have logic connected to them, so it's kind of nice to keep it. We'll put one more uh, playlist on while I'm letting my bots do these. That last one was kind of jazzy. Let's go with some Rebellion. Final Fantasy II Rebellion. Ah, we got the red inserters. So I think we're just missing the belts and underground belts. It's so nice when it just auto-builds like that. It's, oh yeah, with these. Um, also finish that off. Smooth! All right. There is a central RoboPort. So make sure it's connected in. Or it was already connected to the grid. We're good. So it's got power. It's got RoboPort access for pretty much all of it. Uh, ins and outs. So this is used fuel cells out which for now just needs somewhere to stash them i don't really care about it very much it won't get very many anyway and then right now the right side oh, it's a bit janked um that's fuel cells in I don't think that second red line does anything. Let me, let me double check my blueprint. I've, I messed something up. Oh no, it had two. Oh, one is out, one is in. Right, right, right. It's meant to be scalable. So it's... Top one out. This one in. And then it would continue if you were... If you didn't have this in the way. And you were just putting another 2x2 two two beside it. Very easy to tell. All right, um, can I? Yeah, it's, it's not gonna be super fast, but I can just use red belts here. Oh, it also needs uh, my cool arithmetic combinator. Not, it really doesn't need that, but I'll, I'll keep it like I had it on the other base because I already know it works. And it needs a bunch of undergrounds. Yeah, I, sh I should have brought the red belts with me on the on the ship. I forgot. Okay, while I'm crafting some uh, some some red belts, let's go get to the uranium. There's some uranium stuff to get started with. Won't take very long, I don't think. I guess I don't need it in my, my logistics network. Oh, I forgot something. I forgot something important. And I even mentioned it earlier in the stream and then no one reminded me that I said that. Does anyone happen to remember the gimmick with uranium? 
see pretty quick. Not just the damage. No, that's not what I mean. Let me put down that mine that I'm pretty sure I have. It's not my inventory. I'll be back. You've got a little bit longer to remember what I forgot. Is it right? So we need a bunch of drills. Should bring the I got the centrifuges already, so we can technically do the um, Culverex enrichment. Uh, I could get the fuel primed here a little bit too. And to be honest, I think the plan all along was just to have the bots fly it in anyway. So I'm lazy like that. Easy. And then I don't have to worry about it. Alright, well. I need some more resources to finish my, uh... My fancy, uh... Reactor. But, the immediate problem that comes to me... Is to do with uranium. However we want to set it up. It needs acid. You cannot mine uranium without sulfuric acid. And I totally forgot. Because I don't usually mine it. So. <sighs> that means oil. And a little bit of iron, but sulfur is just petroleum gas. Want some water, but that's nothing. So, is there, conveniently, a little bit of oil nearby? We don't even need very much. It's like an orange square. Like these. There's a whole bunch over there. 1.9 million. I got nothing to worry about. We're fine. It's a bit of a distance. That's all right. Put on our jetpack. And let's go. You can just hold the mouse button down as long as there's no trees in the way. It just auto places it. It's great. We're going to fly by some Inversite mines. Probably need to check my map. But. Oh, I see it. It's got to go a little bit northwest. There we go! What country does the patch look like? Could be mid Brazil. Could be China. There's that little, like, like Korea would be right here. And then like, it's not quite, but it's, you know, it's not too far, right? Uh, Probably some other ones. I actually, I think there might be East Africa might have a country kind of shaped like that at the Horn of Africa, maybe. That, like, uh, Ethiopia or something? I don't know. I don't know countries. Don't ask me. I came all the way out here with great plan. <sighs> I need some pipes. Okay. Just so glad there's no biters here. Even though this is a bit of a pain. Just remember, there's no biters. So we don't have to worry about defending or anything. It's just very nice. Uh, the emergency crafting station. Please make me all the pipes. Can find some iron for you, probably. China or Africa? Wait, yeah, not maybe not all Africa, but yeah, <laughs> some country in Africa. I was going for. <laughs> uh, I was watching a video, something about a east coast of continents tends to be like greener than west coast or something. I don't know. Something about just the way. Um, you know, the, the, the continental plates, like, move around over years and shape around oceans or something. I don't know. Weird stuff. 
Iron. Give me some iron. I mean, not, we didn't actually have a lot of iron there, but... Alright. Oh. And... Bots. Get rid of some stuff. I'm already getting junk. I don't want in my inventory, please. Thank you, bots. Okay. We're gonna need more underground pipes, because we have to bring oil way back. Uh... We know we have underground pipes. It's just seeing them. Do we want to put modules in anything? Yeah, we'll do productivity modules in the oil, because I don't think we're going to need as much as we're going to get. Uh, underground, underground. Okay, I will need chemical plants a little earlier than anticipated, and I didn't bring any oil refineries, because, you know, I didn't think we would be getting oil. So I have to build a couple of those. Ah, there we go. Okay. Don't forget what you're building, Blue. Brain power turn on. It is, I've been streaming a long time, so forgive me. Yeah, it's a bunch of pipes. I built all those pipes so that I could build a few more pump jacks. We've got five, maybe 10 will be enough. Ooh, running out of engines or motors. sure there's a few in here. Look at that. Alright, there we go. Hopefully I've got everything I need for this. Shouldn't be too bad. We're building more pipes because, you know, whatever. I don't really care. Just let them, just let them be. So we gotta get the oil pretty close to the uranium, honestly. No need to take it anywhere else. And there they are. I didn't count. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. There's about ten patches. I did pretty good. Maybe eleven, but it's pretty close. I actually... If I made exactly enough um, pump jacks without counting, I deserve a prize. I'm not 100% convinced, but we'll see. The exact number just automatically big brain blue. Pretty good at video games. Just, just don't watch earlier in the VOD. <laughs> just only watch that one little line. Everything. Everything else was was worse before that. Oh, we can't quite can't I hate it when you just like one tile off of a single connector, but whatever. Uh, and then I missed that one anyway. You know what? Combo. <laughs> okay. So we got a bunch of uh, oil pump jacks. We're going to make them all 16% better for more power, which is not going to be a problem soon. And therefore, it'll just last longer, basically. Because we're not going to use very much, but they can go slow. We just... We just need, uh, we need a lot. Okay, I'm going to try to get all the oil here to go to the right. I like to start with the way out sometimes. It's a bit easier. Trying to use undergrounds, but not worrying too much. And I might put a, a steel pump, because this is a fairly long distance. that to connect sure. so some pipes but using some undergrounds get this all here and uh, yeah I've decided to put a pump at both ends one here as we're sending it towards our base and then one near the base to help pull it and hopefully that makes it work but like I said um, liquids are weird Let's go. Jet set Ankylo. Oh, I'm still in a waste of 
Oh, it resets it when you bring up the map. You know, that's not bad. We... Right there. Maybe one more. And then down from here. You know, that was pretty dang good. Alright, so what I'll do is I'll have the crude oil in one storage tank. Oh, right, and I wanted to put a pump here just to help it out. It shouldn't need two pumps, but I never know what to do with liquids, so... It's not like pumps are very expensive. 50 kilowatts. Okay, so we need sulfuric acid. Unfortunately, there's no iron over here, so there's... Maybe I shouldn't... Changed my mind. Actually, I'm still going to do that. But... Uh... Just remember that for later. So many, so many uh, fixes to this build in the middle of the build. Just little tweaks. Remember this spot where we just go right through an iron patch? Boy, that was convenient. Um, I have no idea how many I need. It's probably like one. But, um... I didn't bring my beacons, because of course not. This is only in case I need to do more future building here, but it's just going to be a little baby um, iron mine. If I put the productivity modules in, they'll last a really long time. I don't know how much I need to smelt that many either, to be honest. Probably not a lot. Uh, I didn't pick up my furnaces yet, because of course, because it was iron mining. So we need the iron to add to the sulfuric acid. There's... We're, all, we're also going to need water, which there might not be any of other than this lake, so... I might have to rechange my plan again. Oh, Blue, just make up your mind. I'm trying. I'm just trying to make it efficient. Um... Yeah, they're the bottom of this one. Yeah. Okay. Bunch of bunch of uh, industrial furnaces. Whatever. Just bring a bit of everything now, because I don't trust myself. Just bring all the machines. Well, at least at this point, if I stop the stream, you know what I'm trying to do. <laughs> I can finish it off stream. Trying to go. Went too far again. Okay. So, I still didn't bring the beacons. Ah, I quit. These things are actually quite fast. Uh, especially once you've got a beacon in them. Uh, and we're not going to be doing any fancy, efficient smelting. We're just doing the cheap, boring one. Because I say so. And I'll put a speed beacon behind them. And... I'm just going to keep it simple. If I need multiple red outs, we can. Iron in, iron in, or in, iron plates out. Of course.
There's just there's just no end to factorial though, uh, Robert. You you got to stop at some point. There's power poles down here somewhere, right? So let's connect it. Easy, beautiful. Okay, so that'll start some iron slowly. Then I already forgot the recipe. Oh, right, I was going to build oil refineries while I was flying around. But that's fine. Um, sulfuric acid, that's the one that needs water. Uh, I was forgetting about water. Water is such a non-problem most places. All right. I was going to actually turn the oil into gas, into sulfur, add the iron here, and then just underground pipe sulfuric acid over, which was definitely my plan. But it turns out my plan was bad because I need water, so we're just going to belt the iron half across the planet. Engage warp drive. Zigzag. Serpentine. Don't lose track. Ah! Too far, too far, too far. Actually, not too far. It's fine. Uh, where are we? We're right by the uranium. So we still need to go a fair bit to the right. There was a plan! <laughs> Just maybe wasn't a very good plan. Okay, just try it. Well, we ran out of blue belts. It's fine. I got more blue belts. Iron will make it to there, and then it's going to come down towards the water and the power line. Where we will... Cats? I hear you up to no good back there. Mm-hmm. Better not be scratching anything you're not allowed to scratch on. Cat tank, you so It's middle of the night. You know, he's getting excited. Probably mad no one's in bed. All right, we came back for resources, belts, also beacons. Yep, we say hello to everyone on chat, Cat Angulo. Okay, beacons, but not belts. Please tell me I brought a bunch of belts. A decent amount of belts, that's good. All right. Let's just get rid of those. Just throw it on the ground. It's that time of night. Can Ankylo's getting mad. Blue Ankylo's getting sad. Okay, iron makes it to here. Oil. Also, might as well just go all the way there, right? So I was being. Yes, because I was planning on turning the oil into acid in the same place, but I forgot that it all needs water. So it'd be better to put the oil um, processing, you know, same kind of place the or iron is. You win. Oh no, I babooped. That means I was underneath it when I was trying to place it. Alright, how much farther do we want to go? Okay, that's good. We will put oil processing over there. Alright, pretty close to the water. Try to stay away from the nuclear reactor a little bit. Do 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 do. This is how I know it's a good song. All right. We really didn't need to belt under a tiny rock, but. All right. So let's figure out what we're doing down here. More. We'll maybe use this tiny little lake over here. We won't need very much water for this, I don't think. 
that. It does need electricity though. All right, so oil is in fact going to go into a large storage tank. Yay, it's making it. Maybe I should do that pump thing again though, just to make sure. But it's probably redundant. But hey, I will try to prevent problems as best I can, even if it only works half the time. <sighs> okay, so we need an oil refinery. I built a couple. Boom. Space, boom. All I care about is petroleum gas. Actually, it looks like this would be better on that tile. Alrighty. Oil to refinery. Even lines up. And there's even space to build a couple more. Water. Bam. It's beautiful. It works. All we get out of it is gas, which is chemical plant. Just needs to be a couple squares away with a gap. I'm just going to put four for fun. No idea how many I actually need. And we're trying to make sulfur. All right. So we'll do petroleum first. And for petroleum, we'll just connect it there. This might be, this is too close. Just hold on that for a second. Add a little bit more space just in case. Piping for dummies. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I could have done it without... Oh, well. Because I can just underground it all the way back here. That would have been smart. Whatever, this can just be a line now. Honestly, yeah. I mean, it's nice to have a little bit more space, but it could have been more compact. Uh, what this does mean is maybe you could easily squeeze a little beacon in there. Or like a power substation. Yeah, that sure makes it easy to connect everything up. I'll say uh, I'll say that much. Maybe this one won't go full speed, but whatever. We're going to burn so much power on this planet for no reason. I actually might not be able to run these in productivity mode. But uh, we're just going to start like that. So, you could math it out. You're going to make 90 gas, assuming we've got lots of oil, which we probably have lots of oil. 90 gas every five seconds and then we're going to consume 60 every two seconds times four so we have way too much um, of these guys so three is still probably too much but all right sulfur this is where what iron is needs to connect up we can do same thing this time we're making acid. Quick, Jesse. Bring me the iron. I gotta watch that show again. Actually, what I really need to watch is Better Call Saul, because I have fallen way behind. Alright, inserters. Bam, bam, bam. Outserters. Boom, boom, boom. Acid. 
Right, I forgot about the water. Ugh, why does everything need water? <laughs> I remembered this time. And it's lined up. Perfectly. Like, legitimately, that's not very bad. <laughs> that's pretty good. Um, that's about as good as I've ever done, anyway. Acid out. Boom. We got the yellow stuff. Looks delicious. build up in there for a bit because now we gotta pump it all the way back to the uranium mines <laughs> it's great uh, it's coming in at a pretty good speed these should probably be stack inserters just the way I'm using them that way they can move more at once keeps the sulfur going Keeps the productivity up. I guess I could productivity up them. I'm kind of getting in the way of my cool pipe. Could still do it. I said this was the planet of power, though. Worth it. Yeah, it didn't make a big difference. Oh, wait, that's no good. There, perfect. Uh, do I have any bots? I always accidentally pick some bots up when you do that. All right, so then... I had to do some shenanigree here. I actually ran out of underground pipes and I need like another hundred, so. That's not good. Please tell me I got a bunch of underground steel pipes. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, you can sort of mix them at cosmic water uh, in space water. It's weird. Um, I'm not sure why this works, but the recipe in space for space cosmic water is actually water and oil. Lubricant being mostly oil, right? So, yeah, perfect. Alright, so that should keep this all working. Looks like we're probably limited by sulfur production right now. So you probably need... I don't know the exact numbers. I'm not going to pretend I ever knew them. But more sulfur producers than sulfur acceptors. And it looks like... These get limited, so... I'm going to build one more refinery. I guess I could put them side to side. I might be able to get three on one, um, one, uh, whatchamacallit, beacon. They don't need the, the gap like, uh, normal. They only need the, the gap like that when you're doing, um, the other outputs, light oil and heavy oil, where they've got three different outputs that get all kept caught up with each other. Uh, can we technically? Oh yeah, easily actually. Okay. So we'll get three instead of two for the same price mostly. Because it's still on the beacon, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is of course messed up my awesome water connectors a bit, but you know we'll, we'll figure it out.
It was meant to be like this all along, so. The true awesome connectors. Anyway, that'll probably still not be enough, but whatever. Uh, okay, we've got the sulfuric acid. We want to start shipping this back up. And I want to increase my iron mining a bit when we get up there. Let's try to sink it up here a little. It's just, I find it a lot easier to follow the pipes when they kind of line up with a belt or generally match together a bit. It's just really easy to lose them if you don't have some sort of organization, you know? And it's such a straight line here that this will work just fine. Although, I still have to scratch my nose every now and then. Looks like we need more iron, that's for sure. Oh, wait, 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 we went way too far, hold on. <laughs> yeah, sulfuric acid doesn't need to go that far. It just needs to get to the to the nuclear. I went the wrong, I went the long way. Kind of forgot where I was going. We're just going here. Okay, this was dumb. Why did you guys warn me? I was, I was like, I was thinking of going back to the oil patch. <laughs> Following the oil pipeline to the oil patch. No, this is, this is completely bad. It does make sense to follow your belts, but only if you're going to the same place. I think we just turn here, basically. Uh, we'll do it via dumb piping. Could have done a... I could have just turned it and used an underground belt, but... I don't want it. Alright. And with that, we can connect... We can get the uranium mining started. Hey, it only took us like an extra hour. And it's still not totally done. Because I want to patch these up a little bit. Alright, that should, that should speed up their output a bit. Fair amount. Actually, up, well, a, a ridiculous amount, honestly. Um, it's not just 60% faster. It was at minus 80% and then swung to plus 60%. So, uh, that is five and a half times faster than it used to be going. Alright, let's try to get this uranium done. I don't know if I'm going to have enough in me to get the cryonite done tonight. But the base will probably have power by the time I'm done here. Maybe. Honestly, don't bet on it. Remember that the bots can do anything. Anything you can do, the bots can do better. Trying to trying to build in the middle of a uranium patch kind of sucks. All right. I mean that's lots of uranium, right? I I don't know. We probably should do more, but is that? Can't quite see where the edge of the beacon is. Yeah, that's good. I'll just say everything that can run off of one beacon is fine. Bots, are you trying to kill me? No, I just got too close. Sometimes the bots will put uranium in your backpack. And then you die. It's not that bad. Though. All right. Uranium. Oh, right. Acid. Yep, yep, yep. Someone was yelling at me.
And the one thing that's nice, I did remember, is that uh, these, I think all of these kinds of miners share liquid along the sides. Are you... Did I forget to put a pump on the output there? That might be the problem. Why? That's underground. Okay. That was just my own fault again. Pretty standard. Alright, we got uranium. Nice. Look at all the good green stuff. Okay, we're gonna bring that a bit closer. See if I can get this turned into some... Uh, Yummy, yummy uranium power. You won. I'm not sure, maybe just above the, uh, the old oil mines, the old oil drills. So we'll bring that in there. Uh, let's get some power going though. I think we're probably hitting the limits. Well, our limits are a bit higher, but um, we definitely are using a lot more power now than we used to, anyway. Oh, no, is this... No, no, this isn't going yet. <laughs> I was going to say, it could have started when I wasn't even looking at it, but I didn't build all of the, uh, the underground belts that get it started, or the splitters. So we need one red splitter. Oh, I need... I need to pick up some junk. Ah, not not quite so easy. This is why we didn't do it earlier. It's single cylinder engines. Single cylinder engines and iron gear wheels are the things I'm going to be missing. But I'm pretty sure I brought some. Hey there, Sarah. One of the oil refineries isn't working? Well, I'll have a look while I'm building the next stuff. Uh, uh, I need to move some inventory. We didn't need quite as many belts. Need a little bit of space here. Um, turns out we didn't need too many of these. All right, it's all good until I run out and then need to build it back. Um, that. Came here for iron gears. Don't leave home without your iron gears. All right, and then I just want to start queuing up. Uh, still gonna take stuff I don't have. Pretty sure I got iron beams as well. Yeah. Start that again. Uh, one, two, three. We don't even need too many, but... Oh, I'm pretty sure I have single cylinder engines as well. I just keep forgetting where everything is. It's just not sorted, right? It's just a disaster trying to find stuff. Yeah. Alright. This time for sure. There, that's much, much easier to build. Don't mind the gigantic mess. Uh, we'll just build a few more. It's fine. Okay, I'll go check my, my oil refinery while those are building, and then the reactor will come online. Oh, do -do -do -do. Uh, oil refinery. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I did all the input, but I forgot to put the output. Alright, bots dying as they do. Frost needed 32 of those, actually. I don't know if I queued up enough. Well, you get double what you build for, for, um, for undergrounds. And then one red splitter should be built. And that should be it. We should have ourselves some power. Once this gets all cooking. If you've never seen a nuclear reactor power up, look forward to it. 
we'll just take a minute here. Remembering, of course, that if you're playing vanilla, it's a slight bit different. Um, like, one of the big ones here is our, um, our uranium fuel cells have 50 gigajoules. A vanilla fuel cell has, I think, 10 gigajoules. But you get way more per uranium. So, we get very few s s actual items, but they last a bit longer. Overall, it's weaker than vanilla, but um, I'm not going to do the math exactly. I just... Hmm, this is going to take a little while. All we really need is this one. Robots? Why would... You, why, those aren't even connected. <laughs> you go everywhere except for the one I want you to go to. So things to do before I close the stream. I got certainly more than enough sulfuric acid. We've got the uranium mines. I just need the uranium processing. And this should work. So, uranium processing. Well, the first step's pretty easy. I don't think we'll need a ton of centrifuges. I'm gonna use... I don't know. I'm gonna put four. We will... I don't think we need four. But, uh... We're just gonna do the original processing. Which should probably be... On the far side here. Uh, this is gonna happen a, a bit. Funnily enough, if you are in possession of something dangerous, like uranium, as soon as you pick it up, as long as there's nothing left in your inventory, you don't take any damage. So, you know. Pro strat. Alright, raw uranium in. And we end up with a mix on the output of... Just a bunch of stuff, so we'll have to filter that all out. And I will... Because I'm... Crazy, really, honestly, at this point. I will still do the, the modern processing, which... In, can't... Yeah, I can put that there. Uh, which will be maximum productivity speed combo, because... Uh, I'm gonna bank on us making enough... Uh, power that this will be okay. And I'll split so they use the full belt. Yeah, just put it right in your hands. It's definitely safer than your backpack. That's true. <laughs> Alright, let's build the rest of this thing. Hopefully we'll get this powered up. There we go. It's gonna start, I think. Here we go. Yeah. I should probably just... We're not gonna extend this ever, so... Go back to the beginning of your slide. Alright, but we got a little bit into the system, and the rest will get in there now, I think. Yeah. Uh, and as they go by, the reactors will start pulling fuel cells in, and they'll slowly start to warm up. The red bar is the duration of one fuel cell, which is a while. Like, it'll take a while. But you do burn through a fair amount of fuel just getting it to temperature, so the first round is a bit wasteful. Um, conveniently, by having them in a square, you get two adjacent bonus for each. You get 25% more output for every adjacency bonus. So they all get plus 50%, which just means that your fuel makes more power, more heat overall, which is great. Uh, so the way this works is you put uranium in. It could continue on if you had a, a tile of another one beside it, but that's not the plan. Red belt, red inserter puts it in, and there's just a cycle here, a circle. It just goes all the way around the outside, and it stays in there. The splitter only takes out uh, used up uranium fuel, which is the output of once these get finished. While they're in here, there are there's one inserter for each of the four reactors. I've got them wired up to logic, which will only let them pull in if I have less steam than I can hold, which will turn into power. That's not default, that's just me being silly. But I do think it's a neat way to preserve uranium a bit longer. I'm pretty happy with it, even though it needs some more testing. I haven't put water in the system yet, so it won't work. But that's something I forgot about that I need to do. And then the output, and it's very careful that the way this works, because of how the this red inserter will always put the uh, uranium on the inside track, and then the used cells will always end up on the outside track. So one will never back up the other. Um, so it's, it's a pretty clever design. I, I think that's pretty smart. 
Um, but yeah, I gotta get some water in there, which is really close by, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Oops. Now, I don't... Actually, I think I've learned that you definitely need more water pressure than I was putting into my system back on my home base. I think I only had two pumps of water coming in. And I'm not even sure this is enough actual offshore pumps. So I'm definitely going to double up what I used to do. And we'll see if that helps. Oh, right. But the idea was to not have them share as much. Um, just because water dynamics with their split... Whenever there's a split like this junction here, water gets a bit weird. Like, honestly... Like, ideally, each of these lanes would just have its own pump and its own input. And they will probably work more efficiently. But, I, you know, I think that's a bit too much. Anyway, the water is max right now. And we'll see what happens as these things eventually get over 415. And then the water will start being consumed, turned into steam. They don't go directly to the turbines, though, because I put a little bridge here. They'll fill up. And once these storage tanks are, f well, once they've got steam in them, the pump will actually put them in the turbines immediately. But the turbines won't use the power unless you're out of other power sources. Like, it's a low priority power compared to solar and wind and stuff. So for me, the steam will bank up while there's no draw. And the uranium will just keep consuming fuel, keep making steam... Until there's so much steam, and it, it's a little bit of math, I forget the number, but it's a uh, combinator and then 50k. So if if this, the, the, the storage tank with the wire and this storage tank with the green wire, if those two tanks have a combined amount of 50,000 steam in them, which is generally averaged across their bank, then these things will turn on. But once it's over 50,000, it'll stop accepting fuel. Which will still make a bunch of more steam while they're hot. But eventually they'll cool off because no like they'll keep building up more steam and not getting more fuel. Eventually they'll shut off. Hopefully before these things hit 200,000 you waste the steam. And then while it's just sitting there slowly getting consumed in the power. Um, the fuel just circles around waiting. Once it goes too low it turns back on and heats everything back up. It's... I think I'm pretty happy with it, but it really needs to be stress test to see if this actually works. But, um, should be turning on. Yeah, right there. Bam. We just hit the 415 temperature, which sends water to be heated. Currently low temperature because the heat exchangers take a while for the heat to get all the way out. Um, this kind of, I don't know how these work exactly either. The nuclear reactor outputs heat in the corners to these pipes that we've put down. And the pipes spread it around too, but I don't know how that works exactly. So I think the boilers that are close to the reactors heat up the fastest and the ones the further away just take a while. But meanwhile, the uranium just keeps heating up the, the reactor and we start making more and more steam as long as the water can keep up with it and it should start filling up the tanks. Yeah, we've already got a decent start. And if the power bank needs it, and right now... We're, we're consuming 30 megawatts of power, but our grid doesn't need very much. Only 30, well, it's starting at nighttime, I guess, is coming. Yeah, we're, we're losing the solar panels now, so the steam turbines are cranking up. Steam engines are our coal, or uh, right now it's our imported solid fuel, which will probably stop. And then the uranium will be self-sufficient in a second. Assuming we can uh, finish that, which... But I wanted to show you the power. So we should be good on power. Like this, now that it's heated up, this should be about a gigawatt at max. These guys, well, it'll be 820 uh, megawatts technically. But but I can probably add a couple more in if I need to. we got to finish our uh, uranium processing. So right now we're just getting ore into junk. Mostly junk. Uh, what I like to do is... I'm kind of a fan of warehouse... Um, sorting. So I'm going to do that again. Probably not necessarily most efficient, but it's, it's cool. So everything just goes in there. 
that keeps the line moving, looks simple enough. And from here, we will output different things. So, like stone and iron, we can probably use to make landfill or something. I don't really want to send the iron back to get smelted. It's not very much. Uh, for now, this is a this is a temporary long-term solution that's easy, but not particularly intelligent. But sometimes those are the best solutions. So stack filter inserters, we're going to say only pull out iron ore on one and only pull out stone on the other. And if you ever want to do something with those, they're sorted and ready to go. Meanwhile, the good stuff stays in here. And hey, we got our first 235. It's a bit hard to get. Um, it, it's, it's like a 7% chance per process, so you don't get very much. But... I also happen to know that I have a lot that we imported. So once that gets in there, we'll build up some 235. Looks like we would actually need more than the four centrifuges. I thought this might be enough, but I was clearly completely wrong. Not even close. Why don't I... Uh, rotated rather than flipped. I don't know if there's a button. Like, R rotates. Is there a flip button? Yeah. F flips it like, left to right. I guess that's what I wanted. No, not quite. I can just rotate it. It's fine. It's the uh, inserters aren't going the right direction. Alright, they, they should be fine. Uh, yeah, so we need... Splitter. i get rid of that uranium in a second. Yeah, I, I, I definitely miscounted how much uranium we were getting in. I think in my home base, we only get it from the core fragments, and they don't give you very much uranium ore. So, like, two centrifuges is enough to cover that. On the other hand... We have a proper uranium mine, even though it's only, uh, like, five or... No, I think it's seven miners or something. But, yeah, these the, the, the centrifuge is pretty slow. Anyway, this is a pretty good value for one beacon, so I'm not going to be too mad about that. That'll that'll keep things moving. All right, so this stuff. Let me let me just pop back to my Covarex enrichment back home, just to remind myself what I did. It's not super complicated. So if you just look at a snapshot here where we've got essentially uranium getting smelted and then the rocks and stones have pulled off just like we're currently doing, this is kind of the system that I'm planning on doing except not nearly so long. Uh, we're just going to need like, I think four-ish and then I need a way of counting how much enriched uranium we have to have it pull off only if there's too much. Uh, and there's got to be ways to do that rather than having 30 of them and, and then one that pulls off. <laughs> that was just a funny way to do it. Which which works for massive... If you have tons of uranium and you need tons of power, this is maybe a way to do it. But we, we, don't, we definitely don't on the moon we're on, I don't think. So... Just remember that the recipe is... 3 garbage in, 30 expensive in, and you get no good ones out, just garbage, rocks, and one extra good one. And you still want that productivity module, though, for the production, though, I think. So, yeah, let's, let's do the same basic setup. Um, doesn't really matter which one's which, but we'll have good one, bad one. Just have to clean up the inventory there because they the very first couple items that go in don't follow your rules, so they fill up with junk. Okay, bit of space and then like four. Maybe I could double dip a beacon again to get eight. 
Let me let me make sure I've got the recipe down. Oh, there was one thing I was thinking of doing for this. Is instead of having them adjacent like usual, which means I'll need a little bit more on the beacons, you could have them fill each other in like pairs or something. So every time they finished a cycle, they'd share their um, their Kovarex with each other before they put it out. Or most of it anyway. I'm gonna I'm gonna try this. This seems like it might work, but it also might be a disaster. <laughs> um I did these wrong actually. Um but it's fine. Because knowing where things are gonna go. You input a lot more of the bright green stuff than the dark green stuff. So you want the fast inserter close for those. I don't know if this will work. Should be doing more blueprinting here one way or the other. Um, let's power it up. We will need one more tile there. Something like that's where I want it. And then we can use a long inserter to get the relatively re rarely called dark green stuff. Power. All right. Yeah, so they need a lot of uranium. Let's, we're gonna slow them down because I think, I don't think there's a world where you don't wanna have them as productive as possible. I'm gonna see if I could just mirror it rather than having two of these, but let me. Oh, let me think for a second. Uh, Yeah, I think the stack inserters back and forth will actually do a pretty good job of keeping their um, 235 full all the time. And the idea is you don't want them to stop. You want... We just need to find a way to get the excess out. And we also need to filter the stone again. So, what I can do is... Give it a couple extra squares. Splitter. We're going to filter. Oh, we can only do one at a time. Well, we'll, we'll deal. Wait. Wait a second. Is this the most genius thing ever? I already have one sorter. I don't even need... I hadn't even thought of that. This already gets rid of the stone. The excess stone. It puts it in a giant bank. Ooh, this feels kind of clever. I like that. That'll keep it going a long time. I was going to do, like, splitters and then having it, like, rejoin on more splitters, but, like, this is the ultimate splitter. It doesn't care how much stuff is in it, mostly. Alright, I feel like that, that was a win. Alright, well now I'm feeling much better about mirroring this. Because... Um, well... Yeah, yeah, no, it'll be fine. Just the three. Hmm... Whatever. You've been returned to sender. All 
Alright. That's how much of the good uranium we have to spare. Oh, wow. Wow, that's really nice. Even one, one power pole for everything, too. Oh, I have a bunch of extra. Okay. So I think a longer line of these would work, but I'd need more beacons. Like like six by six or something maybe would be nice. That's still probably more than we want. Um, so this will, if we leave it alone, eventually fill up the ever-increasing amount of regular uranium from the mine will eventually upgrade into uranium-235. We'll get more out of it than we put in. Oh, right, this needs to uh, go the right direction. Honestly, the output's pretty slow. I'd still do it on a... I'd still prefer a, a splitter. A correct joiner. It's like the beeping heart in The Legend of Zelda. I don't know if there's a way to do this one horizontal line with using the beacon in the middle like this, but... Seems alright. Yeah, so the idea is... If these machines pull spare uranium-235 using the stack inserters back and forth, they should always be taking their output, putting it in their input under priority. Or the, their neighbors... It'll still end up on the belt a little, but almost everything on the belt will be excess, I think. Well, I'm not sure if it makes much difference, honestly, but because they need 30 input, I don't want to wait for a couple fast inserters to do it. I want them with stack inserters, so they're always running, and that if we start pulling things off, which is what we need to do next... We never run out of Kovarex for running the, this. Now, I think the way I might do it is actually one more output, but using a... Uh, it could be any of these. It could be just another um, filter inserter. But the idea would be instead of just running it automatically, it will only output if... Um, we need a little bit of logic. Like, only if there's more than box? Like, this won't even turn on for quite a while. But, like, eventually the 235 will back up. And then this lane will run. I, I think that's easy enough. I don't want to make this super complicated. Uh, we want it to enable if there's more than 10. So it shouldn't turn on right now. And anything in there, we're just going to clear out for use in the grinder. Yeah. Now, this isn't going to make a ton of 235. Like, it's pretty slow. Slow enough that I might want to copy it. I mean, I could, I could shift it all over one. Sure, why not? I don't know how much I'm actually going to need. But this is pretty easy to upgrade. I don't know if it matters how much uranium you're holding, but we'll find out. Clear out these lanes with mismatched stuff in them. Uh... Something like that. Everything's back to working almost. Ran out of some inserters again. Also, I, I hear the beeping. Alright, now it'll take a little bit longer because we have to fill up six more uh, machines. I 
I guess... Just trying to think of what's efficient. I don't know if I want the uranium to back up. Like, I'd rather... Like, if one of these machines gets shut off, I'd rather the free uranium was just cycling as a loop. I don't think the 238 we want to come back in. Although we certainly could. Would that add anything to this system? Also, I, I remember, like, hand-feeding to get things primed uh, when I was very doing my very first Covarex. Just to make sure they're all sort of running. Because you, you want them to get primed. You know, it, it takes a while. The more buildings you put down, the longer it takes to get them all running. I think the, the, the inserter swap works pretty well as far as a test run goes. Although it still needs a little bit of work. I think it just needs a like, I think it handles being less primed than what you need otherwise. But you still need some priming. So until we have enough free uranium, it won't. Um, it won't keep them all running 100%. But like, if we leave this running for a couple hours, it'll be totally fine. Alright. So we want... Is there any problem stealing the 238 here? I don't think so. That shouldn't make any difference. And then, to get what we actually want, the objective of tonight's adventure, was to get the fuel cells automated. And I have a feeling I probably won't need more than one of these, the actual crafter. Let's check. It's mostly the garbage fuel, thankfully. Oh, the blue inserters again. I think I have some in my, um, in my, you know, cargo that we brought from, from Earth. Okay. Now, it does need steel. Oh, and you still get productivity. Just making your uranium go even further. Yeah, I can't, I can't resist it, even though it's a lot of electricity, but... We're gonna make tons of electricity out of this. Uh, right. Steel is kind of the, the 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 elephant in the room, so to speak. You know, I, I didn't I didn't really plan for steel. It's a bit silly, but it'll be fine. All right, let's put it in the network. So, unless I build my own steel here, it doesn't need a lot. Actually, that's, that's the point. I don't need that much to be in back up here. It's uh, one steel per fuel cell. Yeah, if we if we give it a I don't know what we brought. We've got 3,000 steel. We got tons of steel. No problem. That'll make enough fuel cells to last us ages. Alright, and then we just take the created nuclear fuel and we don't need to back up tons of it necessarily, but we'll make a couple stacks. And then the logistics bots, rather than me belting it over, which I could, they'll just fly the reactor fuel over to the input here, which requests 10 of them. 
And it looks like my nuclear reactor actually shut off while I was busy. And we're wasting steam. So we actually need more storage tanks. Because we hit the maximum before we're, we stop producing heat. And we were using the fuel, just not fast enough. So, all right. Just by expanding them like this, um, it should fix what I'm worried about. That's an extra over a million steam capacity. And that way, the temperature here, you know, we're still waiting for this fuel to wear off. And the other ones are still maxed heat. But that'll get the heat being used and not just wasting it. And the water seems to have held. I just don't think we're using enough um, steam turbine power here. Certainly using some, or actually a fair amount. 60, 70 megawatts. Oh wait, no. This thing produces almost a giga, uh, yeah, almost a gigawatt. So 60 or 70 is like 10%. We got lots of power, we're good. This looks to be working pretty smoothly. Yeah, I think even if we don't touch anything, this should work until these boxes fill up. Um, we could make a more permanent, not permanent solution by turning the rocks into landfill. The more permanent, non-permanent solution. And then making a really mega big warehouse that will take ages to ever fill up. Because I think we get a lot more stones than iron, so that'll, that'll take ages to fill up. But I gotta craft out of them steel beams first. But this is looking pretty good. I, I wasn't. This is the first try of a different Kovarex enricher. I'm sure there's some nice blueprints online if you want to look them up yourself or find your own way. I think these actually might prefer a more symmetrical... So... I think that'll keep the one in the corner working a little bit better. Kind of two little mini circles like a whirlpool counter flowing a little bit i don't think it will make much difference and yeah now this is the one that runs out but eventually that won't be a problem like as soon as this guy finishes he just immediately gets a full stack inserted it'll just be the corners that take the longest to get going but that was kind of what i was thinking is if it was just three by one then the two corners might not fill up very often but with six wide Four of them should run full speed for sure, and then the ones on the outside are just a little bit slower. So I think it's just more efficient with being a bit longer. But yeah, that's looking good. Ah, there we go. So eight of these, definitely enough to keep up with our current uranium mine. Let's go look at those uranium mines. So unless we're running a low on acid or something, which we're not, they don't really use a ton of acid to, to work. They just need a little bit. So that's eight uranium mines with high productivity. I really think that's a that's a ton of ore. I don't think we're going to have any problems, but just wanted to make sure. But yeah, we're, we'll be getting lots of uranium ore. We're currently at six. Well, we currently have 165, but this whole system is just consuming to enrich. Once... It's kind of caught up and keeps full. You know, 10 or so will stack up and we'll start getting some fuel. It looks like I may have built about the right size because we're not really... We might be consuming 238 a little bit quicker than we're making it, but it's pretty similar. And then um, that means that's a pretty efficient system. And like these are mostly all running at the same speed as well, so that's good. Sulfuric Acid maxed out we don't use very much but we've got lots all the reactors have shut down cooling off slowly our 
Our tanks might still legitimately fill up, but we shouldn't be wasting too much. Okay, so power, I believe, is covered for now. So can I get my Cryoflux moving? We certainly do enough mining. We don't need to worry about adding more mines. Although, I guess they would like some power. So. Alright, so that gives the beacons the max. So we're definitely not shooting out unrefined cryoflux. That's dumb. So what we're going to do... We can still have it all come into here. That's fine. But we're going to make power. I don't know. I'm getting... It's getting real late. I'm, I'm slowing down, but... Let's see how far I can get. How fast do these guys process it? Pretty dang fast. And it's going to be way faster with modules. We can hit three with one beacon, so we might as well. my RoboPort can clean up my inventory a little bit here. Wow. Some serious spam botting over there on Twitch. It was going pretty well, mostly. I am a little bit snoozy. I just have to delete a whole bunch of people here. <laughs> I don't even know if it's worth it. Manage suspicious user. I just close that. It takes me longer to clear it out than it does to just ignore it, but you know. One more. Almost done. Getting faster. All right. Okay, <clears throat> snoozy Yankee though for sure. Let's let's try to finish what I'm working on. I did build those inserters while I was moderating. Uh, right. So these guys go fast. I'm not sure if one inserter will keep up, but you know maybe. I don't think we're going to need that. Get out of here. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we're going to want multiples. And I'll sh opposite lane them so that they are kind of sharing the lane. And then instead of doing this all manually, we will let the bots help. I'm going to assume we're going to want, like, at least six, maybe? I'm not going to go too crazy. I just, you know, want to make sure I'm relatively future-proofed. If I can make six work, then I can leave space to make more if I want more later. So maybe we don't run into beacons and uh, modules and stuff. Okay, and then copy, copy, all right, uh, nope, one more, I'm not even sure if one belt can hold that much output, uh, it's going to be making 3.6 speed 
So normally it would be two per second times 3.6 is, uh, you know, almost eight. And then an extra 32% multiplier is definitely eight or nine. Maybe, maybe say 10. This belt can hold 45, so 10 per second. Once we get about four and a half through, it's going to be full, theoretically. All right, so I'll do my tried and tested trick where we sort via warehouse, which is be now that I've used it a couple times, I'm thinking more and more that this might be my preferred method of sorting. Everything goes in and then you just pull out whatever you don't want. So I definitely don't want sand. It's dry and itchy and gets everywhere. But other than that, we can turn it into... Um, oops, that won't work. We can turn it into more landfill. The low price of 200 sand. All oh, right, and it started with some junk filling the block. So now that I've cleaned up the inventory, it should be fine. Wow, yeah, we're getting tons of powder. Look at that. Just blasting through it so it's being delayed it's actually not getting new cryonite fast enough so double the input give me more or give me the blue stuff there the lights are greener now they're not getting rid of it fast enough Lights are staying green. Looking pretty good. Alright, that's processing. Regardless of how much Crynite we're mining. I don't think that's processing all that we're mining, but but that's fine. We don't need we don't need like a crazy high throughput of this stuff. We just need a decent throughput that's relatively consistent long-term that we can use for crafting and stuff. And this is looking pretty good. We're getting landfill. Uh, we should make a, a nice big box for that as well. Use some landfill and then put the landfill there. There, that'll last basically forever. So for every tiny amount of sand we get, um, you just filter it out, 50 or something, 100, uh, 200 sand turns into one landfill, and then we've got, you know, enough room for like 50,000 landfills. So that's certainly going to last, you know, probably the length of this uh, mining deposit. What do we need to do with this stuff? Let's see if I can go one more step here, maybe. I think we need some other resource to make. We make the powder, and then the powder is used to make crystals, but we need steam. Powder plus steam makes cryonite and water. And we don't care about the water. And we use chemical plants. So, you know, I don't know if I want to waste my nuclear steam. But I have low priority, less important steam. I didn't really know if I wanted to keep this boiler system going. But this might be an okay use for it. On the other hand, we have um, oil. We don't need an import an, a product off the planet. We could take some petroleum, turn it into light. I don't know. Well, how much do we need? What, what's the recipe? Uh, chemical plant. Why don't I have chemical plants? Bots, please bring me some chemical plants. I don't know where they are. Blue should be in bed by now. 
They're right there. They don't even need to bring them to me. They may have. I don't know. Uh, we're we're trying to make these things. So we need six steam. Oh, six steam is almost nothing. Okay, I don't even care. That that's so little. Making a mess here, unfortunately. Shouldn't have built the belt first. Uh, not much of a mess, though. That's pretty good. Wow, wow. This is almost full. Alright. Steam will be required. Water will come out. I don't know how many of these we need. Probably quite a few. So... Yeah, this should be fine. So, uh, just trying to think of the easiest way to pipe all this in. They do use four cryonite powder. One inserter should cover it, but we need to get that water out. Well, again, I should be using blueprints probably. I wouldn't say this is particularly. A uh, good use of your steel pipes by any means. No. Um, but we can just take all the water that we don't really need. Let's see, did I bring. I know I brought some. Yeah, there you go. Just highlight them. So the flare stack just uh, gets rid of some liquids or gases you don't want mostly for free and uh, the water can just go away we don't need it so then we need steam in and we probably should be just continuing the productivity line you know? which means you need the, I got the need for speed if you do Oh, I, I meant to put... <laughs> I definitely wanted eight. Oh, mm. The land can't tell me where to build. Alright. Need some mods. Now, it's possible I'll put some more machines that reuse those beacons, if I can uh, figure a good way to do that. Okay. Uh, but we need the output and the steam, which probably is the same. Just... Long distance underground. But then I might have a harder time putting another... What's what's the next one? Um, we don't do cations here, anions here, but we do. We do need the rods, which are made. I don't even know what machine. Okay, we gotta cook them. So we need an equal number of cryonite powder, cryonite crystal, and heavy oil. Oh, I forgot about the heavy oil. Ugh. All right, I'm done for today. <laughs> I'm gonna stop it here. I thought we could maybe finish the cry night, but we got about halfway through. We got the mining. Nah, this is two thirds through. We got the mining, the the powdering, the sorting, turned into crystal mostly, and then the last step is to take the crystal and the powder and add it together with some oil and turn it into um, cry night rods, and then we can just send it home. It'll be fine. But uh. Yeah, I gotta take a break. My my voice is cracking, my neck is sore, I, you know, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Stream longer than I planned, because I wanted to finish at least one project. <laughs> and I don't think I did, so. But, you know, it's, you know, I don't say nothing happened. We did build a new nuclear reactor, and we have nuclear steam in vast quantities. Maybe more than we can even spend, because that's still full. So, we still filled up. 4 times 4 is 16, 32 times 200. We'd feel like 6 million steam 
back up. That's a lot of power that the nuclear reactors can just wait on until we finally start making actual nuclear fuel cells, which is automated and should start not too far away. While we were busy, the belt looks pretty full. And once we get 10 in here at once, which won't be too far off, we'll start making actual homegrown nuclear fuel. All to get that cryonite. <laughs> so we're almost there. Anyway, th thanks for hanging out, f live tubers. It's kind of a random stream, Factorio. And um, future VOD tubers, you know, you know what to do. All right, guys, have a good day, evening, morning. I'll see you next time.